Hi everyone, welcome back to episode 6 of Show Match Sunday, and today we're playing Cobra. Now if you're in the Discord, I'm sure I'm sure you'll know who Cobra is. Um, he hosts uh, the unofficial Discord um, community games, and obviously records them and uploads them to his channel, which I'll show in a second. Um, and he had an idea to play a game and have both, of, both players in the game record their perspectives, and then he was going to edit them together uh, into one, you know, uh, one video where you'd be able to watch from both sides and get both people's thoughts as they were playing through the game, which I thought was really cool. And also, this was at the same time I was doing my show match series, so I thought, two birds, <laughs> you know, uh, one stone, we can get this recording going and we can both record the game for, for our different, um, different reasons. So, I would highly recommend clicking off my video and just watching it on Cobra's channel. I'll leave a link in the description um, because the best way to watch this game will be through Cobra's channel because the videos are really good. I've seen a few uh, episodes already and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very enjoyable watch having both perspectives. So yeah, I would click off now and uh, watch on Cobra's channel. Okay, this is Mannix uh, recording my Russia 1 turn against Cobra. So Cobra had the cool idea of recording both our perspectives for this game. So. Yeah, he's going to edit them together. Uh, I think it should be for a view, for the viewer at least quite interesting because you can get to see both both perspectives as the game progresses. So yeah, it should be good. Uh, but anyway, let's get going. So I'm going to go for a fairly normal four infantry two tank buy. Um, I'm still not sure whether I prefer the artillery over tanks in the opening. I get the reason for the tanks to prevent the Corellia stack, but. I just like having so many artillery as Russia. <laughs> just means you can trade so much more effectively. The tanks you don't want to really get them, give them away, so you've got limited trading options. But we'll go for a tank this time. All right, fingers crossed. Always the most nervy part of a game. This. We'll go for a normal twelve nine. Let's see how we do. Okay, let's rush it first. Come on, let's. Okay, I've seen worse. Oof, that's pretty bad then. Okay, lucky we didn't lose any uh, guys there. Could. Oh, we got lucky there. We got lucky. <laughs> I was expecting a really bad take then because the first round was terrible, but actually, that's not too bad. I'll, I'll take that. Okay, Ukraine. Okay. Yeah, not great. Have to get a good round here. Nice. Killed everything. Okay, I'd send out. Not too bad in the end. I would have liked to have killed three there and then retreated. Assuming I'm not sure what his defense profile is, but if the the fight is still alive at the end of that round, I've got a decent number of troops stuff. I'd like to pull out, just because saving three tanks I think is worth it for leaving Germany with an extra fighter. Uh, right. So I think we will... I will make the Ukraine take a little bit harder. I'll put the anti-egg on there. I'll we'll put one into West Russia too. Let's pull the sub across. I'll leave one infantry in Beriatia. And pull the majority of the infantry back. It's all fairly standard. And we'll put we'll put one fighter into Caucasus, one into Archangel. So this potential here, this fighter placement here, gives us a little bit more flexibility for next round. Should we want to push back against Variation? Maybe we've got a fighter to help trade. Um, yeah, it also means we can uh, take a. Uh, should we need to? This is just another option. We've got a plane to kill the transport. If we need more planes, say for uh, taking back seven, possibly. Might not get to trade this with the UK, so having a Russian plane there, just a little bit more, a, little bit, a few more options for round two. But overall, I think that's not a bad start. Just double checking everything looks good. Yeah, let's go with that. So two tanks into Russia, four into Cox's. Okay, back for UK1 against Cobra. So, let's have a quick look at... Actually, no, I won't look at Germany because I know you, as a viewer, you would have seen, um, obviously, Cobra's perspective for Germany, so I won't go back and look at that. I have had a look at the board and the moves before uh, before recording, so I know roughly what's happened. I think the best result for us 
uh, from the Allied perspective was the battle in uh, Ukraine, which was fantastic. He lost five infantry in a plane taking back Ukraine, so that was a very nice trade for us there. We got a lot of value out of that, which is good. And it also means, because he's gone for some tanks, he went for four tanks, five infantry, he's going to be fairly short of infantry up front, which is good. Uh, so I think if we can weather the initial storm, with a, which, which comes with the tank pressure, obviously, there's a lot of pressure early on. If we can just weather that and get some good numbers and planes in West Russia, I think we should be okay to hold. Um, I'm going to try and kill pretty much the entire front line here for Germany. I've got two here I can trade Corellia with. I can walk in with infantry Belarusian. I can go with here probably five or so. Uh, some planes to kind of make sure we take this out. Well, well hopefully anyway, that's uh, fingers crossed we can take that. If we can grab this, we block obviously the tanks from taking West Russia so we can comfortably sit here for a round while we get our planes in position for round, uh, round two. Anyway, my build this round. Uh, we're going for three infantry for India, and we're going for two fighters for UK, which would be going to West Russia. Again, just to kind of help out with the, uh, just um, surviving some of the pressure against the, uh, the tank rush. But also, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to go, because he's done an interesting move here, he's left the cruiser with the transport in season five. So, I'm not going in to season seven with as many planes as I'd like. So, there's a chance here we have a sub, or even maybe even two if we're unlucky, left over in season seven. Um, plus the four planes here. It seems a bit risky to go for a fleet just yet until I know how the battles go. Particularly with this battleship in 13 as well. If the Americans can't kill this, with, again, there's a chance, then my fleet in 7 could be wiped in round 2. So I think I'd rather play it safe. Go for some fighters for now. Reinforce, and we can think about a fleet when we know the, um, the board positions a bit better next round. So let's go for that. Uh, so we'll take a destroy here. We're going to go for one fighter against the subs. I'm going for fighter bomber against the cruiser and transport. My thinking here is I don't want to sacrifice a fighter for this. If the cruiser gets hit back, I'd rather just sacrifice the bomber. Because initially in this game, or at least for the Allies, initially the, the fighters are more valuable because they can defend West Russia so much more effectively, obviously, than a bomber. Uh, destroyer can take out the transport. Um, we probably could, if we wanted to, we could get odds on Libya, which would be nice because we can use the bomber here plus some planes. But it would mean sacrificing a few attacks I'm not, not, not willing to do. I'd rather make sure we do these battles you know, as well as we can. Uh, also, mean it would mean sacrificing 61, probably. probably. Oh, we, we could get away with not doing that, actually. We could go for cruiser and carrier 61. This plane can attack here with everything else and a bomber, but... Hmm. That's actually not bad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 versus 4. Damn, that is tempting, actually. <laughs> I was thinking about just doing the usual cruiser plus plane to 61, pulling the carrier through to safe, keep it safe. Um, but having Germany out of Africa early is quite tempting, too. Decisions, decisions early on. Okay, let's, let's try this, let's try it. The nice thing is the transport's safe, whatever we do, because we can put it to 17. There's no planes in range of 17, so that's one bonus. Let's do that. This would be a nice bonus if we can take this early, that'd be fantastic. Uh, I'll see how the round one rolls go. If it goes badly, then we'll just pull out immediately and just reinforce Egypt with a few infantry. Uh, this transport, I don't think I can do anything just yet. I think I might just leave him here for this round until I know the layout of the board is again a bit better. Attacking up north is not going to be possible because we can't take both landing zones for these fighters. Morocco is not possible, obviously, because it's a battleship there. Reinforcing 23 and sending a tank through here to help out with Africa is also possible, but that's a non-com decision, so we'll do it then. Okay, let's do it. This is the only one I'm slightly worried about, but we'll... If the dice is... If it, this in-game calculates as it's favourable, then that's a good sign, because it's, it's always very unfair <laughs> with its judgments. Um, let's do 7 first. So I'd like to kill both subs, obviously, but it might not be possible. Okay, start again. One down, that's good. Ah, shame. So yeah, always danger. Going a bit light to season 7. So he's got a sub left over after this round, which is unfortunate. Okay, hopefully no hits here. Okay. Well, that's why they took the bomber. Break up that fighter. Uh, let's do Libya now, I think. This is going to be a key fight. I'd love to wipe this in one round. Okay, not bad. Okay. 
I'm going to risk pushing on here just one more round. It's risky, but... No. Ooh, just, just. <laughs> that worked out. That worked out. I was worried we'd lose a play in there, but that was fortunate. Okay, fantastic. So, 61. Okay, cool. That's good. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, so yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. We've got one sub left over for the Germans in seven, but that's not too much of an issue. Uh, again, here, we'll just... Um, that's a suicide landing spot if we don't take Ukraine, so I think we'll just play it safe. Go to Persia for now and Egypt. Let's grab this. And because we actually don't have... We've only got one infantry there, and he's not going to be reinforcing it anytime soon. Or at all, most likely. Uh, I think I'll pull the majority back to... Back towards India, to be honest. I suppose we could force this infantry out, couldn't we, if we do... Um, just grab this guy. Yeah, we can start pushing back again a bit against this infantry, force him back to the coastline where we can kill him with the Americans, hopefully. Uh, let's move you down here. Yeah, I'm not going to reinforce... I don't think I want to reinforce Africa because we've, this, this, we've pretty much won Africa already. Just do this first. Move here, move here. Okay, we'll leave one in Burma as well to make this a bit more of a, a trickier Japan one. Now uh, this transport, where do I want you? Can't obviously leave him in 10 now because he'll be taken out by the sub most likely. Let's do it. Let's just do it. One, two, three, four. The planes are out of range. The battleship should die, hopefully. As soon as we've got a tank moving forward, I suppose, we can come back up to put this infantry up next round. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. I always reinforce a fighter in Persia if I land one here, just in case I've had uh, players with the Jap Japanese players attack this fighter with. Uh, their fleet here, which is not always great for the UK. Particularly in an early game, they want all the fighters they can get. Okay, looks good. So, after UK, how are we looking? 148, 156, fairly close. Cool, back to Cobra. Okay, um, US round one. So, I've gone for... Uh, pretty, yeah, pretty normal buy. A carrier, destroyer, two transports, and two infantry. Um, it's always a, it, it's either this or three transports. But I think because he's got a sub still left, uh, and I'm going to probably lose, very likely lose a destroyer against this battleship. But I think I want to get an extra one, so we'll go for the destroyer buy. Um, he's pulled into 49, so I can't really do with the carrier alive. I like to go to 45 to get fighters to India quickly, but that's obviously not possible with this. Uh, so I'm going to just pull back everything, I think, just straight to... We're going KGF, obviously. Um, so I'll pull back the entire fleet straight away. I can't really do much uh, do much against that. Uh, so he went for a complex buy. Um, still only on one transport. Uh, so that's, I think, probably good for me. It's going to be slightly... in a slightly slow jump. He, he built the destroyer in sub, which I like, I think, as the allies. Um, so I'm not going KJF, so these won't be of much use unless he decides to come to the Atlantic and harass my um, my shipping lanes, but we'll see what he uses these for. Uh, apart from that, I think we're just going to go for the, yeah, so we'll go for this. The, the one danger we've got here is we are going to be landing planes into Gibraltar, and he's got fighters here, so we may lose some, but I think taking out the battleship, I think, is more important here. Um, one, two, three. In fact, it's only a fight. I can I can land the the uh, bomber somewhere safe, which is the fighter that might might die to this. But we'll see. Uh, apart from that, I think that's what we can do. We can't take Morocco because he's got obviously the fights covering this, and the sub's still there. So we'll just probably uh, I could reinforce. 
Actually, we don't need to reinforce Africa this round with the US because they're, we've already won uh, the territory, so this is going to be a case of just sit out, which we might actually just sit still because we can't go to 10, which I'd like to do. It's subs blocking, so we'll just stay in 11 for now and hopefully head up to uh, Finland at some point soon. Okay, that's probably all we're going to do. Right, fingers crossed we only lose the destroyer here. Okay, not great. So I'll, I'll take the fighter as a casualty, I think, here. Oh god. <laughs> well, that wasn't the best attack. Wow, that was very unfortunate. Damn. Okay, fair enough. Well, the main thing is that the battleship's dead, which is a good thing, but uh, the cost was rather high for that, but that's alright. Okay, so we'll pull back everything we have. Um, subs can't really... Yeah, subs got to pull back as well. Well, it could just be annoying to put the sub here. Or close. We're obviously on... Um, well, we will be on subs retreat, so... He can't hit me here. Two destroyers not in range, cool. Let's pull back. Um, no real threat to India, so we'll pull into West Russia for now. Drop you off, drop you off. Yeah, I don't like having just stationary transports for around. It's not it doesn't feel particularly good, but there's nothing much we can actually do with them here. Taking them to Africa, so there's no point because there's, there's nothing to reinforce, so we might as well just wait here for now. Uh, let's pull you back as well. Okay. That was a silly move as well. I shouldn't have pulled the the uh, cruiser out. I guess in a sense it, it creates a target for the the sub here. If he comes for it, we can fidget off next round. So actually it's a way of drawing it out, I suppose. But probably should have put this with the fleet here in 11. Okay, all good, I think. So, end of round one. Uh, it's currently 136 for the Allies, 156 for the Axis. Not, but I think this this is a bit unlucky with the rolls in 13. That's the the one downside there. But I think overall, I'm I'm fairly happy with the position. I think we've got a good a good foothold here against Germany. What we will have in a second. I'm going to go for four infantry, four artillery. It's a nice round two buy for Russia, I like. Gives you a lot of hitting power with the artillery. Um, we can't push on with anything in Asia, unfortunately. He's covered all three of these zones quite nicely, so. I won't have to pull back here. Um, let's go one, two, one, then we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Try this. We've got an extra heavy hitter behind that, and then we've got an extra infantry should you get some good rolls. I don't really want to go to... I, want to, I don't want to go for six infantry here, or six land units here. It seems a bit excessive. We should have good dice for this fight. Let's try that. Let's try that. Good. Friendly of Fools. I don't necessarily have to take this, I suppose, if it does go terribly badly. We've got enough to defend West Russia should he attack. And if he wants the Caucasus, he's going to have to blitz the tank through, so that would be costly in one sense. But I would like to take it. Oh, wow, we did. Great rolls. Nice. Okay. So, um, I'm going to pull the infantry out of variation now because it can just be very easily taken out, so retreat. I think we'll leave a, a minor stack here in Yakut. Just to maybe cause some problems. Let's drop everything back. Um, I'll leave the tanks obviously in Caucasus because we don't need them in West Russia. So they give us a bit more flexibility heading out of India. Should we need to if the Japanese suddenly decide to go heavy on um, Burma. I think that should do us around to Russia. Yep. Yeah, we're good. You want to. Cool. 
So a nice 30 income for Russia this round should be fantastic. Taking these three territories. Um, nice bump in the uh, attack power too. Cool, okay, that's uh, round two Russia. Back to Cobra. Okay, back for uh, UK two. So I won't check again what Germany's done, but I can see, yeah. Uh, so we did think this, <laughs> the cruiser might get killed in 12, and it has been, which is uh, probably quite a good result for the Germans. But in a sense as well, on the flip side, it's good for me because it's drawn the sub out in the open so we can kill this. And there's no more, uh, at least no more naval threat from the Germans. It's just going to be four, four fighters we have to contend with. So I'm quite actually quite happy about this. Um, yeah, didn't, I'm going to need to just double check on the combat actually. Okay, I'm not sure what he had bordering Ukraine um, or Karelia, I can't remember. Uh, but it's very nice for the Russians that we still have these under control, which is good. I think actually I kind of regret having my tanks in the Caucasus now, because if I had them in West Russia we could have pushed on to Finland and then captured this as the Russians, which is always very nice for Russia. Bit of um, bonus income. These three are would be huge, that's an extra infantry per round, which is for Russia very, very good. But uh, UK. So I've gone for two infantry, one artillery. Uh, we will drop a fleet this round. Um, I'm not too concerned about West Russia at the moment, so I think it's good that we get a fleet up and running with the UK, and we can start trading off on the um, the west coast of Europe. So we've got it for destroyer carrier, and we can drop probably one or two fighters into the uh, the fleet too, and then fly the remainder back to West Russia. Okay, let's roll. I'm going to grab uh, Libya, just because I want the UK to have a fair bit of income here, if possible. Um, we could also take Morocco here, um, which I think I might do with the UK. Well, that does limit our options next round, potentially. Hmm. I'll come back to that, I just want to see what else we can do first of all. Um, nothing much here, I think we'll just pull most stuff back into India. I'm not going to attack Thailand because I've got no planes in range. That can land safely, that is. Um, anything worth doing here? Not really. Yeah, pretty quiet round for the UK I think here. Yeah, I think I might just cancel this actually to be fair. So I want this, this transport to be available for next round to hit anywhere up here as well, so we'll leave it at 9 I think, because 9 gives it some safety from the fighters but also the ability to hit any one of these four, So, and to be fair come back here if he wants to, so yeah that's a bit more of a, a flexible move. So I think this will be the only land grab we do. Okay so I'll have to bring the transport round back to 33 because obviously we can't bring it through the Mediterranean. That's going to be a, a suicide mission. Uh, fighter. Oof. I'm going to leave. Yeah, I'm going to bring the tank round actually. If we've got time to bring it round, probably better to do that. Let's do this. Let's pull you back as well. One, two, three, four. Fighters can't range Libya, which is nice. So this should be a, a stalemate here until the Americans can drop off in Morocco this round, which they will do. We can finish it off, so I'll pull this infantry back. We don't need them in Libya. Uh, you can go to 9. This sub will be dead. I'm hoping at least. If it's not, that'll be pretty rough. <laughs> I'm going to go with all my air power and a destroyer to, to kill 12, so hopefully that does work out. This guy, I think actually is not going to be picked up at all, so we can... I mean, actually, that's probably a better move, isn't it? I think we can... If we go to, go to 10... It's probably making the best use of our troops, to be honest. Going to 10 means we can still hit everything we want to. But it means we can't bring an extra additional troop to these two, if we need to. Because in 9, obviously, we can pick up some troops from 7 and then go to 3. So we'll have two troops, but from here we can't do that. But I think I like that more because we're making use of all of our all units. So I'll do that instead. Uh, destroy, I can go back to 17. We could, to be fair, even try and bring this through the um, the Mediterranean because this is more. I don't think I'd go for that as Germany. One destroyer is not worth much, but killing a fighter on the off chance would be 
Fantastic, so I think I'll try and risk that. Just bring it straight through. So take you here. Here. Sub. Again, there's no destroying range. I'll put you in 44 comfortably. Just gonna check my profile. Yep, subs retreat too. So a nice little safe bunch of subs here in 44. Uh, this fighter. Just thinking how much I want on the carriers. I want do I want two or one? I think it's fairly likely that we're not going to be in any danger in West Russia, so I'm going to go to two on the carrier, then I'll put one here. Um, India is also fairly secure, I would say. You can drop, just drop two here for now. We can do some, two planes here help, helps us trade Burma, should you go for it this round as Japan, so I'll have two planes here and we'll send one up there. That looks fairly good. Don't think I've missed anything here. Yeah. Cool. Let's go with that. So carrier, destroyer, artillery, infantry. Nice. So how are we looking so far? 148, 166. So the Axis has still got a decent attack power lead. I think that's probably being, it's, it's the fact that Germany are building tanks, which is going to slightly distort the um, the numbers there. I think overall though, despite the attack power, I think it's I'm, I'm quite comfortable on uh, the Russian front right now. Obviously, this, particularly having Ukraine and uh, Karelia here is very nice for us. So we can hopefully trade Belarus with the Russians. Have a nice, yeah, having these three under Russia's control is, uh, at least for a round, is going to give us some good income. And yeah, we're almost here with the Americans. We'll take Morocco with the Americans. Sit in 10 with probably two transports and just we'll grab this for round three. Then we'll start trading off everything else we can. But no, looking good. So I'll uh, leave this one here and I'll uh, pass you back to Cobra. Okay, US 2. So from the looks of the build here and the deployment of troops, it looks like he's going to go for India, um, which well, there is five moving towards Russia. This is quite nice. We've got a bit of a deadlock here, which I think I'm going to try and maintain. We're not under pressure in Russia at the moment, so if I can hold this here, that would be quite nice. Just a bit of extra income uh, for Russia, which is always good, obviously. Yeah, but this this to me indicates um, India pressure. I think non-com. Yeah, he moved things to Thailand, so that's, that's, you know, there's no reason to do that unless you're thinking about, you know, moving for India at some point, but that's good for me. I'm going to leave these three tanks here as long as I can because they're a nice instant reinforcement for India. So three extra tanks, you know, whenever I want them, which is nice. We've got plenty of fighters spare at the moment. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 cool. All right, for US, and you know, I've done my build before. Uh, I did the build before I started recording, so we can just jump in. Uh, one fighter. I like to maintain, if I can, an extra fighter or so around for a while with the US just to get some more. It's always nice to have plenty of aircraft for the Allies in Europe, but you can just flexibly, you know, they can just move around where you where you need them, wherever the pressure is. Uh, so I've gone for an extra transport and I'm going for seven infantry. So we're moving we're taking Morocco this round, hopefully killing the sub, setting up in season ten for um, the Finland shock at some point, so hopefully we can grab this. I would love to hit Finland with Russia, but I just I can't, <laughs> it's just too risky. One infantry with two planes is just too dangerous. I think it's not worth the, the cost, especially if uh, the Allies are landing there next round anyway. I don't think it's worth the risk. So we'll just use the Russians to trade, I think, what we can here with with planes, so that'll be fine. Anyway, uh, US 2, let's, let's go. I think I've done everything I can. Or planned everything I can, rather. So, tacking moves, I think it's just going to be Morocco in the sub to be honest. I think I'll grab Oh actually just oh wow okay. <laughs> I didn't even see the just the battleship was in radio, I wasn't even thinking about that. That's cool then. We can just grab this then. Um so in fact I suppose the destroyer doesn't even need to be there does it really? We can take out the um the secondary destroyer here. Also means the planes don't have to get involved which is good as well because I can freely move them around where I want them. Not that they've got too much flexibility right now but we don't have to commit here, which is good. Um, the sub, nothing to gain here. He's got a destroyer with the fleet in 50. And there's one on the main fleet as well in 61. So we're not probably going to get any value out of these subs, but I'll, 
I'll keep them nearby just to harass for now. Um, yeah, grab this. We'll grab. I feel like actually, let's do. Let's do that. I feel like two transports into Morocco might be a bit wasteful because there's only one infantry left. So all we need to do really is maybe land a plane into Gibraltar to help out one, two, you know, three, four, land there. Just to kill this off. And while the UK holding back this side. And then we can move the, the three transports up to ten. So there'll be more more troops straight away for Finland, which is probably a good thing. Uh yeah. Seems fairly concrete. In fact, actually, one, two, yeah, we just might as well throw the fire in as well then. He can land in Gibraltar. He's not in danger of the German planes from here. It's one, two, three, four, so they can't hit from there, which is good. Alright, let's go with that. Nice and clean. So three, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually got one too many for now, but that, that's fine. I've got this guy coming up, so it's okay. Gibraltar, let's move. In fact, let's put them in, I like, as the Americans when doing a finish truck, it's nice to have a carrier either in two or three, because both of these sea zones, you can land, so you, say you buy a fighter in, Eastern United States, you can go one, two, three, or four, and from here they can go one, two, three, four. So both these zones can supply West Russia and and Moscow itself in two rounds, which is, which is nice. So it's nice to have a carrier here, either one of these two. And with I suppose with two, you've got a slight bit more flexibility going down south as well. Two's quite a nice spot, um, as long as you can always defend defend that from uh, any German aircraft that might be in northwestern, but. That's fine. So we'll do do this. We're no danger in, in uh, ten at all. So we're fairly comfortable here. Actually, got a big fleet in the in the Atlantic now. A very big fleet. We're going to be able to hold, hold multiple sea zones here because there's only four planes for Germany. So yeah, we're going to be able to comfortably hold a few things here. I think, which is nice. And I'll leave. I'm going to leave something here just in case you just go for Alaska and we can immediately just have something present at least. Um, I guess we go to 39 and just try and whip round here. Going up north, we'll get trapped because there's two destroyers can move the other side and just trap us, so we have to go south or back. Um, one, two, three, four, we're fine. Yeah, that's good. Might as well put the anti air gun into uh, Canada here. They're just not a nice backup unit if you get the logistics a bit off and you need a, an extra troop to pick up the goods to be doing. Also, obviously, they're fantastic for uh, stacks in Europe as well. Oh, almost forgot. Um, I think because we're, we're thinking he's going to go for India pressure, I'm going to go down, down to Persia first because we don't need the help in Russia right now, so we'll go to Persia and we'll try and reinforce. It also means we can possibly hit back here should we need to. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I think we're good. So, plane, transports, and infantry. Okay, so we'll have a quick look at the attack thing. So, we've got 158 versus 172. So, still a comfortable lead for the Axis. Um, Russia, however, has got a nice spend. 30 is lovely. You'd love to see if you can break 30 uh, in a round with Russia. You know, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a very comfortable, comfortable buy. So we've got four, actually we've got six artillery, I'm going to pull these guys, I know I might actually attack Bulgaria here to be fair, yeah I think I will, so we'll have five artillery, so we could go, that's a nice buy, six and three, that's quite even, yeah we'll do that, that's, that's, that's nice, six and three, so we'll take whatever we can here, I'm not obviously going to go fill in like I said, it's too risky, um, we'll go, let's do this, Hit here, here. 
So four against two, three against one. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And we'll obviously reinforce uh, Ukraine with that infantry as well. I'm not sure on numbers here. We may have to, I think we'd, we'll definitely have to deploy into um, the Caucasus here with what we can. To try and dead zone Ukraine possibly. Because he can move in with 19 units. So I'm not sure we can actually hold that back at the moment. But he'll be more concerned with trading, I think. There's a lot to trade around here, first of all. So, yeah, that, that's fine. Okay, let's do it. Belarusia first. I hate attacking planes. I, I, I hate them with absolute passion. They're just so they're so useless. <laughs> oh my god! And yeah, yeah, it's too late now. You can hit the last round, but it's too uh, it's too late. This actually causes a slight problem here because we're actually under pressure now. We might have to move the tanks into into uh, West Russia. That's really crap. Ugh. Success in Bulgaria, but not great in, well, terrible in Belarusia. Um, so let's just think here, we've got 17 units attacking our stack in West Russia. Uh, let's just move everything in just to see. Uh, let's pull you back as well. I'll risk I'll risk leaving two here, because two they can only reach with one plane, which is the bomber. So it's a 2v2, and if the infantry dies, then it's still okay. So I'm going to pull one back. We want here as well. So we're going to have potentially 9, 13, 16. I'm going to calc this actually. This is getting a bit, a bit risky. It's not a good attack, I don't think. It's just initially looking at it. It's not a good attack because you can only use tanks, so the, the tanks will get absolutely massacred going for it. But I'm not even going to calc it. I'm not even going to calc it. But I probably should because I want to see actually if I can maybe hold out without the without moving the tanks in. Just thinking about India as well. So it's four. Okay. One, two, and we've got five fighters plus one anti air gun. Okay, it's, it's comfortable as it is now, obviously. Um, so, how many tanks can we afford to not have there? Ooh. I think I want to put one tank in there. Having none gives the odds, gives Germany about a 35-ish percent chance of winning. Which is obviously, it's still fairly comfortable for Russia, but I think in the position he is, it might be, he might go for that, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So, we'll give one, one extra tank gives us, he gives us about, yeah, 80% chance to hold, so I think that's that's more than comfortable. So I'll put one tank in there, we'll leave her. Uh, there we go. Nine, yeah. Okay, cool. That, that works. So we've got still two to move down. Should we need to? So that's good. I think I'll I'll re I'll calculate India once he's got transports in range. At the moment, he's only got one, so I know we're safe. And Burma's obviously still intact, so we don't need to calculate this just yet. But next round, once he moves things in, we will have to just keep an eye on it, make sure we've got odds at all times. Okay, really disappointed about the Belarusia trade though. That was unfortunate, but still. Still got a lot more territory. In fact, we need to <laughs> just realise we need to block this, don't we? So we have to. We actually will have to put a tank back in. So it's only one now, unfortunately. That's a shame. Oh well. Let's go with that. So good job I spotted that as well, because that would have been <laughs> pretty devastating. <laughs> losing, uh, losing corpses there. There we go. Up to 31, nice. So another big spend for Russia next round, which is good. Leveled out the 
tap power slightly, obviously, but Germany's still got to go, so it will jump up again. But I think I'm, yeah, generally speaking, very happy with the Allied position in uh, Europe so far. As long as we can stall out the Japanese in India, should you go for India, then that, that'll be good. And just give us time to get our uh, shook mobilised. Anyway, that's uh, Russia 3, back to Cobra. Okay, UK 3. Let's go. So, um, I've gone for 1 infantry, 1 artillery, 1 tank for India. Nice mixed bag. It's always nice to have a, a mix of units in India just to give you a bit more flexibility. So, we'll, uh, yeah, have one of each ground unit there, which is nice. Uh, I've gone for no more naval units because I've got three transports moving in from different areas. I've got one here, two, and then three be round here. And as the UK in the early game, I like to have just three transports because it obviously gives you more flexibility to buy air if you want um, some more aircraft as well. Four transports limits you to, you know, pretty much just getting land stuff. Unless you want to under, under, you know, use the transports with seven units and get for an aircraft. But the UK can't normally afford that much with also supporting India. It's They don't have the, the biggest economy, so three transports is quite a nice number, I think, if you want to have a bit more flexibility in your buys. Uh, we'll go for two aircraft because we might as well just keep shipping in to, you know, West Russia. I'll fly these guys in, I think, and then we'll just we'll go... Yeah, we don't need the biggest defence. There's only two planes in range, assuming we take these two, of uh, CO8. So I can grab this with the UK and reinforce with the Americans and just fly these guys in. So We're also obviously taking Finland and Norway this round as well. Uh, can we afford to do that one too? Okay, we need to we need to kill Korea this round. Just realised. So if we go to th if the Americans go to three light, there are still four planes that can hit if they do the carrier trick. But that's that's very risky. I think we'll have enough anyway. Four, yeah, we'll have enough anyway. Never mind. Let's go for it. So we'll grab France just very lightly with one infantry. That's fine. Um, this guy's fine here. Nothing to attack in Burma. This is I'm quite glad about this. Uh, he's not pushed out here at all. Tempted to attack Burma, which is good for me. I'll move some troops into Persia to, to try and deter this guy or these this infantry stack moving forward. We can dead zone uh, Kazakh. That should be it for the UK though. There's not much to do here. Yeah. Okay, France. So let's fly you guys in. Drop you guys down here. Destroyer. Um, they're safe in CZ9, there's no planes in range. Okay, do this. So that leaves us five for five. So five ground units versus five plus our plane support, which is six. So that's pretty that's pretty good. I think I'm not risking there's still no transports in range apart from this one of India, so there's only two ground units that can arrive with planes. So, this is more than secure without calcing it, I can tell. Don't have to worry about that. Okay, I think we're good. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to move into India or pu push in for India this round because I'm not too concerned about obviously, yeah. Uh, West Russia at this point. He might be going for actually just looking at Germany's positioning here. He might be going for a Ukraine stack. He's got a decent number bordering here. What's that? 10. Okay, so 24 units. We've got what? 12, 14, 20. Ooh. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. See how he plays that. I think I just noticed with this as well. This is um, unnecessary. I think as as Germany, I wasn't gonna go. He doesn't know this obviously, but I wasn't gonna go for for the med truck anyway. There was only one transport, I believe, sitting here from either side. Yeah. So the ten is I think overkill for Italy. I wouldn't need to be. Yeah, you wouldn't need to be protecting this this hard. If you wanted to hold it, just maybe just a few, you know, two or three here, and the rest moving forward. 
So I think some of the infantry are out of position, I would say. But anyway, let's, uh, let's finish this off. So uh, let's put one on the, on the carrier. Okay, last bit of uh, bonus income for the UK. So 172, 182. Slowly catching up. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. I think it should start to shift fairly quickly once the, U the US grabs these three. And obviously uh, Algeria as well. So there'll be a bit of an income swing. Actually, once US and Russia have gone, there'll be an income swing. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. Five territories swapping hands. Hopefully, at least. Maybe even six with better Russia. We'll see. But anyway, back to uh, Cobra. Okay, we're back for uh, US 3. So I've gone for 9 infantry and 2 transports. I've not actually properly worked out the logistics here, but I think we've got some spare spare infantry knocking about, so we can just make it work, and anti-air guns, so you're yeah, not too worried. So it's a bit of a, a land grab this round for the US. We're going to have to be taking a few things. Right, let's just end the turn, um, end the purchase phase. So we'll go for these two into Libya with some fighter support. Um, we'll grab... I think we just take one here to be fair, just take one and just take Northwestern, that works. Um, let's grab, uh, we'll grab two here though, and two here. So Finland and Norway fall. Um, that probably is it for combat moves, I can't do anything with a sub in the Pacific, it's, it's too well, this fleet's are too well defended. I might just try and swing it around here and come back up for, I don't know, some kind of threat over here. He's keeping the destroyers together for now, anyway. Right. Let's go for that. Nice, that's good. Okay, cool. So let's bring you back across here. Uh, Egypt should be safe. I'm not going to move these two into um, India just yet because I think we have comfortable odds to hold just with the UK alone. And having two US troops here is going to help us just possibly attack Kazakh if we need to. I'm going to bring these two fighters across as well. Um, where's best for this fighter here? Let's go up here, I guess. Yeah, we do actually have a big surplus of uh, infantry right now. So yeah, I'll leave them there just for now, because it, it may give us an opportunity. I'm not sure how hard he's going to go into into Kazakh. I should be able to dead zone with the UK alone, to be honest, because he's only got, what, seven units he can push in here? And we're going to have at least six ground, at least just purely ground, to attack back with, and that's not even mentioning the planes we've got nearby, so this should be dead zone, but... As an extra deterrent, we can put these guys here. Um, okay, that's good. I'm really hoping he didn't go to Alaska. That's my big, sort of, not big one, but a slight concern. I don't like dealing with it. I want to get the logistics going with the US now, round three. Get a nice system set up with the, uh, the Shuk into Finland. But we'll see. Um, let's bring you around then, I guess. 37 is safe, so let's go for here now. Yeah, we are on retreat, that's good. Okay, let's go with that. So, end of round three. Currently, tap power 180 versus 192, so still a lead for the axis. Right, 31 to spend with the Russians though, which is lovely. So we'll go for, oh, how much do we fancy? How many artillery we've we got? We're gonna be using two artillery here, so we'll only have five left. I think nine and one looks good. Just lots of numbers, maybe. Let's do that. I'm also happy that I've still got control of uh, these two, which is very much bonus income for, for Russia at this point. Very nice. Okay, so we'll go one, two, and then we'll go for one, two, 
three and fire support for both. Corellia really does need to fall here because we've obviously left this slightly weak. Not really. Four planes is a, thing, a very risky maneuver to, to do. To uh, season three with a carry on four. Yeah, that should be fine. If this goes well, we can also move our tanks back to the Caucasus, which would be nice. Just to even, you know, provide even more support for India. Okay, that's good. Let's do it. Nice, good start. That's fine. So Corelli is the key one. Nice, good rolls, very good rolls. Yeah, that's fantastic. Awesome, so the end of round, well, end of Russia's round here, it's looking very good for the Allies. We've got good presence in Europe here. Germany quite squeezed at the moment. So yeah, it's looking really good. So tanks back out to the Caucasus. Um, we can probably... Hmm. There's a danger here that the tanks sweep up north here, then come from this side. But I'll I'll take that chance. I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna move these two until I'm forced to. So I'll just risk that. I think. I'll just move. He can blitz through. I've just noticed he can blitz through. I've got to leave myself a note here because um, oh god, my key binds are terrible. So I do need to plug that hole at least on the UK's turn to avoid this. He has got what eight units that get into Moscow here, which is slightly risky. <laughs> um, I suppose we do go all out for West Russia here, just to kind of dead zone as much as we can. If he wants to maybe push back into Belarus or Ukraine, we'll deploy into you um, the Caucasus as well to try and help dead zone Ukraine if he wants to stack this. This infantry, I'm not even sure what to do with this infantry to be honest. We probably need to... Um, let's go leave them there. I'm hoping it funnels them into these two, which we can obviously trade back with, with Russia, so uh, yeah, that's that's the idea. He doesn't seem to keen to push on this way, so I'm hoping one more infantry here will keep him focused towards Moscow. We'll see. Okay, um, artillery here, infantry. Cool. So, 29 to spend next round, which is nice. We've got a decent number in West Russia. 18, 22, 27 total for this, and you can bring what 14. Be a tough battle because we obviously obviously got a lot of ones in there, and he's got he's defending on a minimum of a two in Ukraine. So I'll see if he tries to stack this or not. But yeah, I think we we probably should have odds, possibly, possibly. Not sure. We'll see anyway. I'll pass it back to Cobra now. He can take us moving all there. We'll have a look back on the uh, UK move. UK4. So I've gone for three infantry for India. Um, I've gone for an extra infantry because we're going to have a slight mismatch here with this infantry here. So I only need to get one more infantry for UK and two artillery for, to fill up the transports for round five. And I've gone for another fighter. I'm thinking I'm going to maintain the fighter buys with the UK just for the moment, just so we've got a, a healthy number. Maybe 10 would be a good number to reach. Split between India and North West, um, West Russia. So we'll probably aim for that, and then maybe like round six, seven, we start building, building bombers to try and hit Berlin. Keep them, uh, keep the income low. So, yeah, let's go for that. Banking eight for now. That's fine. We've got a third transport coming up this way. So, um, although I suppose we could hit. Hmm. 
I'm just changing my mind. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up to four transports. It's something I don't often do anymore, actually. I, I, I normally stay on three as the UK, just to allow for air purchases. But actually, yeah, we'll go for four. Why not? I think just, just maximum pressure on land, I guess, for, uh, for Germany. So let's do that instead. Um, let's try and grab, obviously, what we can. We'll go for... Um, one, maybe two here. Bombard. Let's grab one, two. Plane. Three versus one. Let's do that. Uh, tax here, let's do this. Three. Hmm. Just thinking what you can bring to Kazakh this round as the Japanese and if I've got enough to do everything I want to do here. Let's, do, let's go with that for now, that's fine. Just trying to take this light if we can. Okay, cool, let's do it. Nice. Nice, that's good. France too. Nice, cool. Okay, bam is a bonus here if we get this. Infantry hits. Oh wow. Yeah, good trades. That's what we like. Okay, so we move one off. I'm just gonna be careful here. Four fighters versus Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Yeah, no problem there. So we'll pull this off as well. Um Get one fight with the fleet just so we can help trade certain things. Move you across, move across, move you down, across here. They might as well come actually, we might as well move them, move them down here for safety for India so we can move more out this round. Makes more sense. In fact, this as well, we could probably just. Oh, that's good. So we can put like. So we're going to have 5, 8 with the purchases, 9 plus 6, sorry, plus 7. So that's, I think, way more than they can actually attack with, so I think we're good. Yeah, let's do that. This sub, um, 40, I guess, go there. All right, that's good. So I'm just trying to maintain this as, trying to keep this as dead zone as possible. For the Japanese moving up. It's potentially, if he moves these forward to, this is one set run, this round, I don't think we're going to be able to dead zone that. Although we may be able to, but unlikely, I think. Because we've also got to be aware of the constant threat of just him just shipping straight into uh, India itself, so yeah, that might not be possible. With this big stack, we may have to just pull out. I think if he moves here with everything, I think I'll move the India guys out preemptively and just stop. Because in two games now I'm playing, I've been caught off guard by Japan moving in forward. I've been too late with the UK moving forward and just abandoning India. So I think if he goes here, I'll play everything out beforehand. Got hay fever right now, so I'm sneezing all the time. Sorry. Yeah, anyway, so if he goes for him, if this moves this way, I think we'll just move out next round and just try and dead zone this with everything in India and just deploy directly to UK and abandon the uh, production of India. Don't want to do that, but it'll make sense, I think, just to keep Russia secure. Okay, so transport, artilleries. Nice. So up to 40 for the UK. Just crossed over the, the attack power threshold now, actually. We've just taken over, which is good. Um, still Japan, Japan and um, US to go, but still. Okay, US uh, 4. So I've gone for stem of infantry, uh, two more transports, and a fighter. Now, I think, I, I think I've done this correctly. I think I'm just trying to get the logistics a bit more organised because we're, we're slightly off on numbers. Um, so we'll have. Six leaving, which leaves three here, plus nine, twelve. We'll have five to pick up, or five transports to pick up. So we'll have two units spare, which is for one of the transports. And then the second one gets filled up. Um, 
There's one and an anti-airgun. We've got six for these guys when they come back. And uh, we've got some sperry cubs, so we're getting a little fighter for now to reinforce Europe. So, um, I, had, I did think about a few things here because the Japanese are, are coming. Um, I'm just thinking about possibly. I know this is something Yan does, or at least he's doing it in my game. He's done it, actually he's done it, done it twice to me. Uh, stacking Kazakh with the Allies just to kind of limit Japan's movement. Um, also helps, you know, prevent trading of Kazakh. You can just keep it there, and it's really hard for Japan to actually find a way through because then Novo gets very definitely dead zoned. <laughs> it becomes hard to make it make it out. But yeah, we'll go for this. Uh, attack moves. Not a huge amount to do here. I don't think actually any anything to be fair. Um, what's good, I think, from uh, Cobra's perspective, he is going for Russia, which I think is the is the correct move. I was thinking he may come down to India, but he is looks like he is pushing straight for uh, for Moscow, which is which is a good thing to do as a Japanese. I'm not a big fan of it, so obviously I'm going to have to be defending Russia a bit more tightly, but. Yeah, it's the, it's the right play. And it looks like he's going to actually grab um, your cut as well. So I'm going to have to pull these guys out now. But they've had a, a nice run up here. They, they had uh, a few extra rounds of income for Russia in the, in the Soviet Far East. That's, that's pretty good. But I just think it's time to time to retreat now. But yeah, with Germany here, yeah, I don't think we can do much to be fair. I think it's just, just yeah, non-coms. There's no attacking move I can do. Um, looks like the Japanese are coming for uh, Hawaii as well. I'm going to let them have it, obviously. I'm not too far about that. You'd expect Japan to grab that at some point. Just got to be careful not to leave uh, Western open. <laughs> That'd be a mistake. Okay, let's just crack on the non-coms. So, move you guys up. Um, okay, where best to put these troops is the thing here. I think I'm going to put them in India because obviously the more I put in India, in fact I might put everything in here now, the more I put in India, the more UK troops I can move out to help deal with the Japanese, so it's probably good that we have as much US presence in India as we can, just to allow, because we can't, it's, it's better to have one strong nation dead zoning a province and then have three with limited troops, you know, looking to do a three-way punch that's not as effective. Well, they just have one strong nation with lots of players, which is the UK in this case, and I suppose and Russia. They can dead zone it together, and the US can just help support for now until they get their numbers up. Um, we have no bombers in range, I believe. To so be very careful about that. They've got okay. The Japanese have got one on Wake Island, but the Germans have got none, so we can move this guy freely, which is good. Um, and probably just put some more. I'll just load up her. Uh, Load up C zone eight. Why not? It means we can probably free up this um, UK fighter to move around if we if we need to. So let's put everything back. Uh, I'll leave these guys here. I think just to if they do come up for Alaska or whatever, we've got a immediate uh, blitz blocker in uh, Canada. Okay, that should do. I think, I think we're all good. Oops. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's always at the last second you see something. Okay, that, that sub's dead, unfortunately. <laughs> Abandoned in season 37. Damn it, poor guy. Okay, well, fair enough. I mean, in a sense, if he comes if he comes too heavy to 37, we can punish it with the, the aircraft, because we've got a lot of planes in India, so... Um, we'll see what he does, though. I think he should probably just... Where's his... One, two, three, yeah. He can use some planes if he wants to planes and a destroyer to, to deal with this, or even just a sub and a destroyer would be fine. Okay. Oh, one small mistake there. Okay. So, at the end of round four, it's uh, 211, 2.10, so we've just taken over the, the axis on attack power now, um, which is good, so we're heading, heading in the right direction. Okay, Russia round five, we've got 29 to spend. Um, not a lot of progress we can make in Europe here, yeah, I think. Also we, we still got we've still got Belarus and uh, Ukraine under control which is nice. I think I'll just try and take Baltic states and then that'll be it. Probably actually just take Kazakh as well. Yeah, that's good. So um yeah seven and two looks good there, I think. So 
so we'll do one, two, three, four. Grab this. Um, probably should block the blitz in Novo as well with this guy, I think, just because there is a few things that can hit Russia. I mean, obviously not got it that defended. Um, yeah, that's about all we can do. Fingers crossed for Baltic States. Nice. <laughs> Both planes missed, as you'd expect. Come on, so swap out this artillery for infantry. Pull you back. Block. Retreat. Um, now I'm going to put everything here. Or is that a wise move? It's the Germans to go next. I'm expecting probably. I'm going to put everything into. Um, hmm. I may put everything here. I'm just thinking about where he's possibly going to go with this German, the German troops. It looks like a, um, a Ukraine stack here. With a view to getting to the Caucasus, so if I can try and just cut this off straight away, if I can move these guys as well. That leaves us 22, 26, 29, 31, 35 of the deployments. Versus what? 25, 28. Oof. I don't think we can dead zone that, actually. I don't think we can. So we've just got too many infantry attacking. It's fairly close, but yeah, I don't think we can. I can try the odds though, once we actually see the move from Germany. We can test the odds just in case we actually can't do anything there. But I think there's probably other priorities in a sense as well. He's got a trade off at least these four. So he'll lose a few infantry maybe. Yeah, they take a few from this stack to take Belarusia back, so that's good. Okay. One thing about moving to the Caucasus as well, if you're leaving the Japanese a bit of an easier time to at least move into nowhere, they could probably move into nowhere freely here. We'd have five units nearby plus whatever we deploy. So yeah, we don't think we can keep them out of uh, Novo. I'm going to move the UK up, I think, as well to try and help out here. But anyway, let's get on with it. So blocked, blocked, move it across. Yeah, that's good. So we'll deploy the artillery into Ukraine, obviously, and there we go. So, finally starting to pull ahead a little bit. I think the the economy-wise as well. Obviously, Germany, you're getting a bit, be getting a bit back this round, but yeah, 43. So the US are outpacing Japan at the moment, which is nice. Um, the UK is healthy, very healthy with 39 as it stands now. So that will change, but yeah. 44 to spend for them next time, 30 for the Russians next time, so yeah. The economy wise looking nice. Got some good territories. The US are just starting to arrive now with troops, so yeah, looking looking good. Back to uh, Cobra. Okay, we're for uh, UK5. So I've just had a bit of a look at India before I moved here and what uh, Japan could bring. We're actually going to be able to move out pretty much all our UK land units in one go here, which is good. I'll move up the eight, I think, towards uh, towards the Caucasus. There is a danger here, obviously, of getting caught out and actually him uh, him pushing in with all his Japanese forces straight to Burma. But I think we can probably we can probably withhold that. I think. If we move out. I'm going to move out these. Well, seven because I'm going to be attacking Burma. But I'm mean, moving out seven here, which we can just obviously move back in. Um, There'll be another one here we can move back in. There'll be all the planes plus the Russian tanks we can move back. Otherwise, we already have a, a decent force of fighters there anyway, so I think we should be okay to move out. Obviously, we're just thinking about keeping Japan at bay or just keeping them at least out of Kazakh from stacking it. And also having the UK troops here as well means we can help out with the Germans as well. So let's do that. Anyway, we're going to start bombing rounds. Boring runs this very. Uh, start bombing runs this round, sorry. Uh, we're buying a bomber here. As long with the normal three infantry and three artillery, and I think we'll just try and maintain um, one bomber per round from the UK from here on out, just to kind of 
try and keep uh, Germany slightly contained. Yeah, so that we may have to just drop off our artillery numbers or even an infantry at some point, but we'll try to maintain one one around just to uh, do what we can against Berlin. I think that's going to be actually our purchases covered. So let's crack on. I think we've got enough fighters on the mainland for now. I was thinking about 10 for the UK, but yeah, I think maybe at this point I'll have to get some damage dealt against the, uh, the complex. Um, so we can probably hold... We can definitely hold two sea zones here. So I'm going to go for probably the Baltic states as well as France. So we do something like this. One, two. And then we do the remainder going here. One, two. Can't use this plane for the fight though because I've got to put the plane to the courses this round. Kind of annoying. So maybe we just do like... This is a very even fight, which I don't particularly like. But they're both even, to be fair. Let's so go in all in the Baltic states. I'd rather have, I'd rather take this out than France. I think just because it's the reinforcing lane for Germany into Karelia. It just keeps my uh, my American troops a bit safer. So we'll go all out for the Baltic states. Try and take this if we can. We could just go out of four versus two, but it's always nice to keep one unit just as a garrison for Northwestern. Uh, let's do this as well. So we'll do um, yeah, all six. Hopefully we actually take Burma, but I think we're almost guaranteed to kill that infantry at least. And that should be it. We've got another transport coming up now, which is good. In fact, I probably should have <laughs> I probably should have recognised that before I did my purchase because actually we're going to need this to have some units on it, but that's fine. We'll skip one round for that transport. That is one thing we might actually have to ignore, generally speaking, because if we want to afford a bomber per round as the UK, we can't afford to fill four transports. And also do India. That's not going to work. Even though you're only be filling it, there's only eight, eight slots in UK anyway, so it'd only be like seven units for the transports and one bomber. But still, we can't afford that. So, let's do it. Well, fingers crossed, we do take these. I'd rather not grab them with American troops. Nice. That's a great start. Baltic states. Good. I didn't even see you had anti air gun there, I'll be completely honest, I had no idea. <laughs> didn't even see it. Didn't even see it, well. Looks like we've been rewarded though, I think we're okay. Yeah, that was kind of fortunate to be honest. I know why it is, because actually, the anti air guns in Baltic states, they appear on the border here between Berlin and Baltic states. It's, it's, it's unclear, I, I, I've had that before. But yeah. Could have been dangerous. Wow. Lovely trade for the UK there. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so let's put you back with the fleet. Let's just actually we'll just have the whole fleet, I think, regroup in season five. Then we'll have the Americans cover season eight, I think. Best way to do it. There are no bombers in range of season three, so we can pull everything we have here to wherever we need them to. The only bomber on the map for the Axis is on Wake Island currently, so no danger to us. So let's pull the entire force out. Let's move you here as well. So the Germans here obviously go to uh, go to West Russia, probably. Well, may maybe not. Maybe not. I'm thinking we're going to have quite a force here from all three nations here to try and deter this because we're going to have the Russians obviously will be deploying this round the UK have got a decent amount of troops nearby now with good plane support to hit West Russia the Americans are going to have at least 10 units and then that's also you know in fact you know, the Americans have a tank in Persia so they can blitz through and hit this so actually yeah there's like a, a really quite a potent three-way attack against West Russia here if Germany does go all in. So actually that might be a good thing for us if he does go all in to West Russia. We could probably probably actually punish that. It'd be the UK first to go It'd be like a one round attack and pull out, followed by the Americans, same thing I guess, then the Russians to finish them off, probably. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, submarine well, let's go to 38, because if he does go for 37, we can maybe hit back with our planes and submarine. 
against that. In fact, even 39 might be better. It's not quite as obvious. Let's, let's go 39. So we can hit back here. Hopefully he goes heavy in here, which I don't think he will do, but if he does go heavy, we could maybe punish that. Cool. Okay. I think that's everything. So the bombing rounds begin. Three. Three. Cool. So a nice 42 for um, the UK, or 44 even. Um, tap power, got a nice 20-ish point lead, which is good. Yeah, I'm just very curious about this. Uh, they went to Ukraine as we expected, but yeah, I'm just curious where where, where to from here, really. We've got 38, 43, 44 currently in there. And there'll be a lot more, obviously, once the um, Russians move in. There is a danger here. I think he may go to Novo, possibly. Because he'd have, what? Seven, nine, nine troops versus my. He might kill this as well, so probably. Just nine versus seven, ten, twelve, but it's not a comfortable twelve. They're largely one, so that's yeah, that is possible. That is possible. We'll see. If I was him, I'd, I'd just probably just trade for now and not. Yeah, get these guys moving up, and just sit tight for for a second until you've got the numbers really, but. Yeah, we'll see what um, see what he does. Anyway, back to uh, Cobra. Okay, round five, US. So there's a bit of a threat against uh, West United States here. I've done the calculation. I know what I can what I can realistically hold with. So there's a danger though he might go uh, up north to Alaska. Uh, so I guess we'll have to deal with that if he does. Um, he's more likely, I suppose. Well, either way, it works. I think I'd probably go down here first. Just to grab the rest of this income, which is which is permanent for Japan, we're never going to get this back. As opposed to Alaska, where he'll hold it for a few rounds, but we will eventually drive him out. But yeah, we'll see what he does. Anyway, we have to buy. I'm not sure what the account. I think it was six infantry, uh, and the anti-air gun will give us good odds to hold that because there's a fair bit of firepower there. The bomber's not in range, luckily. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. No one's at, sorry, six. No one's land. So it's just the two bombardments, two planes, and two infantry. So. Uh, but yeah, it's more than you think. Anyway, though we're here, we can probably do maybe 12 and 2. Uh, trying to fill up. We're not going to be able to fill up all our transports. or well, these guys coming back, because we are actually... Although we've got spare here, actually. No, we don't. No, we don't. We're already on uh, 10, aren't we? Never mind. Yeah, we're going to be slightly short on numbers for a while, but that's fine. We have to, obviously, we have to react to this. We can't just ignore it. So we'll do 12 and 2. Um, combat moves, I don't think we have anything. Um, no, we don't. Just flying things in. <clears throat> Luckily, I'm, to be honest, I'm very glad his bomber's on Wake Island because I'm going to be... Yeah. It could have denied me a season here, possibly, because we could... I want to be able to put everything into season five because there's obviously quite a, there's quite a lot of planes nearby from the Axis, so um, I have to defend this pretty much everything. But having season three completely open and safe means we can just ship in five transports. Excuse me, and not have to worry about actually defending it, which is good. So we can freely take that. Um, yeah, no attacks. I just realised, oh, we've got this sub alive. He didn't actually go for the attack, which is quite nice. So we can pull this back to safety. Assuming I, rem I remember in the Nomcom, <laughs> which is which is unlike. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a danger I won't actually. But I'm very sloppy recently. Yeah, I'll do ten up to Finland. Move these guys in, back, back. So actually, we do have a full set for next round, which is nice. Um, ah, this transport. How good is the defense here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, ten. Mm. I'd love to put an extra fighter on here. This is a bit of added security. <coughs> Excuse me. Did that before I forget. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think realistically he's going to go. He certainly won't go for it with Germany. That would be a suicide mission. So yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Um, let's pull you guys down. 
Got to deploy some artillery over here because if he does go to Alaska, I want some slightly heavier hitting, heavier hitting units to go uh, recapture it for us. So um, carrier's fine here for now. We can just use it as a landing zone for my fighters. These guys, are we going to put these? Uh, I'm going to assume India. I've not counted India. I'm going to assume it's safe. There's only three transports in range, and there's only six planes in range because he's got two over here and the bombs out of range. So. Yeah, I'm going to assume this is okay. We're going to have 10 fighters plus probably at least 8. So I think we should be fine. Yeah, we're fine. So we'll go for the Caucasus defense instead. We can't safely go to West Russia here. Um, as we'll be pulling out pretty much everything. Ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Might actually try for Poland here. There's a bit of a cheeky attack with this infantry. <coughs> Excuse me. Doesn't mean we're going to be sacrificing it out. Uh, not necessarily. So that's what we could do here, actually, just to give ourselves a bit of cover. Is put the infantry into Belarus to prevent the tank blitz through. And if we fail, Poland is no detriment to us. We can still pull this artillery back. I'm thinking about basically with the artillery for Russia dead zoning Novo from a Japanese push. Kazakh's fine, the Kazakh's completely fine because the U the UK alone can dead zone this, you know, so that, that's not a problem. The problem is Novo because obviously it's out of range for most of the UK ground units. So Russia needs to have able to handle this this by itself. So I'm pulling all the artillery out of the Caucasus this round to allow us to uh, hit this back hard if we need to, if Japan decides to go all in here. Just want to make sure we still, you know, keep them out of anything, stacking anything too close to Moscow. Um, yeah, that looks good. Well, I'll tell you moving here, we can pull this through. And slowly funnel troops through. Yeah, let's do that. That looks fine to me. Alright, so we're doing... Uh, It's almost filled up a transport. We've got nine dropping into Eastern, so we're almost fully maxed out. So it's not too bad. Not too bad. I think six infantry units here is definitely a, a deterrent for anything crazy here. I'll be very surprised if it goes for that. But okay. Let's do that. So, end of round. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, Cobra, I'm not well at the moment, so uh, <laughs> my throat in mine. Sneezing an awful lot, as you probably already know. Uh, so, end of round five for the attack power. We've got 242 for the Allies, uh, 224 for the Axis. So, we've got a decent, decent lead as the Allies, but we're still uh, not out of the woods yet. 30 to spend for Russia this round, which is though very nice. Um, basically, I'm thinking I want to leave 9 and 9 in. Moscow, which is 9 infantry and 9 artillery, so we can do that comfortably, I think, or at least 9 and 9 in range of Novo, which we can do, um, so I'll just go for 10 infantry here, I think, max numbers, um, attack wise, we'll go for this, because why not, if we get it, it'll be a nice little bonus, because it will really limit um, Germany's income, can't do anything else apart from that, 1, 2, 3, 4, fighters land back in the Caucasus, Checking the numbers here, we can, yeah. So we'll have 34 infantry defending corpses. Yeah, so this is more than safe against this attack. Yeah, cool. Okay. I'm tempted actually to, to pull out of everything here as well, just to save these infantry if he goes for it. Did he attack this last round? I want to know. Uh, round 5 attack. He did not. Okay, that's that's important then, because if he's not going to attack this, then I'll leave them here. If he's willing to trade them, then I may have changed my mind. But yeah, I'll leave them here then, if he's not going to change, well, I'm not going to trade them. Okay, let's go with that. This would be such a nice take if we get it, but it's, it's unlikely. Because the planes are trash. <laughs> okay, we've got the hit. Oh wow, okay, nice. That's a, that's a real bonus. That's a real bonus. Okay, back here. 
move the majority out. So we've got currently, we built 10, so we're going to have 4 four here, which leaves us 6 here, which is again more than enough. So we've got extra to 9 and 9, we've got yeah, more than that, so any surplus is good. Um, we are defending here, defending here. Yeah, looks good. Just thinking as well, I've got to be careful. <coughs> excuse me, I've got to be careful of can openers with this situation. We're obviously stacking corpses for the time being. Japan could open something up for. Uh, sorry, Germany could open up something for, for Japan. If he was to move his fighters away, but I don't think he will do that because he's got a he's got to trade a lot around Germany. So the, the, these four, he needs these four really where they are <laughs> to help out trade. Um, so that's probably unlikely, but there is a danger. There's, there's a few tanks here. I mean, he's building more, so. I mean, we have to keep an eye on, but well, this looks solid. If he goes to West Russia, um, what was the round he stacked? Um, Ukraine. Oh, was it a combat move? Why can't I see the... Am I just being completely blind here? Why can't I see the move? <clears throat> he took the... He took Ukraine in round 5. So... I was looking at this, that's what I was looking at, okay. <laughs> that's fine, okay. So Ukraine, he stacked Ukraine in round five, so round six, we're... I'm just thinking if he, if he was stationary here for more than one round, it may... I want to know what his intentions are, but he's going to go to West Russia, most likely. If he can hold it, though, which is the question. I actually I don't think he can. I've got 26 here, 36, 45... Oof. 50 units, nice and even. 50 units defending this against what? Not that. <laughs> 32? 33. Yeah, so this is actually dead zone. We're actually dead zoned. This not even, you know, not without mentioning the UK troops as well, and uh, the Americans to some. Yeah, the Americans too. We've got 10, 11 ground units plus a few aircraft. So, yeah, there's a nice three way um, dead zoning of West Russia here. So, that's quite nice. Even if he does push in with. Um, Germany and reinforces with Japan, I think that would be a mistake. If he does this, I think we'd have to think about what to do. I think we'd have to we'd have to go for it. <laughs> that would be such a crazy attack. Going all in for, for West Russia. We have to hit with the UK first, so it's going to be 10 units plus... Uh, not a lot of air, actually, to be fair, but some air. We'd have to probably abandon India, I think that would be a, a given. All in with the UK, they'd lose. I'd lose the ground units, then retreat with the planes. Then Japan reinforces, the Americans have a go, same again, retreat the planes, leaving something for the Russians at the end, but that'd be a scary battle. Three red punches are always a little bit a little bit scary because you know generally speaking that there's gonna be some kind of reinforcements from one side in between. So it's it's hard to calculate the odds. But <laughs> we'll see what he does. We the main thing is West uh, Caucasus are safe, so that's that's the main thing. Um, if he goes here we can think about if we want to go for the uh, the big the big attack, because if that goes well, then I think the game's over. Because he's got no follow up. He's got only infantry and only four planes. So and we've, we're landing with the, U the U.S. So if that goes well, we kill all this. Then yeah, it's game over. Even if the Japanese are pressing on Russia, it doesn't matter. So we shall see. This is a big round, I think, probably for uh, for Germany here. He's actually online as well. So I'll pass it back to Cobra, and I'll see you for UK six. Okay, UK six. Hmm. Okay, so we're going for three infantry for India, uh, three infantry, three artillery for UK transports, and a bomber. Again, we're, we're maintaining the bomber production. Oh, we've actually got three. Hmm. We could go. 
Yeah, actually, I really don't like having four transports. <laughs> I might just park this one somewhere up in season one or two just to <laughs> just to relax because I don't really want to be using four. I'll be honest. Um, I guess we'll keep it with the fleet. Obviously, just to, if we want to ship things out, we've got a spare one to, to move around. But yeah, I think I'll just I'll, I'll buy for three, and we'll have that one a spare if we need to. Yeah, let's just move something. Could actually get we can yeah, we can grab the anti egg on this commission round, I suppose. Move it up towards uh, Corella or something. But yeah, let's do it. So I did did some kind of calculations, but there's a lot of options here because he's moved his stack. He sort of split the stack in two between Belarus and Ukraine. I don't think we've got the power to. Hit. We could hit Ukraine, but it's so risky. We've, we've got ten ground units. We've got I think eight, nine actually planes to hit with this. So in numbers wise, it makes sense. But obviously we're hitting on a lot of ones, and you see he's got a lot of twos and fives. Oh sorry, fours. Uh, plus the anti-air gun, just that doesn't look like a good attack at this point. It's just it's it's so risky for you know. It would be a nice, it'd be a great kill if we could destroy this. It'd be fantastic. It would kill five Japanese planes, but the risk is just so big because <laughs> you yeah, lose so many uh, UK fighters. It just it doesn't seem worth it, given the fact we're also likely not to get the rolls. I don't think we need to take any big risk at this stage. I think we're doing okay, so. I will avoid that. Um, I was thinking about stacking Corellia too uh, with the Americans, but I don't think we can hold unless we throw a lot of stuff in, probably even from India. Because we can we can stack it with pretty much like 20 units. Um, maybe even more, actually. We could probably get more. We probably could stack this, actually. If I was to bring tanks in from the UK, if I could bring all this three... Or three transports worth in from those guys. Put something. Mm. Tempting. Hang on, 20. I have to recalculate this. <laughs> I, so, my main thought was I, I was going to leave that because I wanted to hit France because France is open and I don't like leaving France. I always want to trade France if I get the chance, if you know what I mean, because it's, it's so valuable, obviously. Um, let's just do this first because we know we're going to do that. Um, so, what if I add. So, I've done my calculations. So, we've got two tanks, three. Fighters, which would be one, two, and three. Keep this one with the fleet, um, and then it would be twenty units, so twenty-six ground units now. Yeah, that holds. That holds. Tempting. The one slight issue we've got as well is we're leaving. Season five is a bit vulnerable now because he's got five. My fighters, Japanese fighters here. So if I move the UK out, there's only one, two, there's only five units left to defend. It's a bad, I think it's a bad fight for the Japanese to take there. They don't need, to, there's no transport either to, to kill, so I don't think you'd do that, but he's got the heavier hitting units, generally speaking. What about if we did those two? Adding two units from the UK gives us gives us just over fifty percent to hold, which is not comfortable. Again, based on his play so far, I don't think he'd attack that. I think he's playing on more of the cautious side rather than the aggressive side, so I think we'd be okay with that fifty percent. But again, if he wipes it, it's pretty dangerous. Um, I guess the also the other issue we've got. I've just uh, I probably should have waited on my purchase. The other issue we've got as well is holding C zones, separate C zones. It's one, two, three, four, five plus four. Oof. Hmm. The advantage of having Corellia stats are I'm talking for a while. The, the advantage of having Corellia stats obviously is I'm not delaying any troop movement with the US pretty much. If I was to had, had not stack this, I'd move the 8 forward, leave the 10 where they are, and then reinforce the 10. Maybe stack it next round. But that obviously means uh, you were having 10 station units there when I want to really be moving them forward towards the Russia. So it's not ideal. Hmm. The also interesting thing here, he's not obviously stacked, uh, he's, he's kept a decent amount of infantry in both these territories, so 
Cork is, is still under big threat. He's still got 15 tanks, four planes, and 10 infantry on, you know, trained on uh, the Caucasus. So I have to leave this pretty stacked. <laughs> I can't really afford to leave this light. Uh, I think we, I think we wait. I don't want to. There's also the danger that there's two infantry here, and if we were f if we failed to trade, one, two, three, four, oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. One, two. Mm. <laughs> this is so dicey. <sighs> Sorry, I'm thinking a long time about this. I'm just going to do this as well. I noticed that before. I'll take Thailand and reinforce Burma. India is still safe, I believe, because although these guys are in range, one, two, three, four. Actually, only only two in range. Only two of those in range. That's good. So yeah, India's completely safe. So we can afford to move a few things around here. Um, Right, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for the stack. I'm gonna go for the stack. Because why not? So let's grab two of these. The risky part, I think actually I might take an infantry here from Northwest just to kind of help secure this. Cruiser, fighter. And then we'll use. We'll defend season 8 with five units. One more than he's got. Does mean we leave these guys vulnerable for a second. I think I might have to fly in. I might have to fly in a few things from the from India here. Actually, I've got spare fighters. One, two, three, four. Could fly in two maybe from here, and then have two land on the carriers here, and then plus we could also. Oh, that's nice, actually. We've got no... Yeah, that's, that's good. So we can move the American carrier and fight it down to eight. So that's seven against four, which is more than fine. Then here we could reinforce with some more fighters just to make sure this is secure as well. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's do it. That's better. Move these guys across, obviously, as well. Um, yeah, okay. So all attacking moves are done, I think. Um, yeah. Well, fingers crossed on France then. Damn. Shame. That hurts as well because we're only producing one a turn, so that's the latest for a turn. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. France falls. That's good. Damn bombers. Okay, let's drop you in. Um, I kind of want to put the anti-air gun in there, but it's a bit, it's a bit early for putting anti-air guns in a in a territory. It makes it annoying to recapture, obviously, but it doesn't really. It'll still recapture it. Yeah, I'll wait on that. Two tanks up there. This also isn't a great move. I don't like doing this to be honest, because it means we're we're they're valuable units in dead zoning Kazakh, but up here they they can't do that. I suppose it's just temporary for one round until we uh, get reinforcements from the Americans. So I'm going to move, I will move all these up I think. We are obviously leaving India light, very light, but I'm willing to do that. Plane up here. You can attack with six units, which is close. Yeah, I feel confident in that. I might just cancel actually these two. Let's cancel the two. We're going to have seven ground, which is more than enough. Okay, six ground. Six ground units to match is six. That's probably the better way to do it. 
Then we have obviously we need to count plane numbers then. Let's do it that way. Yeah, so moving the tanks out is not ideal by any means. Here, yeah, I, I don't want them to move out to be honest, but they've got no targets when they move to Corellia. But I think they're necessary in giving us the odds, so it's what shall be done. Okay, right, I think we're almost there. Sorry, this has been quite a long turn for me. Hoping uh, <laughs> Cobra can feel like he can edit this down if he wants to, because I don't mind at all. Uh, right, I think we're good. I've not made a glaring mistake, but I think we should be fine. So, replacing the bomber. Cool, so, a fair bit to spend for the UK though. 46 is, is not bad at all. 254, 230 tap power, so we've got a lead obviously there. The UK is currently our strongest power as well, which is nice. <laughs> That's quite, uh, for the time being, it's quite unusual. Cool. Nice stack of UK troops in the Caucasus. I mean, the, the danger is obviously he pushes in here hard with uh, his Japanese troops, brings the tanks back, and at that point we'd be out of range with these guys to reinforce in time. But on the plus side, we're, we're keeping tanks. I said we keep, we're keeping most of our tanks in Caucasus, so we can reinforce here with at least four tanks immediately. Plus, obviously, the fighters are free to move between Corellia and India as they see fit, so we can reinforce this pretty heavily, pretty quickly, until we, we give ourselves time to bring these guys back in. So I think we should be fine. I think we can react in time to whatever he brings here. We're definitely dead zoning uh, for the time being. I believe we are. It's still seven planes plus 16. Maybe not, actually. I don't think we are anymore. We're dead zone in Kazakh with a combined one-two punch from Russia and the UK, but the UK is not holding this alone. If Japan pushes in here, we can't beat them just with the UK. It would have to be a combined attack, but that's enough, I think. We need to make sure we're also dead zoning over with Russia, which I'm sure we will be able to do. Um, there's nine, ten reinforcing units here, but I think we can probably manage that. Anyway, this has been a super long UK turn, so I'm going to call it here and pass it back to Cobra. Okay, so, uh, interesting round this round, actually. Uh, we're a little bit more under pressure than I thought we were initially. Uh, so Japan's gone for, or Cobra rather, has gone for uh, India. Now, the good news is we've got odds to hold this. It's not, again, it's not comfortable odds, but we've got odds. <laughs> uh, I think it was a, I've actually changed my, you know, I've closed down my page now, but it was about, I think it was 65, 80, sorry, 65, 70% to hold, uh, assuming we have everything there, plus obviously the uh, anti air gun dies first. We're going to also need these guys, so we also have to sort of assume that we're holding this. <laughs> if we're holding Corellia, then we're okay, because these planes can obviously fly over there. I'm, I'm assuming we should be okay. I think this was fairly comfortable. Uh, ooh, that does present a problem there, actually. Oh, I've got to recount this now. That's annoying. That's really annoying. I was betting on the fact that I'd have this plane in Corellia. However, I won't because the Japanese have moved this 41 to threaten Brazil, which is a good move, I think. Um, yeah, it does annoy me because I've not got any immediate. Because I've, I've just committed to the Baltic Sea with two more transports, which I actually wish I hadn't done. I probably should have foreseen this happening, or at least the possibility of it happening. Um, because obviously now. <laughs> My main US fleet is trapped in the Baltic Sea. It's two, two, yeah, it's, it's three moves away from uh, getting back to Brazil. So I'm going to build a sort of a, a secondary fleet here, which I'll then use later in the game to probably pressure back against Japan. But for now, it's all I can do. And it's not a great fleet uh, by any means. What's nice is there's no threat against season three, so I can pull these guys back. But again, I was thinking of using this plus an extra fighter. Uh, to help out against this fight, and we can't get better than 50%. I think it's actually less than 50% weak gods to actually kill the fleet in 22. So it's a bit, <laughs> a bit risky. Uh, so I may just, just I may just try and uh, build here, maybe deter a landing here, possibly. But if I was him, I'd probably go, still go for it. Um, so I build here. I won't attack next round if he goes for it. I'll just have to wait until I build up more fleet. I think, which in a sense, I suppose we may as well just. We don't have to recalculate. I'll just I'll leave the fighter here and I'll build another one. 
Yeah, I should do that. So this is going to mess up my logistics pretty majorly for around here, which is not obviously not good. Um, yeah, not great. Combat. Nothing to do, I don't think, actually, with the US at all here, really. Yeah, it's pretty quiet on the US front here. Yeah, nothing to do. So pretty much all the hands to India at this point. While I bring back some troops. So let's move forward here. Let's drop you in there, pull you back. Everything else goes to towards India. We'll pull the sub back, because it'll be in range in a few moves. Let's drop these guys off as well. Pull you back, pull you back, forward. <clears throat> yeah, I really want this fleet moving back, but it's just, we can't afford to. One, two, three. I can maybe afford to move one, possibly. If we risk, that's dangerous. But as... As Germany, I would never take this fight. There's four defenders, one being one being a battleship. You can even get away with moving two here, to be fair. That's such a dangerous fight. Such a dangerous fight. I'm moving two. Screw it. I'm going to bet he's not going to attack that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch that with a with a barge pole. There's no way I'd go for that as Germany because you've really got four planes as it is, and they're so valuable. I mean, we can re we can rebuild this, and we're only losing two transports really because these are just uh, pretty much just useless units apart from defending the fleet. So. That's what they're there for, to die against the fleet if they need to. So they need a real loss is two transports. And they're going to lose at least two planes for that, surely. Unless they get extremely lucky. But, yeah, I'm going to go for three defence there. Which leaves two moving up here. So, we'll be... The round after this, we should be able to set up a nice little counter-attack and push this back. And then hopefully continue the push and try and push them back here and contest these territories, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Anyway, uh, that looks good to me. I probably do need to make sure of this, so I think I'm, probably, I'm going to move in one more infantry from Russia as well, just to secure that, because everything else is going south, including the fighters. But that, to me, looks okay. Let's go with that. Yeah, a bit annoyed at myself I missed this, though. It's a bit sloppy, to say the least. I should have preemptively thought, where could this fleet possibly go? Okay. So, Russia. Uh, so, you could, quick before we take Russia's turn, so it's 265 and 237 for the Axis and Allies. Healthy point lead, almost 30 attack power lead, which is nice. So, then we just got to weather this weather this storm from. Uh, it's not much of a storm, really. We've got two nice stacks here in both of the, uh, the, key, the key production areas in Europe. So, Germany can't really make any progress. I think probably. It's annoying to have a, a split stack from Germany because it does threaten two areas, but again, it's in a, in a sense, it's weakening. His position because he can't fully commit to one of these areas, so we can comfortably, comfortably defend both. I was even debating about attacking this as a stray for 26 <laughs> infantry. I want to hit them with the planes as well, but that's so so dangerous. Um, I suppose in a sense now I've also got to think about what I want to do with the corpses. I probably should have thought about this before I started recording. Um, we're going to go 100% max infantry here, I think. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Nine, nine artillery for now, which is more than enough. Uh, the attacking move, though. Ooh, do I just count this quickly? I mean, I'm, sh I'm looking at the board, I'm assuming we're fine. It's just... How much can we get away with attacking this? such a weird fight to go for though. Do we just do it? <laughs> I'm leaving this for the UK. I'm not gonna touch I'm not gonna touch the uh, Kazakh. Um, the tanks and planes are moving down to India. And I think we can probably get away with if we deploy mostly to Russia we can still dead zone this. Oh, go on, let's do it. <laughs> let's live dangerously. 
try a, a very unusual strafe of only infantry attacking 26 versus 10. That doesn't feel good, but the odds, odds on the calculator is it's 100% victory, which is obviously not correct, but it's fantastic odds. It just means, yeah, it's, it's still a bit scary because they are attacking ones and they can very easily miss a lot, as you know. Oof, dangerous. Again, I love a I love a couple of planes here just to give a bit more support, but there's no that's nowhere near worth it. This move itself is a bit risky, so um, let's do that. Uh, fingers crossed, we get some like more than five would be fantastic. I'm not sure what the odds are. Three. I guess the odds are. Around four hits, I believe. So anything above four is good. Obviously, it's extremely unlikely we get eleven. <laughs> but yeah, I think five would be a nice one to get. And I don't think he'll get five. His odds are less than five. Anyway, we'll go for the strafe. A very peculiar strafe. That's probably the weirdest one I've ever done. But we're going to go for it. Cause why not? Um, and nothing else to attack. I think we'll probably pull back with the majority of troops here, just to not give anything away for free. Troop wise, we'll give territory, but we can take that back. Mm, I'll think about this in a second. I want to go for the, the strafe first. Alright, fingers crossed, five hits. That's what I'm aiming for. Come on, five hits. Two. Ouch. And how bad is this? Shit. Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, try again then. Let's go again. Round two. Three. Better. That's, that is five total now. With two rounds, it's five. And four, so not quite. Yeah, I can't really, I can't risk pushing one here. I'd like to, but I can't, unfortunately. So we have to pull out of that one. Uh, not a great trade. Obviously, that's a very risky strafe to do, but it wasn't great, obviously. Move you back, move you back, move you down. Uh, I'm not going to move anything else. Well, I can't, actually. <laughs> but I wouldn't have done anyway. I can't move anything down towards India if we were Russia. I want to keep as many Russian troops nearby as possible. We can just use the UK troops to backtrack slightly. Here is the question. How much... We're going to have... I think probably... Yeah, once we weather the storm in Karelia, there's no more pressure coming. There's, there's three more infantry going to be in that stack, maybe, well, maybe eight, but we've got nine coming. So, yeah, th this is this is fine to hold for next round. Um, so that's fine. You can fly these fighters down here. Just think of how much to leave in the Caucasus. So we've got twenty guaranteed, twenty-four probably. Yeah, twenty-four. And that's. 19, sorry, 24, okay, so 24 attacking, 24 v 24, I can probably move down less than, I won't move down the entire stack of UK troops, I don't think, because actually what he's done here, he's, he's, he's gone for an attack against India, but he's not got much of a follow-up at all, he's only built one infantry and one artillery, to pick up for the next round, so if this doesn't go well, then that's it. Shit. Why was in that? Oh, that's okay, that's okay. That's fine. I was thinking I, I need a stronger follow-up, but actually, if Japan takes this round, we're going to have a, a decent number of troops sitting in Persia the following round to then try and recapture with, with some uh, plane support. I will move these in range, I think, of uh, India next round just to make sure we can have a good crack at it if it does go badly because I think an all, all in here from Japan would mean they lose a lot of ground troops taking this so I think we should be able to then take back and I don't think the follow up from Japan will be there at all but again I should have I should have left this alone actually I should have left some Japan god I should have left some Russian infantry to move down as well so we could have done a two way attack here this is dangerous but anyway I'm going to do this, I think, just to make it a, a one infantry defence, because I don't think he really wants to push on hard here, because he knows if he goes hard here, he gets killed. So we've got 18 units, plus actually a bit of change after this deployment. Um, 
so he can't push in hard enough let's trade this and he wants his planes obviously for India so he might just leave all these three alone and four once we take this back so yeah fingers crossed okay let's do that Eight, two, three, two. So, big round to hold here for. We've got 21, 26, two tanks, three planes. I think that was more than enough to hold. Yeah, okay. I'm fairly confident. This is obviously a bit risky because we've only got, we've got very limited infantry here. Uh, we're moving two back, obviously, so we'll have eight, 12 guaranteed ground units, and I think I'll. It depends what I want to buy with the UK. I can, to increase the odds, I can go for more fighters, obviously. So I think I might do that. But to lose India here would be very painful because we've got Russian planes there, which is the, the most valuable thing I've got in this stack. Because we can't get those back, really, realistically. Unless we get a good... Uh... What we could do, I suppose, we could always try and stack West Russia next time, maybe. Push the Germans back a bit. I'm not sure. They have got limited infantry up front, so that's one thing we've got going for us. Anyway, this has been an extremely long round. I apologise, Cobra, if you're editing this. <laughs> but I'll, I'll end it here and uh, pass it back to you for Germany, uh, Germany 7. Okay, jumping on for round 7 UK. And the probable defence of uh, India. I've done the calculations for this. If I build three fighters, I'm going to get about 80% odds to hold, which is great, to be honest. I don't think that's going to be a, an attack. Now I have calculated that the anti-air gun takes the hit first, so if Cobra doesn't calculate that, it won't make much of a difference, but it might... I'm not sure what that, what would that change to actually. So if you do like second last then, yeah it drops off 5%, so it, he's got at best, if he's calculating it right, 25% chance to take it, so not good attack. But if he goes for it, for me that's probably a good thing, because obviously we can clear out a lot of Japanese troops. And meanwhile, we're obviously having very little pressure against Russia. I'm thinking this round of trying to we'll, we'll grab everything we can, I think, in Europe. Actually, the UK can do an absolute crap ton of trades here. They can take Baltic, Belarus, Ukraine, Northwestern, and France all in one round here, which is really nice. And then I think we're going to try and... I'll move the majority of the troops down, I think, just to kind of... Because Persia's a nice... I think we don't need to necessarily be this far forward as well with the, uh, the UK troops. It helps with Germany, but... And I think we, we, we had to for a second because we were, we were um, stacking a few zones. But yeah, from, from Persia, you can dead zone Kazakh with the UK. Um, and then Russia can just deal with Novo. I'm just thinking about these Japanese troops. And at the moment, they're not really getting reinforced. So actually, we've got massive odds to, to kill them off if they come forward. So we can afford to push forward a bit with, uh, with our Russian troops there. Um, but yeah, the Germans have backed off to Poland, which is nice. So... Again, we've got all this free to, to trade, which is great. Um, and yeah, we'll just we'll pull the majority back. But anyway, I've gone for three fighters because that gives us the 80% eight, eight odds. And we've gone for as many infantry as we can fit in the UK. Because <laughs> we're not going to have a full transport. We'll have we'll have almost three. Well, technically three if we use the anti air gun. If we can do two attacks, then we can reinforce with the anti air gun somewhere. So, not too bad. And we should be getting a nice little payday next round as well with all these UK takes. So, that's good. Uh, so, we'll take this on the way, with all our planes down there, uh, let's grab this, this, let's grab this, uh, we'll do one, two here, into, in, to be fair we could actually leave some infantry here for next round, one, two, one, two, uh, I'm going to hmm. do this. Probably could use my bomber for trading this round. I'm not, I'm not going to go for a strategic bomb just because we're a bit short of troops. I'm going to save these two, I think, for next round so we're not quite as weak. So we've got four going for against the one here, so that should be fine. Three here with a reliable hitter at the back. Um, trading all these, moving everything down, and we'll fly obviously these planes down as well. 
I'm gonna also. I don't. I don't need to. I, don't need to. I, was, I was thinking of putting the seven thirty-five. I know it, it does nothing, but it can be annoying to avoid. Sometimes you, it can cause a, if you leave subs within the fleet, they have to do a few clicks, and it can cause some <laughs> annoyances when you're trying to navigate your fleet. You have to do a few things differently when the subs present. But I don't. If, if it was time set, I might do that just to kind of see if I could cause some confusion there in the, in the landings. Uh, but. Since we've got 80%, I'm not too worried. I'll, I'll keep the sub safe. I might just tail these guys. Just follow, follow them. <laughs> just keep an eye on them and see if we can get any value. Um, one thing I did realise I made a big mistake was not moving these six troops to central. Because they could have been reinforcing... They could have been picked up by these transports next round. Or this round, rather. Um, because there was no immediate threat to uh, West United States. If the Japanese doubled back and went for it, they could we could just just move back. So to put them to not put them here was a big mistake. That's just sloppy because they they had potential to get picked up, and we could have rebuilt some more if we needed to later on. So it's yeah, that's that's bad play because now these five trends was completely useless for a round or two. Well, yeah, two rounds really, but not good. Anyway, um, that's probably everything we want to do. Fingers crossed we get these two, particularly France obviously. I'd like to give the Germans as many trades as possible. And yeah, I think I should do it. So let's go. So France. Good start. I don't mind the hit back. Northwestern. Good. Well, nice round for the UK though. Oh, one more. Cool. Nice, right, let's pull everything down. Let's put everything back in here. Fly you guys. Oh. I panicked for a second then, I thought, hang on, where's my planes? I thought I use them for a fight now. <laughs> just up there. Um, can we tell these guys? At a distance, I suppose we can. 38 is not a bad zone, so we can hit 36 if we want to. We'll still hit 35. Uh, let's put you back in the fleet, put you back in the UK. So we we'll set up a little stack in um, West Russia with the transports back. So yeah, we'll probably move in with everything here. The entire, the entire load of uh, Americans and a lot of Russians as well. As long as we've got a clear chance to dead zone with these guys. I think, we'll, yeah, we'll try and push forward with the, the whole Allied force into West Russia this round. And then we'll see if we can progress to maybe better Russia the following round and then try and keep the push going as long as we can. We might, it'll be slow progress, but cause there is a lot of, uh, there is actually quite a lot of German infantry there. We've got 47, 15 tanks. The only weak thing at the moment is their aircraft, really. They've got very few aircraft. For Germany, at least. Uh, right. That's more than secure. India's looking good. This. Yeah. Good place for the Australian infantry as well. Nice. Okay. Looking good. Obviously, India next round is also completely guaranteed because we've got what, 15 units bordering with also more fires on the way so yeah, not a issue nice payday, 45 for the UK, that's what you like to see and actually it worked out really nicely because we've got 4 transports and we've got technically 8 units so it actually worked out perfect so we can do 3 attacks and reinforce them 1 if we want to nice I'd like to maintain the bombing runs if I can with the UK um, it, it made sense that this particular round to not do that but generally speaking we want to be bombing as much as we can but yeah UK economy after that very nice so how are we looking overall two, two, sorry, 277 238 healthy lead now which is nice um, the UK are currently my strongest power <laughs> which, is, which is quite nice almost as strong as Germany which is also interesting um, but yeah they, they have got a crap ton of fighters in there uh, India. It's not ideal to put fighters there, but I think just to get odds for one round, it's completely fine. Because these fighters are so valuable. 
That's the, they'll be so useful for the rest of the game, so having them there, is, I don't mind at all. We've got a good load of infantry coming back, so... Yeah, I think India should be... As long as we can hold the 80% if he goes for it, which is, again, there's no guarantee of that, but still, if we can hold, then it's going to be... Uh, we're going to be in good shape, I think. As I mentioned before as well, there's very little follow-up from... This, if he go, if he doesn't go for the attack here, then there's no real follow up. All he can bring extra next round is two more land units and two fighters, maybe even four. But even then, we're going to have, as I said, 15 more <laughs> coming in, plus some an extra fighter if we want to. So, yeah, we hold this round. India won't we won't lose India at all. We can pressure properly here. I'm enjoying the free reign I think with Russia as well at the moment because again we've, we've dead zoned wherever. Japan could possibly push into so Japan have got no options here apart from light trading so Russia is nice and secure we've got a fair spare 24 we can put in West Russia this round as well so yeah make a nice front against Germany so all things are looking fairly good I think back to uh, back to Cobra okay US 7 so the Japanese are posturing right now like they're going to take Alaska which I hope doesn't happen purely for the sake I think it would be a worse game if it does happen because so I won't have as much problem dealing with Japan in Asia um, and plus I've already got some ground troops prepared so the best he's going to do is a prolonged you know, occupation of Alaska but that's going to be at the sacrifice of the entire pressure against Moscow for a number of rounds so this is a, a not a good move so I'm hoping that doesn't happen um, just for the sake of the game, um, but there is, I think th these were in 44 or 43 maybe, I would be more thinking about, he may he may move later on, um, but right now I think it's more likely my, because uh, he didn't have the full numbers, so I think he may, he may have just moved back just to, because why not, um, he may ship these back into uh, to Burma possibly next round. Uh, but it's more likely my Australian stack's going to die, unfortunately. I can't really do much about defending them, but they they will die, obviously, if the Japanese decide to come for them. Um, but anyway, so we're going to try and fix our logistics this round. We're going to get 14 infantry. I'm going to move these guys out, because I can move them back in if I need to. Um, there's no immediate threat against Western just yet, so I might as well move them out and possibly give them the option to go with the logistics next time. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, combat move. Not actually anything we can do with the US this round. But we're just getting into position. Oh, excuse me. We're just woken up. So, um, yeah. That's all. And nothing has moved. <laughs> Gets to the Mumcom. So, uh, subs and destroy will go through the uh, Panama Canal. I want to be at least. Yeah, I, I, I said to uh, Cobra in the Discord to justify the purchase of that fleet. I have to kind of make use of it in the Pacific somehow to try and pressure Japan a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to send it immediately through there and just try and get some value from it, even though it's going to be very hard. But we'll try and somehow regroup it with this sub here, try and get them together. So we've got five subs, which is no, you know, that's a decent force of subs combined with the uh, the UK one as well. It's pretty decent. Anyway, let's get this, these five transports back. I'm going to understack a five set of transports. Everything moves forwards. I'm going to put the battleship. Um, there is no immediate danger. There's the, uh, there's a bomber in Xinjiang that can reach C zone three, provided it's got a landing spot in Northwestern. So if Germany takes back Northwestern, there is a danger against these transports. Um, obviously the UK can retake before Japan has a go, however if I was for somehow got terrible dice and couldn't take this back um, Japan would have a snipe of a lot of transport. So I'm going to put a battleship up in three just as a bit of an insurance policy in case something bad happens in Northwestern. Uh, I don't need all these, these uh, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, I'm going to put everything back. Put everything back. Except the fires. This is definitely not in range, is it? They're not in range. Yeah, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's a bit more fleet here than I would have 
Actually, I really need because there's only four four attacking fires, which won't get used in the fleet. I'm almost sure. Despite even possibly even above fifty percent, it's just so dangerous because Germany loses so much power immediately. So for now, we're going to have yeah one, two, three Americans plus more. So this this saves entirely fleet. The battleships are there. So that those transports are safe, most likely. That'd be a ballsy attack to go for a bomber there. I think. Um, so yeah, we're just getting things in position. Got a fair amount of infantry next round. Um, there's still a danger here. Obviously, there's still a quite a significant force sitting in um, in Burma, so I can't ignore this. So I'm gonna have to pull back pretty much, pretty much everything. I think I'll pull back everything because it frees up my other nations to move out. Um, so it's better just to have a, a stronger UK and having as few nations in here as possible is a good thing. So I'll try and move the Russian tanks out and the planes to help out with the, the Japanese front and leave just probably a contingent of US and UK forces here. So we'll try to free up the uh, the Russians. We don't necessarily need these guys to dead zone Kazakh because dead Kazakh's already dead zoned by the Russians alone because there's no more there's no more troops flying up from Japan. So just yet anyway. So yeah, I can freely move these guys back to India just to help out and these tanks as well. Okay, that should do it for the UK uh, US move. I think we're okay. Um, no planes in. Oh yeah, no planes range of 19. One, two, three, four. They wouldn't have been range anyway. Cool. Uh, right. Let's go. So end of round seven. 291 attack power for the Allies, 256 for the Axis. On to Russia, round 8. Uh, ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna have a couple, couple more out there. Let's throw, them. Let's throw them in there, 4 and 2. Uh, attacking moves. It's a 909 range. Just do. Take that as lightly as we can, a bit risky. We'll do that, and I think we'll probably move the entire 24 stack into West Russia. Oh, did I? No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I thought, I thought I forgot to move to it. No, we're fine. Yeah, I'll move the entire 24 stack into West Russia, so Germany's got a bit more of an uncomfortable time moving in anywhere hard. I don't think they can, they can move obviously into the Baltic states comfortably, but Belarus and Ukraine, I don't think they can. We've got 27, 28, 29, one, two, three. Ukraine's definitely uncomfortable. I'm just thinking about a one two punch here. Yeah, Ukraine's uncomfortable. Belarus is possible because, again, I've got a large stack of infantry. It's not really supported by a lot of aircraft. At least aircraft that are in range. Uh, again, I want to try and free up these fighters as, as soon as possible. But for now, yeah, we're just sort of, we're just stacking West Russia. So we'll see what Germany does. They may go for some, they may go for a stack forward, but we'll see. For now, it's just this is all can do with Russia, I think. Fingers crossed, we get the trade. Uh, if I don't get, if my infantry lands, if these infantry lands are hit, I might just pull out. I think. So I don't really want to risk. I don't like 50-50s. Doesn't matter anyway because we're the hit. Cool, perfect. That's nice. All right, so let's pull everything back. We'll leave. We'll leave defenders around here. Uh, let's pull you guys back. As with the tanks. See, so yeah, I've, I've calc this without obviously the Russian defenders. We're still completely fine, so no problem pulling those guys out. The tanks give us some nice hitting power as well on a lot of these things. Uh, should we need to? So get yeah, them far more valuable than the Caucasus right now. Wouldn't mind a few more artilleries in the Caucasus, but what can he actually bring to? No, bro, he can bring one, two, three, just 15 units. I'll move a few out. I'm going to have two more there, so we're going to have four. Yeah. I think just probably just deploy everything into Russia itself. 
Yeah, that's a bit more meaty for the Russians. But six six artillery is going to help out a lot against. Uh, I'm just trying to deter Germany from moving forward permanently, or just I mean, as a, as a big stack as opposed to just trading lightly. I much prefer them just to trade and sit back where they are, so I can you know trade for more income. Let's try that. And everything else here. So we've still got 21, um, 24, 26 against a potential 15 stack from the Japanese. That's dead zoned. And then on the flip side. This looks so weird, look at this. That is clearly over the border. <laughs> those those six artillery. <laughs> clearly on, on Moscow turf, but no, it's actually much Russia. But I guess they can't they can't really. I see how they design this game, they've they put them in lines, so they, they could probably design it so that the UK infantry is further the UK artillery is further this side so it looks more realistic, but this is a bit whatever, we know what's in there, so that's fine. If you're paying attention, you can obviously see the difference, but it just looks looks weird to, at a glance. You never know; it might work out in a favour. That might that that's probably happened sometimes. People have, you know, not seen something in a territory like that. I think I've missed I've missed anti-air guns before in the Baltic states because they they can they can sit very close to the border here. Sometimes a bit over here, it looks like they're not actually in the Baltic states. So I've attacked not knowing there's an anti-air gun there. So. He may move forward thinking there's no artillery in West Russia, but who knows. Anyway, that's my, that's my Russia 8. I think we're looking good. Freed up some troops now. Russian troops to get back to the, the main fight up here. India's safe. I'm just curious what Japan's doing. That's my main my main thinking at the moment. Uh, Alaska could be threatened. I don't want that because it, it obviously throws off my logistics. Again, I've got to, I will have to react to it. Obviously, I've got to pull back all my infantry and that kind of stuff. So... It is a big distraction for the US, but I think given the state of Europe right now, it won't concern me too much because we've already got a, you know, a healthy number of US troops in, in Europe and Russia and UK are having a, a nice time income-wise, so yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, back to uh, Cobra. Okay, UK's turn, round eight. So I noticed that Germany's built another fighter here, so that's something I'm going to have to just... Uh, Keep an eye on if he keeps adding more uh, to compensate for that. I have I've added a fighter of my, my own just to, you know, add to our fleet defence just to make sure we are completely safe there. Uh, it's also nice to have fighters on the fleet anyway just to help with land trades. So we'll maintain two fighters on the fleet I think from now on. Uh, for the rest of the build, just go for 10 infantry. Bank the five, maybe gonna, gonna you know, get a bomber next round. Uh, I've calculated... India is more than safe this round, obviously, because we're moving in a lot of a lot of guys. As long as we can maintain 20 ground units here, I've worked out we're still, and even we don't need, we don't need 20 to be honest. We could do, do with less, but I want to keep it rock solid because we don't necessarily need them up north because Russia's got these two provinces dead zone, so we don't need those UK troops forward. So we may as well just secure India uh, to make sure it's definitely not going to get taken. Uh, but anyway, trading for this round, UK will grab uh, Bulgaria. Obviously, do some attacks here as well. Uh, we'll do, yeah, let's do that. Plane bombardment. Uh, we'll bomb, let's bomb Berlin as well. Could sneak into such run here with this infantry, but I don't really want to. I'm happy just keeping this like a dead zone, you know, just a stalemate across the border. That's, that's fine for me. We may. No, we can't. I was thinking we can maybe even try and strafe Burma once these guys arrive, but that's not going to be possible. There's too much there. Plus the eight fires, that's a, that's a huge defence. <laughs> so I think we're just going to be in a, a stalemate situation there for a while as well, which again, is fine for me because it's, it's Japanese troops locked up, not doing much. It'd be more scary for me if they were pushing towards Moscow, so yeah, I'm happy to maintain the deadlock there. Um, that should be it for combat. I'll probably drop the anti egg off in France, I think, and then I'll send a, the spare two guys up north just to add a bit more uh, ground presence in Eastern Europe. Sub, can I get any value? Not really. Yeah, the, the fleet's been locked down tight. There's been no targets for the submarines at all this game. I don't think there will be either. 
we'll see. We have got some more subs in the Atlanta though. This is quite a nice little fleet we've got for, them, for the uh, the US here. Uh, I don't think it, it couldn't probably take out. It could probably take out this one, but this one, not so much. But the extra cruise I think goes a long way there. But we'll see. We'll see what value we can get. It'd be nice if we could group up all these subs together. The six we've got. Uh, maybe even some reinforcements here as well, but that might not be possible. We'll see what. See what we can do. Anyway, let's do that. Berlin. Come on, a six. <laughs> not quite a six, but I'll take it. France. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Might as well just drop off. Uh, in fact, what we'll do, we'll bank the... I'll just drop an anti-egg on there. And I'll use the last transport just to drop some more guys off. So we're keeping the one. These guys are all dead anyway, so there's no point, I think, uh, throwing away another infantry for no, no reason. Uh, now, I'm going to stack uh, Belarusia here. So it worked out we've got enough. I'm moving... So I'm on four. So that's 12. Nineteen. Could probably hold some of these guys back actually. Hang on. Let's hold the artillery back for a second. So we need we need twenty ground units in there. So we're gonna have it's eight and eleven because we've built three. Um twenty. Okay. So left a nice pair of guys, two and two, to possibly trade this back if we need to. Save the Russians some troops, maybe. Hope that is right. Eight, eleven, twenty. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. So cool. Nice. That's good to me. Um, right, submarine. Again, nothing much I can get value from here. I'll move it to thirty-five for now. Um, transports are safe up here, just one threat. Could probably do with another destroyer up here just to guarantee this. Because there is a chance that that goes, that goes south if he goes... Particularly there's another bomber coming, that will be a danger to me. If one bomber could potentially get some value here, could get lucky and take out the battleship. But it's unlikely, but still. Might have to prepare for that later on. I'm just trying to shore up any weakness I might have on the board, and that's probably one of them. It's a long shot, but it's still a potential weakness. Uh, oh, my poor lads in Australia. I feel like they're going to get about to get destroyed here. I can't really do much about that. Alright. I think that looks good. Fighter infantry. That actually works out perfect. I'm glad we banked the one. I didn't think about that, but we actually, because we built another fighter, we only had seven deployment zones for infantry, so actually, we now have got a full set of transports now with an extra fighter. Cool. That's perfect. Have a look in. 309, 262. That's good. Nice 40 point lead. And the UK economy is still looking really nice. All this land grabbing in Europe has been good. Um, just the French trades. So yeah, looking good so far. Back to uh, back to Cobra. Okay, US round eight. So Cobra's gone for the attack we thought he might go for, which was the all-in for Alaska sort of Western play. Um, and as the Allied player, I said that this this is a good sight for me because it means obviously Russia's getting uh, a lot less pressure put put against that, which I think is the the stronger play it's uh it gives russia a much easier time so i think in counter to this we can defend quite easily because we've got a number of troops already positioned nearby western so i'm going to add some reinforcements on my purchase uh, i'm probably just going to bring these guys these 12 guys back straight away just just to get it dealt with um so we'll move to eastern canada and then over to western and then we'll try and push it back he's got reinforcements coming so there are there is a follow-up to this it's going to be quite a significant follow-up 
Um, but I think it's gonna it's gonna take a while, but we can clear this because obviously we've got a bigger deployment zone. He can provide eight per round, we've got ten and then twelve, so we're gonna be able to outmatch whatever he can bring to Alaska in the long term. So he may control this for now, but in doing that, he's in controlling Alaska, which is just a two IPC territory. He's throwing, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of pressure I'm going to mount against this as a, as a sort of a, a counter to what he's doing over here. So we'll push forward into Kazakh with Russia uh, and we'll keep some aggression and just try and push back Japan and, and its Asian territories. We can probably do something here as well. I'm just thinking there's no threat, at least against India this round, so we can move everything out. I'm thinking of stacking Kazakh with the Allies and trying to take Burma as well. And just We've got to just play aggressively now against... Uh, Japan's land forces here. Try and get something back. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I've done uh, six infantry, ten. That's uh, uh, six infantry, one artillery, two fighters. Got these guys here. Uh, the fleets. Don't they? I can't. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. I could bring the fleet through here. There's only two planes that can hit what will be four, three destroyers, one carrier, so that's probably okay to do. Just to add a sort of a, another level to this of, of defense, I can potentially attack with the fleet if I want to. I'm going to bring this fighter back as well. I think I'm going to need a, a number of air units as well to deal with this to help clear the Alaska stack when we actually get there with our infantry, so we'll, we'll do that. I think tanks could be on the agenda as well at some point to blitz through here just to give us the next some extra hitting power once we actually get there. This could be quite a hard stat to remove at some for for a while because he's got eight planes as well, which can just sit in Alaska. So that could potentially get like, quite nasty. So yeah, it will force a big reaction for the US. We obviously have to take it seriously because obviously, while also moving forward to Western Canada, we have to always guard against the just them shipping things straight down to Western to take it. So these two are going to have to remain stacked both at all times. Um, or at least this is definitely going to have to arrange that. We can keep a buffer unit here just to prevent blitzes if he should bring some tanks, which I don't think he, he will actually. He may roll this guy back up. We'll see. But yeah, we can uh, sit back, maybe just. No. Uh, if no tanks, I'll leave this empty, I think. And just, we'll invite him to come in and we'll just trade them if he comes in. Um, and we'll just we'll keep the stack nearby in Western. Anyway, so I'm going to go for that. Two, two fighters, seven land, which gives us healthy odds to hold this. Once I move everything back, um, attacking wise on the actual the mainland, I wouldn't mind taking the Baltic states. Uh, I'm going to go for this though, and I want for this as well. So one, two. I want this more, so I'll grab this a bit. Well, to that a bit harder. So we'll take it with the US, we'll stack it with Russia, and then we'll move in. Obviously, we've got a crap ton of planes that have no use in India, just just at the moment. Um, so we'll probably put them into uh, into Kazakh as we need them, or we can even fly them up to uh, Belarus to help trade. We've got some options here, so that's nice. Um, I guess we do go for this. I don't really want to go for that with just infantry. Yeah, well, I don't. You, I shouldn't really be trading with the U.S. because we're trying to build numbers with the U.S. purely. Um, it's more the, it's more U.K.'s job and to some degree Russia to trade with Germany, not not the U.S. We're trying to keep their numbers intact. So I think I'll skip Baltic states. If I had better tr better air, air cover, I'd probably do it. But we're we're lacking in some uh, aircraft in Europe. So fair enough. Uh, attacking wise, that's probably not what we're going to do. He's probably either going to have to pull a dis destroyer back here, or two, or build another one, because we're going to be pulling subs into uh, the kind of the, the kill zones here. So we'll have to react to that. Shouldn't be a problem though. He can bring. He doesn't need all this uh, all this fleet to defend 64. He can bring all this up to Alaska and then just shift back to 60, just so his transports have got a safe shot between 60 and 64. Um, I think that looks good. Let's go with that. Mm. 
Let's, let's get it. Bam. There's potential to even stack Burma here, I think. Although I think probably Kazakh's more worthwhile. Yeah, Kazakh's better, but... Um, 47, that's good. Yeah, there's only 20... No, it's still 27 units plus bomber, so it's, there's a significant attack that he could mount on Burma should he want to. So maybe we just, we just sit here with the uh, US troops and... Uh, Go for the Kazakh stack instead. Got to be a little bit careful, as I said before, of moving things too far out of India. If he switches back hard, we're going to have to scramble to get a defense of India going again, but that doesn't concern me too much. I think we can be fairly liberal with our infantry at this point. This is quite a big commitment, so I think I, I, I wouldn't expect him to now bail out of this once he's committed to the move, so I think India should be very much secure from here on out. Do you have to be careful about one, two, three, four. One of these fighters get in range, we're gonna have a big I think actually what I might do, I might move these twelve to central instead of uh, eastern. Because once these ten planes arrive, there's gonna be actually a, a pretty nasty attack <laughs> on on Western, so actually they need to come here, don't they? I think. Realistically. We'll do that. Okay, um two fighters, where can you go? It's fine. I kind of want to get you moving somewhere. One, two, three, four, okay. Send you to Iceland for now. One, two, three. That's the best spot. Bring you all through that. Yep, so transports are going to be very much idle for the next uh, <laughs> next few rounds, but that's fine. Needs must. Fighter through, so... Okay. Um... These. Right, these bombers. One, two, three, four, five. Nowhere to lance. Okay, so let's pull the battleship back. We'll move it there for now. If we if he moves them into range, moves them to your cut or something, then we'll have to move it back. But for now, we'll, I'll try and bring the battleship down towards the Pacific. Um, if need be, we can just use the US, the UK fleet just to sit in number th in season three, and we'll. Uh, Cover the, the US transports. Although we're not landing with US anyway, are we? so that's fine. That's fine. We can just bring it back now. Yeah, the US transports are inactive for the next, like, a long while, I think. This is going to take a while to clear. Uh, so we'll leave probably the carrier. Five attackers. One, two, five, six defenders. Seven with the destroyer. I'm going to bring the carrier out as well. That should be fine. I wouldn't take a I, I wouldn't take a five versus seven fight. Although I feel like this move indicates he's more feeling the pressure. He needs to make some kind of big play, so possibly it makes it more likely he's going to take a risk with his planes to try and clear my fleet. But I don't think that's a great move. He'll lose a lot of planes, I think, trying to clear that fleet out, and there's not many I can replenish quite easily because UK economy is pretty strong right now. So yeah, cool. Anyway. Um, that's definitely safe, I think, for now. We'll probably have to retreat with this fleet quite quickly. Once he brings his planes in, obviously, but we'll, for now we can bring them through. Alright, let's go with that, I think that's fine. Um, so, here. Oh, shit. Ooh, easy, easy, easy. Everything goes there. So that's enough to defend against the initial attack here. He's got um, eight, sorry, ten ground units to bring, plus two planes. Nothing of these is in range just yet, but next round it's going to get a lot worse because it's going to be ten planes in range plus an extra six infantry. So 
yeah, a much bigger assault coming next round, but I think with all this we should be fine to defend. Yeah, not worried. It's going to be 12 extra fighter, 12 extra infantry, and then plus probably 10 extra infantry as well, so that should be more than, more than secure. So it should stall out very quickly, this. We could even, I don't know, is it even worth just letting him just stack Alaska? Not even push it back? And just like maintain our numbers here? Because this, this commitment, all it gains him really at best is 3 IPC. At the cost of obviously a lot of pressure in Asia. And also when we start pushing it back, he's going to have to think about if he wants to reinforce back to Asia. And then we can just take this back. So it's, it's kind of advantageous just to let this happen. And let him just keep Alaska. As long as we can actually push back here to make the make up the difference. Hmm, I'll think about that. Anyway, for now we're just good. we're looking decent, so mobilization, all good. Uh, so let's just check the tap power, so three two two versus two seven three. Looking good. Japan are just taking the lead IPC wise forty three, but Again, overall, the uh, the IPC uh, the economies are in my favour, so that's fine. So 22 for Russia, round nine. Uh, we'll go for six and one. Looks good. Uh, we could probably do some trading here if we wanted to. What can he bring here? He can bring one, two, three, four. These are out of range, crucially. That's good. That's really good, actually. Um, these are in range, so we can bring 11, 17, 18, 20 units max. If we go this, so we're going to have at least twenty units ourselves, plus at least twenty ground units, plus any number of UK plans we want to put in Kazakhstan. So this is going to be very secure. We could almost actually. We could almost stack both <laughs> with planes. That'd be a bit risky, but we could almost do that. It's tempting, tempting. What I may do instead is just leave uh, a couple units in Vologda to trade back a Venki potentially. Yeah, that looks fun. That's fun. So yeah, we're going to start trading back a bit more aggressively now with Japan. So fingers crossed. Let's try and gain the Russians some uh, economy. Nice. Okay, cool, it's taken. Shame. Novo, nice, no losses, cool. All right, so let's drop you guys back into Moscow. Let's put just two units up here. If you go heavy to here, that's fine. We'll just push more through here I guess. There's still a decent number of troops left so we can't be too too crazy but we can at least uh, force a reaction here. Let's move all you guys up forwards. One here first. Uh, tanks. I'm probably going to move these tanks down here actually. Let's do that. No danger to these, which is good. Okay. Let's do that. Three, two, eight, two, six, nine. Nice. And we are dead zoning um, Novo, I believe. 17, 19, 26, 29, 31 versus not that. So, yeah, this is dead zoned. Cool. Slightly more forward stack as well. I'm going to probably aim. I don't think we can stack it just yet. The troops are going to be an issue because we've, we've obviously we've got no more American troops landing. So this nine will be the last nine, the last U.S. troops on in Europe to actually stack, help stack uh, something in in Europe. So and there's no more troops from Russia coming, so we're going to be pushing towards more, uh, Japan. So it's going to go to the U.K. here to reinforce, possibly. A Baltic stack. We'll see how the 
Our German Rex, yeah. He's got 29 IFPC to spend. So like probably 9 or so infantry, 8 or 9 infantry. I don't think Baltic States is realistic. It's going to have, it's got 50, 65, 70, probably about 78 units that can bring, can bear down on Baltic States next round. We don't have those numbers just, I think. It's probably close. With, if we did it with the, we could take it with the, we need the UK fighters, I think, to do that. We could do it with these guys, but the turn order is not in our favour here. We'd have to take it with the UK and we, we couldn't land planes after that, so that's a bit tricky, but I'm fine with Belarus for now. Anyway, this has been a long US Russia go, so I'm going to end it here, but yeah, I'm fairly happy with the way the board looks right now. Uh, anyway, back to uh, Cobra. Okay, UK9 against... Uh, Cobra. So, I've done some calculations before I started recording here about holding Kazakh and also holding Burma. Both are fine. Um, we can obviously leave uh, India un pretty much unguarded at this point. Um, I was thinking that Burma was unstackable because of these four transports, but actually, in fact, because we've got the sub here, the sub can sit in 36, preventing um, a landing from these four because there's no destroyers in range. So, actually, Burma's safe because we can stack it with all we've got here plus our planes. Um, and it, I think if it, it had these six as well, plus maybe these, that would have been tricky, but given the fact that these can't land, the fighters are out of range, uh, yeah, Burma's good, so we can start immediately pressuring. So I think if we can, what we can do maybe with the Russians as well, we can do a two-way attack, or two-way, you know, um, forward march against Japan here and try and push them back a little bit in Asia, which would be nice just for some extra income. Uh, on the other side as well, Germany has just now pulled back, uh, he's pulled everything back to France and Berlin, so he's opened up these territories to trade. Um, which I, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's in whole France, but he's conceding some control over these, so trading these off for the eyes I think would be quite lucrative. But yeah, I'm, I'm aiming to stack, I think probably the Baltic states here. I think I can stack this. Yeah, I'm going to stop that. We may immediately to retreat. <laughs> I think what will happen is once we stack this, because there's no American reinforcements, we will <laughs> we'll probably have to just retreat immediately, because I think pulling in the 18 infantry and 15 tanks, uh, although actually it's just 18 infantry, so the 18 extra infantry plus the deployment from Germany will mean we can't actually hold this, so well, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> to save ourselves some headache just to move in back and forth. Although I suppose it means we did it. you can't trade the Baltic States back, so I think we, we will do it actually. Why not? Let's just do it. I've not counted that, but it looks it looks fine because we've got a, at least like 60 something units here. It's 52, 53, 60, 64. Oof. Close, but I think we're fine. Alright, anyway, purchase wise. So we've gone for one bomber. Uh, I will try and keep up the bomber production. Three infantry for India, because I will still maintain this as well. And then I'll just go infantry here and out. We're going to just go for landings, obviously. Uh, reinforce where we can. And then just buy bombers with the spare income, which we do have quite a lot of as the UK right now. So that's cool. Let's just do it. Um, right, so bomb the complex. Let's go. Love us. Oh, can we spare this plane? Yeah, we can. <laughs> let's, do, let's do it. We might take in this as well. Actually, we're going to have a spare infantry left here because I'm just thinking I'm going to probably grab these, these two infantry and just put them straight in uh, to save us a bit more over here. Got to remember to move a guy. It's the sub to here. It's important. Alright. That's good. Let's do it. Fingers crossed on the bombing. Six. Two. <laughs> Damn. Okay, Ukraine. Not good. Not good. 
Nice, there we go. Cool. Alright, so that's it immediately. So I'll make sure that that's uh, sorted. Alright, so everything else moves here. You can move here. Uh, you can move with the rest of the group. Um, no, I can't actually because they're not going to be in place, are they? Let's do this instead. Let's grab you guys. I will actually grab something from here as well, because we, we obviously can't hold this, he'll trade that, so let's grab the artillery. There we go. Is that definitely four? Yeah, they're all full. Okay, cool. Everything moves over. Just realised he, he spared uh, Australia for the time being, which is nice. So it's extra extra two for the UK, which they shouldn't really have. But I'll take it. If his plan is to commit full on for Alaska, which it looks like it is, then this won't be coming back to Australia anytime soon. Um, if I was him, I'd probably go for this now actually, because you've got you've got a stack set up here. But it depends how hard he wants to commit to this. We'll see. Anyway, for now, looks good. Uh, we do need to leave some troops, some kind of Russian troops, back somewhere just to help trade off Ukraine for a second time because the Baltic states, they can trade off Poland and Belarus should they need to from there. But the Ukraine, I can't trade with anything unless I have, I have something here. So I'll have to put something there with Russia, maybe. Just so we can drop that back as well. Anyway, I think we'll look good. Let's do it. Bomber. So we're actually gonna, plus we, we banked 7 this round, so we've got 48 to spend, and we're only going to have to spend on 6 infantry. Um, so we can probably get 2 bombers, I would think. Yeah, cool. Anyway, there we go, that's uh, UK 9, back to Cobra. Okay, we're back for uh, US 9. So I've... <laughs> I've spent about 10 minutes just doing calculations on various scenarios in this game now because there's, there's a lot of options here. It just depends how aggressive I want to be or if I want to hold my positions in Kazakh, Burma and try and go for Baltic States So and also the US. <laughs> so I've had to do a lot of calculations because there's a lot of moving pieces here. Um, particularly the Japanese, they've got some flexibility with the fighters. They've got eight fighters that can reach various places um, and two bombers. They've got a decent stack in uh, Sichuan, which is no no joke. So I've got to be, got to respect it. But I've worked out I can hold Burma and Kazakh at the moment, um, and I can hold the Baltic states too, which is nice. Uh, so I'll be going for that. I want to try and keep the the forward pressure as much as I can. And I'm going to try and take Yunnan and Thailand as well, because if we can get Thailand, then we can probably get Malaya as well, which would be nice. But yeah, anyway, so so I've got my creaky desk in, which is nice. So I'm not leaning on that part of it again. Um, right, so basically the Japanese, they've decided to pull out of Alaska. They've grabbed all their units on transports. Now what's currently sitting in Western United States is sufficient to hold off against an attack here, which is nice, which then frees up these 12. So what I'm thinking he might do, he might try and close the Panama Canal, in which case it kind of works for me in a way, because it puts the troops all in one place which I can then kill. Um, so one, two, three, these guys are in range, this guy's obviously in range, uh, I'll try and get this guy in range. I'm going to pull my fleet back through the canal to 18. I'm building a, a few more bits and bobs, I'm going to build a, a tank to just to blitz back up to get Alaska again. Um, building another carrier, so we're just, I'm just matching his fleet basically, just to ensure he can't come round uh, South America and try and you know, cause some havoc up here for us, we're going to just match it. And then at least we can hold off and then possibly even push back if we need to. Um, obviously, we're, we're completely neglecting our logistics, but I think this is more important. We have to, we can't just ignore this. This is, this is quite a serious threat. So, yeah, so what I'm hoping he does is he just drops off in the canal. And then from there, we're going to have transports ready. We'll have 12 infantry to hit back. He can only drop 10 units, so 12 hitting back, plus the air support. I think that should be more than enough and a bombardment, I suppose. Should be more than enough to clear this out, and then that's all his infantry gone. Plus, we'll have a tank to clear off uh, Alaska again, so that should put an end to it if he does go for that. Uh, he may just come south and just grab Australia, maybe, or 
try and come around the bottom. I don't know. I'm not sure. But the main thing is he's not going to get Western. And he's put out of Alaska, which is nice. So, yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, this is be the. Hopefully, this is the last sort of money I have to pump into a fleet for the US. I don't really want to be spending on fleet. Um, we'll try and make use of it though. Once we have it, we'll try and push back and try and gain some, gain back control of some of the islands. That give Japan a harder time, but I would rather be, you know, just focusing on the logistic, uh, logistics over here and getting a lot of infantry on, on land. But anyway, that's the that's the game plan. So one tank, two fighters, one uh, aircraft carrier, and uh, nothing much. I think we can do combat-wise here. It's just, yeah, there is nothing. Yeah, nothing to uh, nothing to grab this round. So non-con, these guys are fine where they are. They're safe. I don't want to give them a target if they if you put them in East Mexico. They might. Actually, go for that attack and kill them off. So I'm inviting this move. It, it looks nice, I suppose, from the Japanese perspective, because they can close the canal and block my fleet off. But actually, in effect, that's what I want them to do. It'd be a nice, uh, nice way to grab all their units in one place. So we only need six transports. The four can remain here for no particular reason. Actually, I might as well move them back because they've been able to quickly ship out some guys from here once this this threat's gone. Um, in fact, you might as well just sit here, just to guarantee that. It was about 90% this, with what was there already, so extra fighter, why not? Make it even, even tighter. Um, guess I can do that. Where can you reach? One, two, three. Okay, you can still reach East, uh, East Mexico from there. One, two, three, that's the main thing. Let's put the rest of the fleet here then. Okay, and we'll obviously stack uh, stack the Baltic states. All the fighters have to go to Kazakh. This submarine, not a huge amount of options for him, to be honest. 47 is not bad. Give us range of 61 and 60. That's about all we're going to get, I think. It's not like we can, we can attack this fleet anyway, because it's got a destroyer plus some aircraft, so that's a... That's a very solid defence. I'm not going to try and attack that. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. Yeah, I'm really hoping he goes for the canal here. That'd be such a nice way to end this end this attack quickly and just push the push the fleet back. Would like to snag uh, Hawaii as well at some point just to kind of um, get us a little bit safer in terms of uh, victory so it's not that we're in danger of losing the game that way but I think uh, it's always nice to <laughs> just keep that <laughs> keep that number down as much as possible because I can surprise you I've been surprised many a time by the Axis players just suddenly snagging uh, nine v VCs out of nowhere anyway um, I think we're good then so tank here um, and the rest here Praying that that's actually safe. <laughs> it is one, two, three, four. It's safe. Just uh, ten, pretty much undefended transports. Always looks very scary. One, two, three, four. This is not though, but it is four versus six. Probably should have put a fighter on this uh, <laughs> on this fleet here. Actually, to be fair, because that's a target and a half. But anyway, I guess it's, it does, if it does die, which is unlikely, um, it doesn't. It's not the end of the game. Yeah, I should have probably thought about that. But anyway, doesn't matter. Let's go on. So, end of round nine. We are uh, 340 attack power versus 270. It's a nice uh, 70 point lead currently. Um, I think it's the, the UK propping us up here with their extra economy, which is cool. So, uh, five and two looks good. Did work out we could do a few attacks here. I want to try and take um, Venki. And then we're going to block uh, Xinjiang to try and push a little bit into the sort of the Soviet Far East territory. You can very easily counter this, but it does cause a distraction for a little bit. Um, so let's do that. Grab these two planes as well. 
Oh, I did actually calculate these two planes. That's it. We're actually stronger than Kazakh than, than we should be. Than I thought we'd be. That's good. Okay, let's go for that. Nice. Even better. Perfect. Cool, so let's grab all you guys, land you down here. Everything else goes here. Put the main stack over there. Not that there's any danger of actually him losing Berlin at this point, but I'm just trying to gain territory. If he pushes out here, then it's a bit risky, I suppose, but yeah. Just nice. It just feels nice to be uh, bordering Berlin quite safely. It's nice. Okay, I think that's all we can do. There's no Russian sub alive. No, it's not. Um, yeah, cool. Let's just put everything here, I think. Well, I suppose actually. No, it makes sense to put them here because we can potentially counter attack Ukraine. Oh, I think I'm, I think I might have said this in the last video and forgot to actually make a note to myself. But yeah, we do need something here, so good job I spotted that. So we can trade back everything here. We can trade back Poland if we need to. We can trade back Ukraine with the Russians. So we're not going to let the German troops in anywhere, I don't think. Okay, cool. That's good. What's the map note? Okay. Let's just do a support me thing here, even though you cannot see it. That's, that's a great place for a map. No, look at that. <laughs> I can't see a thing. Great, okay. Let's just put... Oh, only one at a time. Hang on. You can only have one map per region at a time. I've got two in Kazakh. There's two. Okay, we broke the game apparently. Or does it mean you can only have one per nation per region? So that'd be three total for each territory. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. I just hope I remember to put the, the fighters in there because we are going to need a few more. We need to split these fighters, land some over here, um, and plus a few more things as well. But anyway, so yeah, 249269. Cool. Okay, anyway, back to Cobra for Germany 10. Okay, we're back for UK 10. So I've done my build uh, beforehand. We actually got a bit of spare income here, which I'm not willing to use actually. Um, oh, we could actually, I suppose. Yeah, we could. Cancel everything I just said. We'll actually do this properly. So, 7, 2. That's way too much. Take on 3. Buying a bomber two. So we need three for India, so it's three, four here. We have two, so we just need two more. Okay, there we go. So that's the buy. I think we'll, I suppose if we, we can mix in artillery, we'll have to. I don't want to really bank too much. We've obviously got an excess of infantry in the UK right now, so I'll buy enough for transport loads. Well, I need two more infantry basically for the next round the four and then we can afford to get a bomber so we'll do a bomber around I think it's probably gonna be how it's gonna work out and try and keep those bombers bombing Germany <laughs> and not using them for land trades I think we've got enough we've certainly got enough planes down here to trade but up here we're only just we've got two but that should be enough um, I'm thinking of moving the planes out of Caucasus because I need to take Ukraine but should I fail to take Ukraine then I kind of need to have um, these planes out of here just in case he wants to get aggressive with his tanks and try and kill them. So we'll do that. Anyway, there we go. Uh, now, I've calculated these, as I mentioned before, Kazakh and Burma should be completely fine this round. Um, and we've got, uh, we're actually fine in Baltic states. I wasn't sure if we would be, but actually we're completely fine here as well. Assuming we drop off uh, eight more infantry to, to Baltic states, we should be. Uh, Golden. So, all good. Bombing here, bombing here. Let's grab, we'll try to grab these Poland back from uh, Germany. Uh, we'll do 
One, two, one, two. That's a priority, so that gets five. Not that I'm really concerned either one of these will fail, but <laughs> we'll give it its best chance it can. That should be it, I think. I quite like he left uh, some infantry in France. I think it's... He also doesn't want to trade France, which is fair enough. Um, well, it looks like he failed to take Northwestern as well, which is nice. Combat. Cool, that's good. I will leave it undefended. If it's gonna, he's going to try and trade it back again, so we'll leave it undefended. No point wasting a, another infantry there, and we'll maybe go for it next round. We'll see. Um, one, two, three. Kind of wanted this plane in Kazakh just to guarantee, guarantee us holding it. I think we'll, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so apart from that, I think we're that's everything. I don't even know. He, when did he grab New Zealand? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that, that falling. When was that? I won't, no, I won't, I won't, I'll look on when I'm stopped recording. I won't waste your time. I've got no idea when that fell to honest. <laughs> okay, let's just go for it. Alright, bombing runs. Come on. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Good. Big hits. Eh, not bad, not bad. Six combined. I'll take it. Poland. Good. Okay, that's fine. These are obviously pretty secure. Yeah, we're just trying to give the Japanese as much hassle as, prob um, as possible here. Nice. Okay, two, two trades. Also, we're limiting Japan's economy. It's only on 37, which isn't huge at this point. Round 10 in a, you know, a KGF. 37 for Japan isn't isn't big at all. So, given the US and even actually the UK, um, we've got the, the bigger economies now, which is nice. So I calculated 12, actually 13 fighters. So we'll do 13 fighters. Um, back on the fleet, you guys. Uh, I want, I do want them in the Caucasus to be honest, because they give it, it, there's so much more flexibility there. But if we fail the trade here, say we fail the trade, and there's like one left, maybe we're still going to be deploying four here plus two bombers. That's a risky attack, because he, he can't really do it, because he, he lands his planes in Ukraine, which is very dangerous too. Um, could account for that, we'll add a few more, we'll add two pieces of, or two units here, in Belarus, just to maybe trade that off as well. We're, we're comfortable in uh, the Baltic states, and the UK is not going to be the one that attacks Germany anyway, so I can move them out comfortably, let's do that. Let's do that then, let's put them in the, the Caucasus. So maybe we just cancel this move then. Let's cancel. So leave them there. The sub. Uh, I guess we just move it back to. Uh, keep it at 47. I guess this is a good spot. So we have 16, 19, 21, 24. Which is, I believe, more than enough to win that fight. Well, of course it is. Of course it is. I don't want to talk about. Might as well go all in here. <laughs> I, was, I was sorry. In my, in my head, I calculated it for seven tanks going in here, but obviously that's not an option now. So, uh, yeah, these these we're not needed there at all. Because all I can bring realistically now is these four transports with three three of these units each. Well, that's much better. We could even then drop some guys back to Caucasus. So this is guaranteed pretty much now. And it also means we can trade off this with the UK instead of the Russians. Because I want the Russians... The, here, I want to keep each power having a specific role here. The Russians' job 
Russia's job story currently is just to keep Japan at bay. So keeping them whole in Kazakh is ideal. Um, the UK troops here are slightly more relevant, they're just here to make up the numbers, but if I can bring them back towards Germany and have them trade with Germany, that's good. Uh, that's much better. So we'll do that. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. Okay, so in total then we've got nine, oof, 16 fighters, which is more than we bargained for, so this is uh, pretty secure, I would say. 20, 23, 7, 28. So this is now, yeah, it's, it's getting close to 100%, even though it's not 100%, but it's, it's above 99%, so very secure. Okay, looks good though. So we're going to be able to grab Malaya, hopefully next round. I assume he's going to just drop off maybe here. Because we do have a lot, a lot of planes, you know, nearby. One, two, three, four. If you should not take this. It works in our favour to have the planes sitting in Burma actually, because they can just sit 61 at will. Um, and it keeps his fleet trapped in 62 pretty much. But we need them here for this round at least. I don't think we're at a point where we can stack Burma, that's just a bit too ambitious because there is a lot of units for, the, for Japan here, so that's probably going to be out of our range. But pushing in that list is good for us though, we're going to take away some valuable economy. We could even, I think, probably actually buy a transport here, bring down a bomber at some point and try and trade off Borneo and the East Indies. Because we can just hold the fleet at bay with our aircraft while we just sneak in and take this, that could be really good actually. While his main fleet's distracted, we can try and snag some of this. That might be something worth thinking about. We'll leave a note for ourselves there. Try and work that in. Again, limiting Japan's economy is going to be really good here. Whatever we can do to do that. And I almost forgot the key move here. That would have sucked. I almost pressed enter then. <laughs> that was close. Alright, I think we're good now. I think we're good. I'm assuming there are a pl Yeah, the planes are good. Okay, so bomb. <coughs> Excuse me, bomber goes there. And everything else there. Perfect. So, how are we looking? 360 versus 274. Nice, we're getting getting close to 100 attack power lead, which is, which is good. I do like the stats between Japan and, sorry, the UK and uh, Germany too. The UK is pretty much even at this point, with obviously it will be overtaking soon as well, so that's, that's really nice, really nice. Anyway, there we go, back to uh, back to Cobra. Okay, back for uh, US 10. So Japan's moved back to Alaska with pretty much everything apart from one transport which they've taken uh, Central America with. So I'll just clean this up, kill the transport reopen the canal uh, and then move probably the main stack to Western Canada in preparation to clear this. I don't think he'll stick around, I think he'll just pull everything out and head back somewhere over here maybe. I mean, well, these two and then head north, that's what I'm guessing anyway. Um, so I'm going to have to very quickly just obviously shift everything eastward, get the transports in range and we can get them all shipped off to. Uh, Europe, which is where I want them, but for the time being, they're sort of they're all, they're all tied down. All these guys just dealing with this. So, yeah. Um, anyway, we've got some spare income for a few rounds because we're obviously not shipping out. We're not really build. I don't need to build anything else here because I can hold both Western. I think <laughs> I'm, I'm not actually calculated it, to be honest, um, but I think we should be fine. Uh, I think we can hold Western and Central without building anything, anything new. So I bought a complex for Norway just so I can keep, you know. A, a, very, a small but steady flow of troops going into Europe because I don't like neglecting this. All, all the only reinforcements we've got really are from UK, and I think if we look at Germany's purchases, they are out. They are out producing us, which you'd expect, obviously. So we're slowly going to slip away if we don't add more to this. And obviously, Russia's pushing towards Russia. Russia, towards Japan, sorry, so their resources are tied down. We could we could switch them back. I think what I'm going to do now, because Japan's also moved down to Yunnan with its main stack. Um, oh, yeah, I want... Oh, damn. I wanted to hit this as well, I just noticed this is a, a pretty nice... There's a lot of high-value units here for Japan. Um, it would mean sacrificing our own 
but I think in order to sort of, you know, dull Japan's attacking power, that would be quite a nice thing to do. Particularly because there's bombers here, which obviously defend so poorly. If we can clear this out, it'd be really nice. I think. Oof. I think because we're ahead, I think this kind of move I'm more inclined to go for because obviously it's not going to have massive repercussions, you'd hope, <laughs> if it goes terribly. So I think I'm going to try this actually. It's going to mean sacrificing all of the UK um, the US equipment here. That will all die, I guarantee. But it should soften this target up enough so that maybe I won't use the Russians because their fighters are more valuable than most because it's, it's hard to get them back. You can you can get them back in one round, but it just means there's so much less infantry on the board for Russia, which is crucial. So I think possibly what I might do is soften them up with the U.S. attack to hopefully kill like hopefully kill the two tanks and the um, anti-air gun. That'd be nice to leave a, a nice eight units remaining. Obviously, which two two are defending on a one versus my big load of aircraft. Probably not this one because it's out of range. Well, it's, it's in range. Once we blitz through Sichuan, however, I'd rather it going this way and not landing in Sichuan because this is open for <laughs> killing next round. So we'd be going in with 11 versus 8 and a much stronger 11. So that could work out, I think. I think I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. Anyway, so we've bought a complex for Norway. We've got a few more bombers as well with the spare income just to kind of help push this off. But then eventually switch them back again to, towards... Uh, in fact, no, that's good, that's good, that's good. We'll keep the bombers. So let's go for that. So this is a very, very iffy move, I, I think, probably. Just hoping that we can... We should average three hits here. So if we get three hits, that'll be nice. Anything more is fantastic, anything less is a bit scary, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, no attacks I can really do there. These guys are just moving around. So we'll just grab this. Probably should have bought some more guys actually. Just thinking, I'm gonna need two here. You can make it work, it's fine. So let's just bombard this. And I probably need another fighter here as well, I think. Don't wanna to use too many fighters. Because one, two, three, four. Having fighters on the carriers in 18 means they can't reach Alaska, obviously. Which I'd like them to be able to do, but. Alright, we'll make it work, we'll make it work, it's fine. I'm gonna risk this is a bit of a light attack as well. We're only using two infantry, one bombardment, and one aircraft, so it's a bit light, but fingers crossed we can clear this out. If we don't, it's not the end of the world anyway, it's fine. We don't necessarily need to come through the, the canal, but I'd like to be able to. We'll see. Anyway, back to uh, Europe. So that's all we can do Pacific-wise. This is okay. This is hugely risky. I'm, yeah, already wanting to just smash through G uh, Germany's round just so I can see what's going to happen here. <laughs> Very curious how this, how this turns out. Um, all right, let's do this. Implausible. You're damn right it's implausible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good start. Okay, that's good. No hits. Oh, shame. Oh, that's so annoying. It would have been perfect. So it's still closed, unfortunately, but that's alright. We'll just ship some more boys in next time. Okay, no hits. That's good. Oh, holy crap. Five. Jesus. And it's been taken on the fighters as well, which is fantastic. So really, this is a... Yeah, that's that's gone. It's a shame, actually. I'm kind of disappointed it didn't kill the anti-air gun, if I'm honest. Because um, it means my... Well, three of my planes for UK are actually in danger of being shot down immediately, which is kind of annoying. I would have liked to have taken one hit there. However, on the flip side, that was an awesome attack. Five hits was fantastic. So this should all die once we've thrown everything else. So fingers crossed we don't get any rolls on the anti-air gun going in. But that should be... Um, that should be dead on UK's turn, which is fantastic. So, uh, oh yeah, I need to think about what's going to happen here. I might just, do I need this guy? Screw it, let's just move him across. Well, so this, 
infantry is a lot less useful now because we've got no air support for it, so we'll move it forward. I'm going to blockade these two probably. We could even stack Xinjiang possibly here. Just gain a little bit more territory for the Allies. But I am conscious that he's going to... It looks like he's switching back towards India here. Because he can ship directly in with... Well, not, not as much anymore because we just killed a lot of aircraft. We'll kill more as well. But he could have shipped into India directly. So I'm going to probably pull back here for the time being. Still grab my layer and leave one infantry in both of these, I think. Uh, but we'll pull back. Pull back here, but maybe push forward here could be the play. I'll think about that in a second. I mean, for now, let's just land all our, our troops. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, definitely can't reach. So, let's just do this carefully. So, only one guy just to recapture this. Um, we're probably going to be giving him odds here. 12 versus 12, but it's obviously a stronger 12 with some threes and some bombardments in there. So, it's actually a 14, technically. Uh, versus a 12, but here we're going to go for, it's a, it's a 13 fighter. I'm, I kind of almost want to give him better odds on Western to draw all of this in to attacking it and then clearing it up. It gives Japan an income boost momentarily, but it does mean we're going to be able to clear out a lot of Japanese troops and keep the fleet busy this side instead of worrying about, you know, having it down here, making some more problems for me in Africa and that kind of thing. So that's almost tempting to me. Let him just come in. Don't know. Don't know. That is tempting, actually. Hmm. Forget it. Forget it. Let's just do it this way. So 12... Versus 13, well, 14 versus 13. Here it's going to be a 12, 13, 15 versus 14. Okay, so it's pretty even across the board. Uh, do we do this? Yeah, why not? Well, he knows here, either either fight he takes, he loses on the counter-attack, whatever's left over. So, these guys will be dying. Either way, they either wait to die here, or they attack and die either on the first battle or the second on my counter attack. So, this will be cleared soon. There's no immediate reinforcements coming either from Japan, so this will be cleared out next round. Um, let's do it that way, that's fine. I think in range, I think I will obviously start pressuring the uh, the islands for Japan once I, once I get <laughs> back and break through the canal. <laughs> Unmanned, but still preventing me from getting through. Uh, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Pull this guy back. All right, all right. Fi finally, I think we're good. So, I might as well put you here. That's fine. Okay, cool. And I think two bombers go here, just in case he goes for this and gets extremely lucky. I don't want to lose extra material for free like that. So we'll put them here. It also gives them scope to head back to Europe if I want them to as well, so that's better. Okay, cool. So, end of round uh, 10, we're looking at 345 strength attack power for allies, 298 for Axis, just below 300. So, decent lead still. Uh, 23 to spend for Russia, round 11. Uh, what do we buy? Uh, 5 and 2 looks good, actually, there. That's cool. My creaky desk, for God's sake. All right. So I will grab this with these guys, just because it's it's free and open. Um, I should have moved the US troop here. That's a mistake. So I am thinking about stacking this. Because you can't reach. You can all you can reach is yeah. That's that's a good move. I'm doing that. I guess we just do this as well. In fact, I think we actually have to do this. I think we have to go heavy too, because if we leave this open and he decides to go one, two, three, mm, that's risk, that's suicide. But he could go four 
tanks to my five in the Caucasus and potentially kill two bombers for the price of four tanks, which I think the material here is worth it for him to go for, maybe, maybe. Of course, the pressure's on against Berlin itself, but still. I think I'll just put in the extra troop and make sure this falls, hopefully. Let's clear my notifications. All right, and then the main stack from Russia on this side will go to Xinjiang. I think that looks good. I might just leave the... Yeah, I think I'll leave the tanks here, though, because they can reach both Ukraine and still get to possibly Anhui or Kwantung. They can even get to Yunnan. The middle ground for the tanks is quite a nice spot for flexibility. Let's just clear this out now. Um... <laughs> I'm not going to go for this now, I don't think. I don't, don't think I need to. Okay, let's do it. I've not calculated uh, Baltic States this round. I think I did it maybe on the UK's turn, so I think we should be fine. Whoa, steady on. Damn, heavy hits. <laughs> Guys there. Jesus. Alright, let's get thinking about some reinforcements for maybe um, for Baltic States there. Um, sure, why not? Uh, the anti-air, there's going to be no, one, two, three, there's going to be no aircraft in range once the UK have had their turn, so I could probably put this actually with the with the main uh, the main stack in Xinjiang. I think we look good then. Yep, cool. So, uh, artillery, doesn't really matter where they go. I'll probably put them in here just because they can continue to trade Ukraine if we need them, need them to. Oh, in fact, do we... There was a pretty clear indication I'm not reinforcing this anymore, and they've got obviously a way bigger stack than me, so... I can't dead zone anything here. I can't dead... Oh, why did I do that, you idiot. You idiot. Oh, that's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I've, got, I've got one more chance. I forgot to put a blocker you infantry in such one because of obviously these, these tanks causing havoc behind the lines. But I can do that with... Uh... It's going to be a problem. That's my... Uh... I can't put infantry there because of my F is the continue key in my hotkeys. So it will close the map now <laughs> if I type F. Uh, but yeah, we'll put infantry there to stop that happening and then we can carry on. Um, let's put it around here. That's fine. Okay, so 26 to spend for next round. Uh, 252. Cool. Yeah, looking good. So back to uh, Germany, round 11. Okay, jumping back on for UK 11. So I've done the calculation for only Baltic states, and it looks comfortable this round. All we're really having to do is just drop another infantry into Poland to avoid a, avoid a blitz, and we can just unload into. Uh, ooh, can we actually get away with? Yeah, we can. I'm gonna say northwestern as well. Grab two units, take northwestern, and we'll drop the rest into uh, into Baltic states to try and keep the uh, keep the pressure on Germany here as much as I can. We'll obviously be falling back in Burma because um, we can't hold that, but. Yeah, I'm not worried about obviously India. That's assuming we, we take these these uh, planes out, which I think we're likely to. <laughs> then the threat in India should be very minimal, just the four transports really. So let's go for that. Prepared some uh, complex damage in India, uh, tank bits and bobs. So this is the key attack. Let's see if we can take it. What we'll do, we'll do, we'll go, we'll go heavy because I want to minimise our losses. I think. Um, not this last one because it can't land safely, so we'll leave that. Let's take Malaya, which would be nice, nice little bonus, and just block off these two as we retreat. Um, nothing to do apart from this. Let's grab these guys. Um, let's bomb Germany, I think. Yeah, why not? Bomb Germany, and I think that should do it for the UK here. Nothing we can trade, really. Nope. No target for the sub. Ooh. 
<laughs> there was potential here, actually. If I was just, theoretically, if I was to take Kwantung with Russia, it would have meant that I had Kwantung as a landing zone for um, my UK fighters in Kazakh. It'd be one, two, three, four. Which meant I could have taken the sub, hit 61, which only has four defenders, and I would have had to hit with a sub and a crap ton of stuff here. That would have been really nice, but not possible given, obviously, the situation. Um, they had a lot of the fighters here. What I'm thinking, actually, I could maybe set this up for another round. Because he's distracted over here, he can't get this fleet back in time to defend this. If he's to leave, if he was to leave Kwantung with only like two units potentially, which is possible, which is very possible. I kind of wish I didn't push in here actually now, because it, it kind of it makes it more like he's going to drop off troops into Kwantung because he wants to try and maybe dead zone Anwe. But a full retreat back and a full retreat back here would maybe entice his main force to stack Burma. And then just, you know, lightly take this, maybe, these two, or, or something around here. Have his main force in Yunnan. Oh, I should have thought about that, that would have been really good. Because then if this is weak, this is like a one year thing, we could clear this with the US. Like, if we had some... To be fair, we don't actually have any, uh, <laughs> we don't have any aircraft left for, <laughs> for the US. I thought it was just, just in theory, if we had some US Air Force and some infantry, we could clear this with the US. Blitz in with the Russians to capture Quantum, then the UK would be free to finish off uh, the fleet and land there, which would, you know, completely stop the Japanese um, um, momentum. They'd have to rebuild and it would take time to get things rolling again, so that would be, that'd be great. Anyway, it's not possible. It's not the situation, so let's forget about it. So fingers crossed, we take out all the well, the majority of the Japanese air this round. Be really nice. Okay, it's damage, not great damage, but I'll take any damage I can get. So how little do we take here? Is the question. That's great. Okay, not the best. Looking for a bit more than that. I will take five hits. It's pretty bad actually. Yeah, more than I would have liked this hit there, but I think it's it is a good thing overall. It does uh, significantly weaken Japan, which is which is great. So that's fine. Um, move everything back, pretty much. Um, move you back as well, actually. Uh, Forty-six looks good. Gives us some attacking options in 36. Here. Uh, I guess we could move in. Having multiple nations in this kind of area is, is really nice because you can take advantage of the turn order and maybe cause some problems for Japan on the mainland. So, I quite like that. Let's also not forget to do that. Jesus Christ, that would have been really bad. <laughs> I almost forgot. I almost clicked on then turn then. That would have been disastrous. And here as well. God damn. Okay. Good. Oh, hang on. Did he just did he buy some aircraft there? Shit. Oh crap, he did. Oh my god, what a move. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh shit. Hang on. <laughs> I should always be paying attention to that kind of thing, because that's really bad actually. Oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're okay. Panic over. I can just deploy some US troops directly into season 5. That's, oh, thank God for that complex. That's so useful. Just instant reinforcements. So I have to remember to do this. Map notes everywhere. God oh, damn, I need to change that. I have to change that key, uh, hot key, it's terrible. Right, there's a chance, there is a chance I forget that. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I remember to do it. Okay. 
Um, these guys can go... No, they need to stay here because I need to try to trade them. Try with the Germans, maybe moving up. Okay. Okay, so, end of round, uh, well, UK's round 11, uh, 354 attack power versus 285, looking pretty nice. I think that's quite a nice move actually to buy two bombers, because if I wasn't paying attention, I just caught that, I just caught that, I was scanning the map and I just, just noticed there was more planes there than usual. But, yeah, if I wasn't paying complete attention that could have been devastating if he went for the fleet, wiped out my transports, that would have immediately, you know, knocked out all the reinforcements the Baltic States was getting, so... There may have been a push back at some point, but I think we can plug that. As long as we remember to reinforce, we can we can avoid any any problems over that. Uh, yeah, so looking good. Back to uh, Cobra. Okay, uh, US 11 against Cobra. So, looks like we've got a bit of breathing room with the US now, which is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> be nice to get our, you know, our Shook back into operation towards Finland. Um, even... Um, don't think France is going to be a possibility because I think if we land in France, he'll probably be able to. Because we're in a situation here where he can't attack me, but I, on the flip side, I can't attack him because we're both not strong enough on the offensive. On defense, we're both strong enough to hold, but it does mean like, I think he can quite comfortably strafe France with obviously a crap ton of material he's got in Berlin. So that's going to be a no, a no go. I think for the long term. I think probably what we're going to have to do is just. I think more likely just chip into Baltic and just hold Baltic states, I think, uh, through Finland, obviously. So we're a few rounds away from getting reinforcements here, but I think the 8 per turn from the UK should be sufficient if he's buying... Oh yeah, she, yeah, I forgot. He... Ooh, I'm so glad I looked at what he was buying. I forgot to check these. <laughs> so immediately we're going to have to drop, um, drop our fleet here, aren't we? got seven seven attackers versus four five six seven but obviously a weaker seven than his so let's is it even I don't want to buy a battleship that's way too expensive no that's silly I think we'll just buy I want two units here though maybe even the better way to do it is just build a, another oh, I've got four carries though it's ridiculous I think it was a nice move for him to buy this, I think, just to force some fleet out of me. I don't really, like, I really don't want to be spending on fleet because I've, I've got an excess of fleet over here that I've pulled back. Um, yeah, I really don't want to do that. Crap. The cheapest way to do it is just buy two destroyers. I think I, would, I do want to max out. I want to buy two naval-ish units, be it a carrier and a fighter or two ships. But I, I want to buy two just to give us a you know a nine versus seven I think which is which is comfortable. Um, what to buy those? The question. Sorry, this is uh, something I d I looked at the board beforehand recording before recording. This is one thing I forgot <laughs> to, to tell. I just just noticed it now. So, but one thing we can do is get rid of these or at least archive them. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Study this. This is an old one too, I think. Um, I'm not doing that anymore. And yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's get rid of all this. Right, let's just buy two destroyers, I think. Screw it, let's buy two destroyers. He's got some subs, which I suppose we can use them for at some point, but cruisers will be nice because you can get the bombardments with them, but I don't think that's gonna Why not? Let's just do that. Let's just do. Let's bite the bullet. Get two. Get two cruisers. Se completely secure season five. And when we do eventually go for Berlin at some point, then they can provide a you know a very small <laughs> um, increase to our attack power. Two little bombardments. All right. On that then. So we've got one. We we'll have nine transports free to move back to season ten this round. Um. I think actually with these we're going to have to probably pull most of this fleet back I think because there are two bombers and I don't feel comfortable with just a single battleship alone against two bombers, that's very risky I think at least at least two units here, more likely three 
so we'll bring most of this back and send what we can spare through the uh, Panama Canal. So we're going to have at least, well, it's it's 12 units, so we can supply six transport ships this coming round. Um, so that will leave us three. We'll move these guys here, I guess. Okay. So what we could do here is just get our logistics completely aligned. So we're going to have 11 transports, I think is probably optimal, given we've got the complex here. I like the idea of the fighter, because we are lacking, obviously, after that attack on Kwantung, we're lacking, well, actually, we've got no American air at all in Europe, so I think I'll fly most of this stuff down. So let's get one more. We've got, like, two two boatloads here of troops to send across, so don't need infantry just yet. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, attack. Just the one, I think, to take back Alaska, finally, which is nice. Uh, oh, we could take uh, anime, I think. Because it's open, why not? And the British can probably take uh, Yunnan as well, just to cause a bit more annoyance for the Japanese. We're limiting their income at the moment quite nicely, 39. At this stage, in a KGF is, is obviously it's, uh, it's quite good for Japan to be so low. Oh, one more. One more, open up the canal again, and these guys can go to the UK. Okay, I think that should do it. Pretty significant attack coming here. I think it's, it could, I think he's going to switch back to um, India very quickly here. Well, obviously he is by this move, but there's quite a lot coming <laughs> soon. He's got six transports. So that's 12 units that can be dropped off, you know, very close. Yeah, we need to pull back a lot of stuff here, I think. I think the, I'm going to pull the Russians back as well, I think, at this point. Blitz the tanks down, put the fighters down. There's going to be no fighting for the Russians, pretty much apart from maybe trading Bulgaria, possibly. But apart from that, we're not going to be using the planes. So having them in India is at least giving them, giving them a job to do for the time being. But yeah, this, this counter-attack is going to come quick, I think, from the Japanese. So they've got a lot of units coming this way, so... Russia's gonna get, sh yeah, shrunk quite quickly, I think. Anyway, that's all I can do, attack-wise. Good, so let's fly in what we can. Get you over there. Over there. Uh, subs can... I've got five subs now. Heading the into the Pacific, which is really nice. Uh, I will send... I realise I could have done this before, but it's fine. Uh, we could send the battleship too. Yeah, why not? Why not? I just send everything. Screw it. Send everything. Let's get you guys moving. In fact, I would mine. I would like one carrier this side. I think just to fly. It's great as a, as a landing zone in season three. Uh, in fact, we can't do that, can we? Sorry. It needs to be one, two. Then the carrier, and the rest can go this way. We have to protect against these two bombers. So let's do that. So cool. You guys move there. Let's move you up here. Let's get you coming across. There's no transports in range. No, the best they can do is Western Canada, which is not a threat. Uh, uh, 46 is safe. Let's go there. All right. Getting things back into motion. Two cruisers for here. Awesome. Okay, so end of round 11. It's, we're looking at uh, 362 attack power for the Allies, 298 for the Axis. Nice small German economy as well, which is good. So for Russia, I think it's going to be a case of just numbers for now, to be honest, just to match this and just try and hold them off as long as we can. We'll just get, I think we'll just go for pure infantry from here on out. We've already got a huge force, to be fair. We, Russia, Russia's got, what's that, about 60-ish, 60, 70 units, which is pretty awesome, to be fair. <laughs> more, than, more than Japan's got, although obviously these are tied down currently. 
got 30 units tied down. Just helping out defend the Baltic, so. Anyway, um. Two, three, four. No, that's suicide. I'll pull these guys back, I think. No attacks from the Russians here. Let's move pretty much everything down. I will move something forward though, actually, just these these guys just to reinforce a little bit more for next time. While we while we get the Americans in play. Let's move everything back, I think. Including these guys. I've not even calculated India, but I'm assuming it's fine. We'll have a, a few players to land. Yeah, I think we should be fine. Cool. Back to Cobra. Right, UK12. So, just looking at the board initially, I've realised there's a problem we've got. <laughs> um, I didn't calculate uh, holding India against the stack, the Japanese stack, um, before I moved the Russians in. So basically, I can't hold India. We get the, the very best we can get is about 30% to hold. Which is not obviously uh, good enough to uh, to be worth trying at least. So, yeah, we've lost India. Unfortunately, that was a sloppy play from me. I'm not sure if we could have got back in time. I, yeah, I don't think actually we could have got back. We could have maybe built more fighters, but I don't think it would have been a fighter defense. I think to actually hold it, we would have flown back in. But I don't know. I don't think we could have done it actually. There was just too many here. So, just the mistake was not was committing the Russian troops, assuming that we would be okay. Um, which is clearly not. I just want to double check that. It seems 23. Yeah, definitely no, no go there, unfortunately. So yeah, we're going to have to just pull out, but we, unfortunately we'll lose the the most valuable Russian units here, which are the two fighters and the, the three tanks, but I think at the uh, it's the lesser of two evils I want to trying to hold this with everything the UK's got, it'd just be a complete massacre, which could possibly throw the game back into the realms of actually losing again, um, or at least, you know, give me a chance to, uh, or give Cobra a chance to get back into it, so yeah, we'll just we'll pull back out there and just make a, a new defence of Persia probably, trying to stack Persia with some Russian troops, because if he wants to go this way, he's going to have to commit commit to taking it, so I can obviously counterattack fairly aggressively with a big, a fairly big stack of the, the UK, so... I think he has to go all in here, which does mean there's very minimal. Well, there is some pressure. There's eight up here, eight here. There is some pressure coming this way, but I think I should be able to stack this. Um, but yeah, I think it, this is the time where I've got to be a little bit cautious because we've got a good lead at this point. Um, the Americans are just getting back into the game, so I think we need to be very careful how we play this and not um, get too sloppy because this game is definitely not over yet. So yeah, I think we need to just be. Try and play as sharp as we can, and uh, yeah, just close this game out. Probably more efficiently than we've been playing. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to go for three and three. Two more fighters. I want to get a nice, uh, a nice load of fighters on the board. I think I'll probably move most stuff. What's the odds here as well? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oof. It's the kind of battle. There's no carrier here. I'm just terrified of leaving myself weak in season five, assuming I'm going to be. Because the problem with this game is we're, 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 there's a long gap between when I'm making my moves. Because we're obviously in different, different time zones. Cobra is busy. So the gaps between the rounds is quite long. If I was playing this back to back to back, you'd obviously be thinking about this kind of stuff and it would be in your mind still. But jumping back into a game when I've got like eight of the games on the go, I'm not necessarily going to rem remember this, um, which is why it's making me <laughs> nervous, because so I'm thinking of pulling the two fighters out for the UK, giving them as, as much counter-attack ability on India as possible, but in doing that I'd need to reinforce with a carrier from the US with these two fighters uh, to obviously make up for that, that difference, and if I forget, it's going to be disaster, <laughs> so I think it's the right play, it's just if we can make a note, because this, this doesn't really help, I don't know, I, I'm not in the habit of looking too too much at the map modes, which is my own fault, but anyway, let's, let's crack on. So just fingers crossed we remember, that's the main thing. Um, 
grab this to be annoying. Could actually try and grab this, I guess. So why not? Um, it's interesting about these guys. Let's grab this, grab this. Um, they're on the fleet, so one, two, three, four, that's fine. And here as well. That's it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, he actually did try to take, he attacked um, Baltic States, which was huge for me. Um, so I think we did have good odds, I believe. I'm not sure what he calculated, but I'm, I'm thinking, as far as I remember, we had good odds to hold this. So good result for us here. He lost um, 31 attackers, infantry, whereas we lost 16. So nice sort of uh, double profit there really for us, which is, which is really nice. So this is now, I think, very comfortable. So it gives us the, the time we needed basically to get, you know, the Americans in the game, and I think probably I should I will count this because of this uh, Indian mistake. But I think it probably means we can pull some of the Russians back uh, because we're going to need all the Russian tro troops we can get. I think holding back Russia. So if we can make a substitution here of the Russian troops for U.S. troops, that would be nice. Have two, you know, two different unified forces on either either front. It's better than having, you know, split forces that are weaker. It's uh, Got to be packed up together if you can with one nation. But anyway, that looks good. Sub's got no job. Uh, yeah. Nothing much to really do, I think, apart from that. Shame. Shame. <laughs> that's just unlucky. Bad, uh, bad rolls in the fence, but that's fine. All right, let's get everyone in. Nice little stack here, though. Now, of all, all nations. All right. Everything that can goes here. Let's pull everything back. Sadly. Um, Cox is just a better option, just because it gives a, a bit more flexibility. Okay. I'm going to call it now, I'm going to forget this. I'm going to forget, I can just feel it. I can just feel I'm going to forget that. Ugh. Well, goodbye India, it's been good. <laughs> 366274, damn. Yeah, that's going to hurt, but I think at least we uh, we did make sure we count that. And uh, we saw ahead of time it was going to be a problem. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get back in as well. I think even with... Uh, it would have been nice if these guys were here. Um, again, I think we... Yeah, we, we could have defended, actually. I think we held them we held them back. I think it was either Xinjiang or Kazakh for one more round than we needed to. So I was thinking about obviously still pressuring or having a presence in Asia, but actually thinking about it, I should have camped this long ago just to work out what potentially he could bring to India. So it is my own fault. Um, yeah, if these if these guys were now sitting in um, Persia with obviously these guys safe, then I think India would have been a no go because I think the the one two punch from first Russia and then the UK would have meant we could have kill this entire stack if he actually committed to it so yeah sloppy play there for me unfortunately that's a bit annoying but we can I think for quite a while uh, just hold this back because this as it stands now we're still way ahead economically so we can the lead will keep continue to grow um, Japan's down to as it is now 34 but they will start expanding pretty quickly they can grab I think yeah they can grab three six seven at least this round, eight this round, 
so they'll be up to 42, which is not far away from the, the US, and it will continue to get worse as they, you know, get more aggressive around here, so, yeah, but still, I'm not too worried, it's just, uh, I'm going to play it careful, I think, just be cautious. At least we've got Alaska, Alaska back for now, <laughs> which is a good thing. Anyway, that's uh, my UK 12, I'll pass it back to Cobra. Okay, back for uh, US 12. So Cobra's taken India, which I think was the, the right choice. Killed off my uh, my poor Russian fighters. Um, I might rebuild. I might rebuild them actually, because they are very necessary for efficient trading. Um, I've been th looking at the board for a while now. I'm just thinking what to do. I need to kill Germany quick because Japan's about to start steamrolling everything. Um, but we've also given them a forward deployment zone too, so I think Africa's next on the agenda. Um, probably this as well, I would imagine. Um, so I'm going to try and negate some of that by sending this fleet forward, trying to grab a few bits of territory, just to harass the fleet here. Um, I probably should contest Africa here by dropping some troops off preemptively now, knowing that he's going to, you know, in all likelihood start dropping off in Egypt and you know, Madagascar, South Africa. Um, I'm going to not do that though because I want to kill Germany. I think I need every single, <clears throat> every single American troop bordering Berlin quickly. Uh, so that would be the game plan. I'm just going to go straight for straight for um, Berlin. So it's going to be a. a this, this is there's actually a danger of still losing this game. There is a danger of that. Um, I think we obviously are looking very good. In Berlin, but it's got a huge defense. Like with the, the five fighters and the uh, 15 tanks, is going to be a nightmare to get through. But which is why I think we need a lot of just ground troops there ready. We've got a, we had to build a decent air force just to uh, deal with this kind of stuff. So we have to swing all of this over now <clears throat> and just try and uh, yeah finish off Germany. I'm thinking as well because I want to go for just try and kill Berlin here. I'm going to pull back everything for the UK. Because uh, they've got a big air force I want to use, plus a, a lot of troops left as well. Um, so this is probably going to mean we lose Moscow, but obviously in the grand scheme of things, that's fine. Um, in my experience, it's so hard for Japan to win in the end game if uh, the UK and the US control Europe. I just don't. Uh, it's so hard to win, and so I'm confident there that we could uh, <clears throat> we could win that end game. If he pushes all forward here, he will, he will, he will get Moscow. Um, but I'll pull back, so it's one, one round, two round, three rounds, and, and four rounds. So 13, 14, 15. So by round 16, we should be in a position to capture uh, Berlin. But obviously in doing that, round 13, 14, 15, 16, I think there'd be, by that kind of time, 15, 16, Japan will be all over this. You know, they'd have control over everything and probably a lot in, in Africa. So Japan's going to become a monster in this game. I think that's quite likely. Uh, <clears throat> but. <laughs> yeah. We built too much fleet with the U, the US. And we have to, we have, I, uh, I'm having to build some now as well. Because I need to defend these N5 from these uh, nine now aircraft. <laughs> two, they built two more bombers, Germans, so. This end game's gonna get pretty scary, actually. It will. We, I'm confident we can kill Berlin, but Japan's already got such a huge attack power lead. Hmm. <clears throat> see if we can do this anyway we're going to stick to our game plan we're going to go for straight for uh, straight for Berlin now so combat moves I, I kind of want to kind of want to and also don't want to bomb Berlin I think I will for now but losing those two bombs is going to hurt obviously because it's, it's units we could use in the final fight uh, nothing to re-attack with the fleet just yet. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> so 
Nice. Close down. Good hits. So here, because we didn't notice the two bombers until it was, you know, past the UK's turn, um, we're going to have to land a lot of planes there, which is fine. It also means we've got enough. We have got, yeah, we've got enough fleet. We've got enough fleet. Let's grab everything we can. Cancel some of these transports. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now this aircraft. Let's regroup the fleet, I think. Just debating what to do with this plane, because I think it, we could put it with the fleet down here, but if you just come for me, with this main fleet, even with that plane, it's not going to be enough. Um, so, screw it, we'll, we'll bring it down. Um, Move everything there. <clears throat> okay. So two five two two eight three. That's not insurmountable for the axis. I think it's going to be a case of just all infantry now for. Oh. Um, do we rebuild them? I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> I just think for trading it's going to be necessary. Let's rebuild them. Let's grab Bulgaria, and that'll be it, I think. Yeah. I've not counted Baltic states, but I'm assuming it's completely fine. So we'll move in what we can here as well. Give us some options for trading. The majority will be in fallback mode. We can probably put put some stuff there. This will be fallback. So we could potentially counter-attack. We can't hit this, this is, this is way too big. Although it's, it's sorry, I'm, I'm being really indecisive this round, I apologise. It possibly is actually, we could actually counter-attack this. It's got, maybe, maybe. It's, it's a scary counter-attack. It's going to be, depends what he does with these transports. If he moves in just the India forces, with 37, there's an option for a one two punch with uh, Russia and UK, but that's scary because it's it's mainly infantry for Russia, so that's they're gonna we're gonna lose a lot in that counter attack. What he might do is just chip some stuff in extra as well, so move everything forward plus you know those eight as well, and that'll make it I think probably airtight. Um, Yeah, Japan's going to be in the Caucasus very quickly, yeah. Very quickly. We could have blocked them here. We could have blocked them here, but that means a lot of UK forces are not heading towards Berlin. This is where I want them. So I think we're just going to have to turtle with... Uh... It's funny, actually, what might happen is they might chase me all the way, all the way to Berlin with their forces. So they'll, you know, we'll move here, they'll move here, we'll move there, they'll move here. I think Moscow will be a distraction though, because I plan to defend it, so. Um, but he may just follow me <laughs> the whole way. <laughs> so should we, should we fail to take Berlin, he can just step in with a lot of forces, Japanese forces, and that'll be the end of the game for me. But I think I'm, <clears throat> I'm very confident that Berlin will fall this game. 
whether we can hold Moscow or not. It's going to be a sizable force in Moscow, though, by the time. So what I'm going to probably do is pull out all these Russian troops in the Baltic states. Um, move them back to Karelia. It would like I'd like it to be this round, to be honest. But it, I can't. I need to wait for at least, you know, maybe one more. It might be possible. I'm not sure. Leave them there for this round, then we'll move them out. So it's one, two, three rounds to get back to Moscow. Hopefully that's enough. <clears throat> if we can maybe make him think I'm going to try and dead zone this, that might be a good thing. I don't think I plan to attack this unless I... It looks good, but... Fingers crossed we can... Maybe think, maybe make him think we're gonna try and hold this. Um, which case I want everything there. I think. Try and sell it. Okay, three five nine two eight three. So yeah, I think I'm hoping that looks when we when we finish moving there'll be one infantry, UK infantry here to avoid a blitz. And the rest will be in there. So that's a it's a fairly sizable, you know, double force we've got here. So that might make him second guess moving forward. So if we can delay this army moving forward, that's a good thing. We will start to lose Africa, obviously, but I can't really avoid that, unfortunately. So, nine planes, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> that would be an interesting attack if he goes for that. I'm curious to see if he does or not. Anyway, this has been a long round again for me. Lots of thinking to do, but... Yeah, I think I like the move we're going for, just all out for Berlin. And just fingers crossed, what we get, I guess in, on, a, on the plus side, even if they go for uh, Moscow, it's going to kill a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of Japanese troops going for it. So, in doing that, they're going to obviously wear themselves out against Russia, which will allow for the one of those left over in Europe, allied-wise, we can build back up numbers and get straight onto Moscow, so... No. Still looking good. But okay, UK 13. Let's jump in. I'm going to try and make a point of making this round a bit quicker than I have been. Because I've been <laughs> really uh, yeah, talking too much, I think, for the, a lot of these recordings. So I'm going to try and make it a bit more snappy. So, game plan is we're going to head to the Caucasus. Uh, try and hopefully deter Japan from moving forward by obviously keeping everything in range of um, Persia. Hopefully delay them moving forward a little bit, but the plan is going to be just to push straight towards uh, Berlin, but obviously he doesn't know that just yet, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. But four infantry, three tanks, we're going to go for one fighter. We can afford, because obviously we've got a, a decent economy right now with all this spare income, uh, and obviously for now at least, uh, Africa intact, and Australia. Alright, we can afford to get a plane each round. I think I'll go for bomber, because I'm going to try, yeah, I'm going to try and bomb Berlin, I think, in the lead up to the big attack. Uh, so if we can keep them, well, deny as many infantry in there as we can, I think it's going to be worth it. So we'll do what we can. And I think probably tanks is the way to go. I mean, artillery makes sense, I suppose. But the problem with doing artillery is we're going to have a lot of sparing compared, not not enough deployment zones to actually spend it. So I think maybe just just go tanks. It's a more powerful unit, it's the odds are slightly better with an infantry tank combo versus an infantry artillery, so why not? Uh, we can bomb Berlin this round, so why not? So they can still reach, they go 1, 2, 3, 4, they can still reach um, Persia, which is the... Ooh, careful, careful. Let's not go too fast. <laughs> we don't want to actually attack, I've done that before as well, actually attacking Berlin when it's completely stacked. <laughs> it's like a couple of planes, never a good sign. 
Okay, that should be it. I think we can probably... No, let's try and grab Northwestern as well. So we've got a lot of spare things here to use, so why not? We'll just do one, one landing there. I'm going to leave France because it's just... I want to be shipping straight into Baltic States, so taking France just splits the forces a bit. We can't really afford to because he's got nine planes, you know, boring these sea zones, so that's not going to not gonna work. I'm not, I'm not building any more fleets. We've built way too much fleet already as the Allies, so... Try to avoid that if we can. Let's go. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. I'll take that. <clears throat> Northwestern. Good. Cool. Yeah, I guess we can make a point about trading Northwestern because it's in the it's in the vicinity that we can trade with. Um, let's probably put this um, here's fine. I think Caucasus is a good spot for the planes at the moment because they can still reach Berlin. So I'm still threatening an attack on Berlin, but also they're very clearly in range of uh, Persia. So that's, that's probably a good spot. Let's do one here just to avoid the tank blitz. Um, I want to move, just move something back here just so we can trade eventually. If he slips a tank through maybe, or... I guess the Russians have got that covered. No, we don't need to do that, do we? That's fine. I'm not thinking we've got units here that can come this way in a second once the... Uh, I'm assuming this is going to get blitzed back and forth probably. But Alright, let's get everything else into the Baltic States. And this sub needs to move somewhere. We'll keep it, keep it in line with the... The US movement here. Yeah, subs retreat is fine. Okay, cool. Bomber, tanks, infantry. Beautiful. So, getting some nice numbers with the UK now, which is good. I think, the obviously, if you look at the numbers here, combined attack, the UK is going to have what? They've got 30 units here already. They've got 50, 50 units here, which is already, you know, ahead of the, the the German land units and plus we've got um, one hell of an air force right now we've got four bombers and uh, nine fighters that's just the UK attack so the UK will go first and the attack of Berlin and then the US will follow up and finish it off uh, so yeah looking good but full pressure here and what we'll do eventually is we'll, we'll pull back these uh, Russian troops I think probably maybe not this round I'll work out the odds, because I'd like to pull them back ASAP just to deal with the, the Japanese forces moving in. So if we can get them back earlier, that'd be good. But we'll see if we can hold Baltic States. But anyway, back to Cobra. Okay, on to um, US-13. So eight are leaving here. We're leaving four here. And we need <laughs> 14. I'm not going to have enough. Seven, eight. Damn. All right. Logistics is broken, but that's fine. We'll try and fix that. 12 here, 2 for Norway. Um, what was I doing with this? Not sure. We'll just snag Hawaii any, anyway, because why not? I've uh, got 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. Alright, we'll put the fleet somewhere like 54 maybe. So if he comes in there, I'm not I'm not gonna bother calculating, so yeah, I just whatever. But if he comes in here we'll try and five subs is no joke. Two destroyers, two anti aircraft, two carriers, sorry. One fighter. Hmm. I think he he probably has odds there. I think he yeah, I think he's got odds, but whatever. Alright. Um this is interesting as well. If he goes to twenty 29 or 28, we've got the option to go 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, and land in whatever place he doesn't pick, so we can kill this transport, but we will lose something for it, unfortunately. Might preemptively just drop something down here in French West Africa, just to kind of uh, try and deter that a bit. Um, so 
to just bomb India probably and bomb Berlin. Just take a Y to be annoying. Nice, closed it down in one shot. Lovely. Oh, two sixes, nice. So <laughs> Berlin and India are completely locked down, which is good. I probably should have checked that, actually, how badly bombed it was. I didn't realize it was uh, that badly bombed. <laughs> but again, some quality play from me. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Alright, um, is this safe? One, two, three, yeah, it's more than safe. So I'm not having a full load obviously here, but that's fine. Um so where do we say? Fifty-four, let's try it. Let's see if we can keep them out of it. Ten versus eight, but a stronger eight. Um is this dangerous now? No, I think we're good for a round, that's fine. Okay, end of round 13, 385 for the Allies, 295 for the Axis, looking, looking healthy. So a big Russian buy here. Uh, let's do one here maybe. Probably should have gone two there actually because you can as well as you can blitz through uh, Persia to get to Africa. But it doesn't matter anyway. Cool, that's good. Alright. Uh so let's pull you guys back. I'm gonna need you in a second. Japan's gonna move in here pretty I'm pretty sure. Well, it, it, it's almost guaranteed. Because I think we're probably gonna pull back with the UK here, so Russia alone is not gonna be able to uh defend this. So where best to have them is the question. Right, I'm going to need at least like probably 10 units bordering all of these three just to kind of prevent this from doing any lasting damage. Um, I don't know, we'll split the pack a bit. Let's do like f that out there. Leave this here for now. At least we're guaranteeing uh, Kazakh for a round or so. And we can think about everything else. Let's do that. Back to Cobra. Okay, UK 14. Still not entirely sure if I want to actually move this, these guys out. It would kill Germany, but it would sacrifice Russia. I'm wondering if I can just do both. Just as in kill Germany, but also hold hold Moscow. So I'm going to hold off actually for now. Keep bombing the shit out of... Uh, oh no 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 no. <laughs> it's already bombed to death. That's fine. Um, we'll do two. I know you can destroy Italy in one shot but likelihood is we're not going to get... on average we're going to hit three aren't we? So we can hit three in both and we've destroyed it. Um. Yeah, let's do this as well. Let's crush that. And flat this in. That's overkill on, <laughs> on Poland, but we may as well, I suppose. Why not? Um, nothing else to do, I don't think. I, I could say France, but... Mm. Means to moving the entire fleet out, and I want to just keep shipping into Baltic to be honest. If we can, all right, no losses, please. Can we get a, a double nice six? There you go, see <laughs> what did I say. The average, well, that was comfortable. 
All right, so if they push forward, actually, what I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, I was thinking the long game then. I, I'm in a situation in another game where I've got Germany dead. I'm stacked in the Belarus in Belarusia against Japan, who's stacked in uh, West Russia, and he's got control of Caucasus and Russia. And Russia's got control of Poland and Belarusia, which is super annoying because Russia, Japan refused to trade them back because he knows that four extra income in the US hands is, is far worse than having it just dead and not in Japanese hands. Because as the Russians, with, without Moscow, they've got, it's just dead income in, in Central Europe, which is a was a bad mistake by me. I should have foreseen that happening. But, yeah, so I'm going to try and, <laughs> if it does get down to a Japan versus, you know, UK, US ending, I'm going to make these, hopefully get him to trade these back because this is valuable stuff. West Russia will fall because that's normally where Japan stacks. Um, but I'm hoping he trades Ukraine back, but we'll see. Anyway, let's move everything in. Get some decent numbers now, I think. In, uh, I'll move the tanks back. Uh, well, I'm, I'm dead zoning this, aren't I? At least I, I, I'm, he, he's thinking I am. I don't really want to stay here, but. It looks like a good enough deterrent for now. Curious where these are going. I think it's it's a it's a starting to be a push towards Africa now, which it should be. To grab income. Makes sense. Um you go back to the fleet. Alright. Have a look at 405, just crossed the 400 mark, and 299, so healthy lead. I'm not sure what the best move is, honestly. I, I feel like. What I probably need to do, I probably need to. Once these, this 11 arrives, I need to calculate. Um, I need to calculate if we can hold this with just the US and UK against Germany. And if we can, we can pull back these guys, the Russians, and then swap out, you know, swap them out for these American, UK troops. And then we can have just, just Russia holding itself, holding the defence by itself, and uh, the UK and the US can finish off Germany while Russia deals with Japan. That's the game plan anyway. We'll have to just figure it out. It's a bit awkward at the moment, sort of defending with multiple nations in multiple areas, which isn't ideal, but... We'll uh, do what we can. Germany's pin though, which is nice. It's got limited income to some extent. 30 IP, well, as it stands now, 23 national production. Then there's a lot going to go after going to repairs if he wants to deploy anything. So He's going for tanks, which I don't think is the right move. I, I understand the reasoning behind it, because you want to minimise your repairs and still get troops out the door. But I think, uh, think infantry is probably still the way to go. But, yeah. You know, I think we're in a we're in a commanding. I guess the the thing is right now we're in a we're in a lead, aren't we? So if we just sit sit and hold what we've got, I suppose inevitably it's going to end up in our favour. The more we ship into, obviously, yeah. To Baltic, this is this is this stack's growing quickly, and the Germans are not. So <laughs> sooner or later we're going to be able to overwhelm them. You know, even without all these extra stuff, the planes, yes, but not these uh, twenty so units over here so I think we just sit tight let the US, uh, the US logistics do its work no, I think we'll eventually be uh, in a situation to overwhelm them I would like some more US planes there, I've only got what's we got? 7, 8? I must have like 10 or 12 but what I normally do is add those at the, the last round even though it's risky to add them here because they can get taken out, but still, we could add some. Maybe we we'll add some bombers in the U.S. like two rounds before we attack, and one, two, and two rounds. Anyway, back to you, Cobra. So, uh, U.S. 15. I just want to have a quick look back at Japan's move just to check. We're okay. So, max numbers obviously impaired my. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I did that to be honest, but yeah, I guess it was a good attack because it worked. But yeah, fully repaired now. Um, he's pulled out one to go to Madagascar, which is a good move. That's that's 
pretty much permanent income from the um, the Axis. I'm not going to get this back. Um, so I would expect him to probably at some point go for a trader as well. And why? I'm hoping this this is the reason for this fleet sitting here. Is I'm hoping he's going to to take this back. I'm wanting to commit a lot of you know a lot of things to take it. To a lot of fleet maybe. Um, which might distract him from this. I, I don't know. I don't know. But having these three territories under our control for this length of time is really good for the um, the allies. Bits of uh, free income. So still no push forward with the um, the main force into Persia, which is for me is fantastic. This is just purely buying time for this this build up against Berlin. The longer we can hold the Japanese off here, the, the better it gets. Because we can, if we can take Berlin while they're still here, that'd be awesome. That's like a that's a you know best case scenario. Because then we can just once we take Berlin, we can throw everything back at Moscow to make sure we don't lose Moscow. So at that point, the game is is definitely won because Japan can't do anything once. You know, Central Europe is controlled by the Allies, and Moscow is still alive and defended. That's a, a pretty much an unwinnable, unwinnable situation for the Axis, or well, Japan at that point. <laughs> so that's the ideal end game for us, but we'll see if we can get there. Uh, in terms of purchases, I've already done my purchases. It's ten infantry, two artilleries. Uh, we've got a bit of spare income. This has been deployed to. Um, I don't particularly feel like wasting income going for more fleet here. I could. <laughs> I could, just, could start mounting a massive sub-fleet, but no, I think we'll, we'll play it more sensible and uh, just bank the 8, I think, for now. So, let's go. Uh, right, what can we do here is the... We could just jump straight into... No, I'm going to move them slowly. I could jump straight into South Africa here, but... Maybe we do do that, actually. I was just talking about Madagascar, but we, we could actually make a play for it if we wanted to. We could put a, set up a bomber somewhere. What about here? One, two, three, four. It's not comfortable. Um, from here, one, two, three, four. It's got to, it's got to land in Rhodesia or um, Italian. East Africa. And from here. Uh, well, I, this is this is not a bad spot because I don't think they can actually hit back. If I'm not as I'm, as I'm completely blind, the, the transports. I guess he could go like. Oh, we're thinking about taking Madagascar. He could go. Yeah. It looks to me just like one infantry can attack back, so maybe we do do that. Let's do it. Let's just grab it straight away. Um, that should be all for attack. I'm not going to bomb with my US bombers at least. I don't think I want to keep those nice and secure. What I was glad to see as well, Japan didn't push in any of these three territories. I think I prefer that. It avoids me having to trade, which is, which is quite nice. Probably doing a numbers build up. We've kind of got like a unofficial arrangement here where we don't, we're not trading. We're not trading any of the border territories just for now, which, which I quite like. Apart from Persia, Persia is the one point of contention at the moment. But apart from that, it's fairly peaceful. <laughs> the Russian-Japanese front. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be. Oh, I suppose we could. Uh, I could do two transports here. In fact, why don't I just do that instead? We could just take um oh my god. Alright. Two units going here. There we go. Let's kill that off. Yeah, I don't really want to throw two transports down here. Because it obviously means we're not shipping in anymore, or at least we're slowing down our shipment with more troops down here. So we'll just do one, take out that infantry. Yeah, that's probably the better move. Cool, okay then, let's just commit to that, I think. Fingers crossed, two alive. Nice. Ah, oh, shame. Not bad. So what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to have two, maybe like two, two transport shipping back and forth down here. 
just to kind of keep the flow of troops up because there are there are troops that could come through here potentially. They could ship in more aggressively if he wanted to. He's got a fleet here that can. Um, I'm sort of protecting C zone 34, but it's not a fun attack for the UK to go for here. Nine fires. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Might possibly be the bombers as well, but yeah, it's not a fun. It's not yeah, like one, two, three, four, five. With maybe plane support, that's not that, yeah. He could defend that if he wanted to. So potentially he could go for like a one, two, three. Or oh, actually, he could, if I don't kill this, he'd go one, two, three, four. Take that entire coastline. So I do need to keep troops moving down here as much as possible. Get you in. Let's cancel one of those transports. Back. And forward. Let's just do a double check on my situation with the fleets then. So we've got four bombers here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Right here, nine. I'm going to drop. I'm going to send another destroyer north, I think. One, two. Let's just check this. This is the easy way to do it. We've got one, two, three. That's moving, sorry. There's one, two, three. Uh, Seven, eight, ten, thirteen versus nine. Yeah, that's comfortable. I think that it's better off up here that that extra plane. That's a, that's our extra defender. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six versus four. So a bit more, a bit more comfortable. Again, I mentioned this last, uh, I think it was on, a, on the UK's move, but Germany's, um, the attacks against the fleet from Germany are more are more dangerous at this stage of the game because I know he's behind, and he knows he's behind, so it might tempt him into a, you know, a lower percentage battle that could, could potentially swing and go in his favour, so we've got to be a little bit more cautious about this kind of thing, because it could be the kind of thing that he, he might go for, so I'll play it slightly cautiously. Okay, so two up here, ten. Let's do that, eight infantry. Again, we'll, uh, we'll respect the unofficial agreement and not go for these two. And um, we'll try and take, let's go one, two, three, I guess. A bit heavy, but that's fine. We're getting some reinforcements coming through now from uh, from the Baltic stack, so. Yeah, it should start to feel very comfortable around here soon. Once, the, once this arrives, it's going to feel very comfortable. Just hope he doesn't push forward in the meantime. I guess we're trying to we're trying to prevent that with the tanks moving around. So we're getting more pressure here. We've got three more to come, so we're going to have nine tanks, plus a stack of infantry and a lot of planes nearby of Persia, so... The one two punch should still look pretty threatening, which is nice. Um, three versus. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's trust our planes, which I hate doing because I hate attacking fires, but I will trust them. Okay. Well, third play to them. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we could pull you go, pull you back. Infantry, so we can just keep moving out the seven infantry, I guess. Keep the got fourth artillery, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Move you across. And what I am thinking, he may move, he may make a move soon with this stack here. What he may do is like a double, a double move with the uh, the Indian stack, move it to Persia, and then this stack here, with this combined with this, go to Sinkyan, force me to pick one or the other with the Russians. In that situation, I guess we could, pro because the, the UK is where it is. In fact, why are we having the UK sit here? Why can't we just sit here? That's a much better place. Because then they can do both. That's a, that's a stupid place to put, I don't know why I did that. 
Hmm. Guess our tank reinforcements are going to be slightly. Uh, let's do this then. Our tank reinforcements are going to be a bit, a bit slower because we're trying to get them to a place. We're trying to get to Russia basically. Russia is the place we can get hit everything. So we want all our UK tanks in Russia. So they can hit, you know, a big area. Yeah, that's good. That's the better plan, for sure. Okay. Um... Okay, so 447, uh, 323. Still looking strong on this side. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and, I suppose I can try and speed up my moves a bit here for, for Cobra's sake, because he's, he's going to have to edit this all together. So <laughs> I apologise, Cobra, if I've been um, waffling on for too long each, each round, but yeah, it's quite an interesting game, this one. But yeah, I think it's, it's just a bit of build up now. I'm just trying to take Berlin as soon as possible, so I guess I could try and be quicker. Because that the next key thing to happen is going to be either Japan stacking something forward or, you know, me going for Berlin. So I'll try and be as quick as I can. Anyway, back to uh, Germany. UK 16. Okay, so let's just a quick look back at Germany's purchase fire entry. Did some complex repair from, um, for Berlin this time, so we're going to hit back and try and... Once again, reduce that to uh, to rubble <laughs> if we can. We've got three bombers to do it with. Hope that's going to be enough. Maybe not, but still, we've got the UK, sorry, the US one afterwards as well. So, things are going to at least get it really damaged to the point where you have to repair it significantly again. Um, so yeah, I've got a plan here. Um, it's been a bit random up until well, not random, but it's been I've not been calculating when I can log logically attack and well and safely attack Berlin. But I think the round's going to be 18, uh, purely because we've got a big influx of, once this, we've had a bit of a, it's, it's kind of an unbalanced shock with the US here. We've got a small shock, and then a, it comes back with a big one with more. So, when we pick up this big, <clears throat> this big load, um, and round 17, we'll be moving back this round, 16, 17, we're moving back with the big, the big chunk of like, it'd be 14 pretty much, 14 infantry up here. Then 18, we can hit, we can drop them off directly with the transports. These guys will be in range by then, because so they can go 17. Oh, they won't be actually. Oh, sorry, they will be. Yeah, 16, 17. Then they'll be 18. So the two bigger chunks of infantry we're chipping in, they're going to be in range of Berlin by round 18. So that's going to be the game plan. I think we're going to go for 18, because we've already got 50 infantry there, which is significant. I think we could probably go to uh, next round. Oh, so tomorrow then. <laughs> we, could, we could almost go, I think, probably next round if we wanted to, if we really wanted to. Um, but I think there's no point. We're, we're, in a, we're in a lead, so there's no point, you know, rushing it or taking a, a, t a taking a risk if we don't need to. So we'll wait for the bigger the bigger transport shipment, and we'll go for round 18. So that round 18 is going to be the key round. That's going to be the, the one we go for it. So with that in mind, I think we need to make sure we have our tanks in range of Corellia. Torsi blitz down for round. Uh, round 18. So this round, I was thinking about obviously moving them to Kazakh to get them more range, or sorry, Russia at least. Uh, which I think actually no, that still works. That still works. So we'll blitz them back. So this, these three tanks can come to West Russia for now. The majority of the tanks can sit in Russia. Um, we'll move the infantry to Kazakh, and then for next round, we'll obviously have all the tanks, which is there's only what 10. Well, that's actually quite a lot, <laughs> but we'll have 10 tanks moving back to Karelia, and then they can obviously uh, <clears throat> blitz through Baltic states into Berlin for the final the final assault. So, there we go, that's the that's the game plan. Uh, with this round, we've gone for four infantry, one artillery, uh, three tanks. Obviously, the UK are going to be the first ones through the breach, so they're going to have to take all the hits, so I'm hoping we can... Yeah, I think probably we, we've got a decent air force, a very decent air force, although we are risking them now uh, in the attack, but I think that's going to be worth it to minimise the defenders that are going to be there. So we're going to have at least 10 fighters, so I think the important thing now, rather than buying more planes, is to buy more land. So we're going to have the maximum number of land units soaking up hits from these 
quite big, you know, there's a, there's a big stack of heavier hitters behind this infantry. There's not a lot of infantry, but there is obviously some big numbers behind, so firefighters and 17 tanks are going to be dealing some pretty heavy damage behind the uh, infantry lineup, so more numbers is going to be a good thing. Soak up all the hits, try and kill as many as we can. Um, I don't think we can kill, I don't think we can capture Berlin with the UK, that would be very surprising. I've not calculated it, but I think it would be very un unlikely. <clears throat> So we're just going to try and kill, hopefully, as many, maybe all the infantry with the UK. And then the US is going to be free to absolutely just wipe the floor with, you know, they've got a, already got a shit ton of infantry. So, yeah, they're going to be fine to finish that off. So, cool. I think what we'll try and do is we'll try and pull out saving the fighters or saving any aircraft we've got for the UK because that's going to be a waste. Because the US won't need that much help. They won't need, like, an all-in from the UK. They'll just need some, you know, a bit of a softener before they go in themselves. So we'll try and save the aircraft, I think, if we can. Then we can obviously pull any fighters we save, which is going to be a good thing. We can just pull them immediately back and uh, defend Berlin, uh, defend Moscow, sorry, from the, the mounting Japanese pressure. So, there we go, that's the plan. Uh, four infantry, one, two, three, three tanks, let's do it. Let's snag Bulgaria. Um, I may as well try and hit. I'll go light to northwest. We'll just, let's just hit it with one infantry, nothing more. I don't want to go too heavy. We'll do, so it's going to have to be a uh, cruiser bombardment there with one plane. A bit light, but that's fine. <clears throat> if you get lucky, that's one, more, one less infantry defend, defending Berlin. Uh, so we'll go for bombing runs, try and bomb the crap out of it. Nothing to attack apart from what we've done already, I think. France again is, in, is a no-go. It throws us off our, our strong, stronghold in the Baltic Sea. And we'll stack that up soon, soon enough anyway. <clears throat> Just thinking about victory cities here. The four away. There's one, two, three here. So the the last one is going to have to probably be India, I think. India or Shanghai. Because obviously once Berlin falls, the entire fleet's going to come straight to the Pacific. So we... There is a big fleet. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll talk about that down the line. It's not the time for that. Not the time for that. Okay. Let's go with this. This is my last video. I was going to try and make these shorter. Just for coverage sake. to have to edit all my crap out of the video. <laughs> so, <laughs> sake, I'll try and be snappy. That was a good bombing run. We lost one, but still we took the complex down to one. Health, that's really good. So I'll probably... Um... Do I want to hit Italy with... I think I will. I think I will. Okay, nothing. That was fine. Pulls through. No, shame. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. It's one... Infantry defending on a two for one. Which is going to be attacking on a one. That's fine. I'll take that trade. Back into the sea you go. Back into the Baltic states. Can I see my tanks? There you go. So, the bigger movement here. We're going to move everything across. Um... One, two, three. <clears throat> Let's go for... Does it really matter? Moscow's comfortable. We can fly back if we need to. That's fine. Let's do that. Let's do Moscow. Oh, no, no, no. Alright. You guys into Moscow itself. The infantry can sit here. That's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. My guys, I don't need two infantry there, so I'm gonna move you across as well. Sweet. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> I'm gonna actually just send one more to the Baltic Sea. I'm just, I'm still a little bit on edge about this this sea zone. It's not, it's, I've not felt comfortable here for a while. <laughs> the amount of planes he's got and I think the yeah I suppose it, in a sense now no, I'm going to cancel that actually that doesn't make sense hitting this now it doesn't make any sense because the units are already bordering Berlin so taking away five of your defenders for admittedly some planes but still taking away five of your best defenders to kill a fleet that doesn't really mean that much it would slow the UK down but the US has still got an operational fleet in 
season three that they can just bring back in and it doesn't really make much difference. So I think the fleet <coughs> the fleet attack's gone for now. I don't see him going for it actually thinking about it. So I'll leave uh, we'll leave the nine fires up here. Um right, I think we're all good to go. So tanks are here here. Infantry are moving to a better spot, which I should have seen earlier. They're much more useful in Kazakh because they can range more things. So they can help the dead zone. And that all looks good. Tanks, artillery, infantry. Cool. So that's my round 16. So 456, 327. Nice. So we've got, just got up to 40 infantry, or well, 40 land units now. Sitting in uh, Baltic States, which is good. So we're, we're almost on a level. Actually, you know, with the tanks combined, we are actually ahead of Germany with uh, with our land units now, which is pretty cool. And that's without counting the UK, the US or the US troops. So, no, yeah, round 18 is going to be the one. So I'm trying to storm ahead for round 18. Back to Cobra. Okay, here we are for. Uh, US 16, and this is the first time actually I've caught uh, Cobra at the end of his go. We, we, we both live in different time zones. It's uh, US versus UK, so it's uh, we're never really on at the same times, but it's quite nice actually caught him moving here, so I can quickly grab on, uh, go on for my move. Uh, he's still actually online, so that's cool. So let's just do a move quickly to let him um, to let him move as well. So we're going to be moving out six here, but there's six left. So we've got a surplus of two infantry here. We can do four for these guys on their return journey. We can do two more for these. I'm just thinking it's if it's round 18 we're attacking, these guys aren't gonna make it, so it may just be better to do. So we do to so round 17, so we can get two tanks in Norway, which can make it to the fight. These guys are actually I should have foreseen that, that's sloppy, but don't mind. Um, and we'll also do some planes here. So let's do this. And I think we should then be good to, to roll. Uh, combat wise, let's grab. I think I should probably take Madagascar while it's available to me, because obviously the fleet's uh, away on business <laughs> in the middle of the Pacific right now, so I'm going to snag Madagascar while I can. And we'll, we'll take South Africa next turn, I think it's probably the, the better way to do it. Um, yeah. Also, so the the key move here as well. He, he, as I thought he may do, he double stacked uh, Xinjiang and Persia. But actually, looking at it, I don't really like. If I was to go for it, I'd go for this one. But again, we're, he's timed it just well. That um, these guys are just out of range. Those eight artillery would be fantastic. As it is now, I don't think we can really attack this. I'm not, I'm not going to. The one two punch was still a bluff as well for Persia for the longest time. I didn't really want to attack. It's going for a one-two punch with lots of infantry is very risky. It can it can so easily swing against you, and from there it could be disastrous for Russia. So I'm not going to hit any of these. I don't think this one's actually. Well, this one's tempting actually. There's four fires here. Huh. That's tempting. I'll think about that in a second because that might be a target. He's actually gone offline, unfortunately. So <laughs> there won't be any. Uh... Oh no, he's back on. He's back on. There may be a UK move straight after this. We'll see. I might actually watch it as well. German turn. Let's bomb. Let's bomb Italy. Is it worth it now? I feel like we have the numbers on. Maybe just preserve the numbers of the bombers now for, for the rest of the game. I think that's probably a better move to do. Let's, be, let's play it safe. Here, nothing we can redo. Really yeah, let's go with that. He is pressuring, obviously, Western US here, but it's minimal actual land pressure so we can defend against that quite easily. There's no planes of the fleet which is also good. So it's not really too much of a threat to me. I'll drop like six maybe. Yeah. Like four or five infantry should be enough to, to prevent anything happening there, which is good. Let's do this. Um, we don't need the plane now. Could drop it in no, that's not that's not. Uh, let's go. Hmm. Rush is fine. Rush is fine. So, six up north. Okay, good. So 
two bombers, two tanks, four infantry. That's probably the, maybe the last thing we build over here. Okay. Seven and one. Um, no point stat. I think we're, just, we're going to be in infantry uh, conservation mode here, so probably won't take such one. I don't think. This is this is really tempting. It's it's thirty nine land units with four planes as a backup. We've got fifty one. Plus two planes, it's tempting. There's no anti air gun. Oof. The planes make that tempting, but I don't think it's worth it still. Because we've only got six units attacking like two, so that, that looks like a decimation to me. We could probably still finish it off with the uh, the UK the round after, but still, that's a lot of dead troops. <laughs> I think I'd just rather preserve our numbers and just sit tight here, to be honest. These tanks, we can prevent them getting from. We can prevent them getting to Berlin by round 18, there's no no danger there. Um, obviously there's no danger, they're, they're out, range, out range anyway. Okay, let's just play it safe, let's skip the combat move here I think and just pull back completely. Play it safe I think, play it safe. So we've got a huge stack in there, a huge stack in Russia. It's going to be getting on for 100 troops, you know, solely with, you know, solely Russian troops let alone the UK troops. This is going to take a while for Japan to break down. In the meantime, obviously Germany will be dead, so it's, uh, yeah, it's over, I think. Lots of, Jesus Christ, I should have cleared all this out, I think, a while ago. <laughs> Got a million map notes to, to get rid of, let's clear them all now. We're archiving them, but still we can delete them later. Uh, yeah. These are old, some of these are really old. Jeez. Okay. Full retreat mode. Still, I think he's going to go for Kazakh. He can't stack. He cannot stack the corpses because there is there is enough there. And I will take that. I, I probably I think I probably would take that attack because there'd be so much left over. I think. Um, what he'll do now is he'll probably take this lightly and stack Kazakh, which should be fine. Um, yeah. It's going to have, what, 62, 75, um, yeah, 84 minimum, oh, 86, 89 troops there, so we're pretty much closing in, yeah, <laughs> big stacks arriving here, big stacks around 17, but again, we're on the defensive, so it's advantageous, which is good. I don't care about all the territories surrounding Russia, you can have them for all I care. Um, as long as Moscow stays alive, that's the key thing. It, it denies a, you know, a big IC for Japan closer to Berlin. Having this in allied hands is very, very nice, because obviously we can outproduce Japan very easily nearby. By having all of this under allied control, we can, and Moscow, we can just, yeah. There's just no way back, there's just no way back. They've got one deployment zone, at best, it's going to be Caucasus. Which will very quickly come under pressure in the end game, I think. Uh, so yeah, interesting. Though. We're closing in on the final stage of this game, I think. I'm not sure what Cobra's plans are. Um, should it was, I should say it's not guaranteed. This is obviously, but we've got good odds. Uh, round 18, I think. But still, should it fall, I'm not sure what uh, Cobra will do if he resign there or he'll play on. I'm not sure, but either way, I don't mind. I mean, it's he's got a big load of Rus uh, Japanese troops. He might want to. At least have a fun battle with in Moscow. You know, have a good scrap in Moscow, <laughs> I guess, to finish it off. But we'll see. Anyway, back to uh, back to Cobra. Okay, jumping on for round 17, UK. So this is the the preparation round, uh, penultimate round, just before the the big assault on Berlin. So yeah, just got to get everything into position, pretty much, and uh, full <laughs> full retreat with the uh, UK forces in Kazakh. So, purchase of this round will be four infantry, uh, three tanks, one artillery. Uh, I'm not going to be able to take a Northwestern. I think at this point it just it's more important just to have pure numbers up front. So I'm not going to be able to take any of this because it's, it's not necessary. If we take Berlin, then we'll get this anyway. So there's no point trying to grab this at this point. We'll just uh, we'll just stack Berlin, uh, Baltic State, sorry. So I think... Why is this here? I'm curious. Oops. Huh. 
Sorry, one infantry, two bombers, two fighters went to attack Poland. Right. Why did they end up here? <laughs> this is why I'm asking. <laughs> That's very confusing. Why are they here? Is it just, oh, is it just for this transport, I think, maybe? I'm assuming that's what it is. Yeah, I'm not quite sure they're there. Interesting. And maybe just because the Japanese don't have any bombers, which I think is... Yeah, that's true, actually. They don't have any bombers. So it may just be there to help out here, you know, defend against the old transport movement. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's anything that can reach... Uh, ah, that's annoying, actually. He's got... Ooh, that's actually really annoying. He's got six fighters that could potentially reach Berlin um, before the US attacks. The UK can attack without them there, which is good. They're not in range... Uh, they won't be in range by UK 18, but they will be in Berlin probably by uh, US 18, which is unfortunate. So they're going to have a few reinforcements from uh, Japan. But I'm hoping by that point it won't matter too much. I think even even the presence of six extra fighters shouldn't make that much of a dif difference, I'm hoping. Uh, that's just a, a guess though, but I think I'm fairly confident. I mean we've got a good we've got good numbers, very good numbers. I think by the time we get everything together we're gonna have pretty much pretty much equal land units for the UK and um, Germany. And then obviously we've got beyond that we've got like eighty, so yeah, we're, we're more than fine. Berlin's gonna fall. I think if it doesn't it'll be pretty much miraculous dice to be honest <laughs> so um, it's probably actually even a good thing that these guys are in range because it means we can probably if he goes for the defense um, prior to the US attack then we'll be able to snag six extra fighters I don't think he'll do that I think he'll probably just try and keep them alive just for Moscow that's what I'm guessing um, but I think either way it's, it works for me so it's not, it's not a problem anyway sorry too much waffle let's get on let's crack on so very little to do this round um, Nothing realistically we can hit. I think we may as well want to, we may as well hit this, I suppose. It's one less defender for Berlin. Um, and it's one less guy that's gonna just push out here maybe. And plus we've got like a crap ton of planes that are not doing anything right now, so <laughs> we may as well use them for an attack. So we'll, we'll just send, send the entire load uh, towards uh, Poland. Why not? <clears throat> Sorry, my voice just fell. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's go with that, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can still range this. I was thinking it might be nice to put the move the planes around a bit or move some of the fleet around, but we can't because these guys are still in range, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I'm assuming we're going to kill this guy. I'm going to be <laughs> lucky not to. I have a headache where I've like, had eight planes missed before. I think that's probably the most I've seen missed in one round, but... Yeah, that's a very rare occurrence. Okay, cool, that's actually a bone if you took it. I didn't, didn't really need to, but... Oh, that's ca careful, careful, careful. Can I cancel this? Yeah, there you go. Alright, let's put two back in the fleet and we'll just... Oh, we can't. I'm hoping that's not going to trip us up later, actually. that's That may have been a misplay from me. Although, no, it wasn't. We had one from the fleet before, didn't we? That's fine, that's fine. Stop worrying, you're fine. So, big pylon into the Baltic States, looking good. So, we've got nine tanks in range, which is cool. So yeah, pretty substantial attacking force we've got here with, with the UK. Like I said, I think I'll try and pull out before I, they, he starts. I'm assuming we're gonna lose the fight. I'm not, I've not done calculations. I don't know what he can potentially bring versus what I can bring. I've not calculated it. But I'm assuming we're gonna lose the fight. So I'm gonna try and pull out before we start denting our plane numbers. Then we'll just let the US finish off with a huge stack of infantry, so that'll be the best way to do it. And then obviously whatever's left over, aircraft-wise, can fly straight to Moscow and try and hold that while we get the infantry numbers up. So that is the game plan. Let's see how we do. Quite looking forward to this. It's always nice to have a, you know, a fun battle to finish uh, after a long build. It's been quite a long game, 17 rounds. Um, but yeah, I think we are. Getting towards the conclusion now. So how are we looking number-wise? That we're looking so 33. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, we're there. We're there. Just wondering how much you can build next round. 25 IPC, so not a huge amount. And some repairs. That's fantastic, actually. So, um, he'll probably just move these three in and then just repair what he can. So, actually, what can you buy? 25. Eight repairs. Oh, it's, only, it's only eight, so we can deploy two there already. Okay. Yeah, we'll put a few down. But yeah, I don't think it'll matter too much. Anyway, there we go, that's my UK. The last UK move before the big, the big assault. <laughs> so, I'll see you back for uh, US 17. Okay, we're back for UK 18, and Berlin has been abandoned by the Germans. Um, I'm still not sure what I think about this move. I mean, it definitely keeps... Definitely keeps Cobra in the game for longer because there is obviously more units for me to deal with. I think my plan is I'm going, to, I'm going to try and cut these units off if possible. I think what I'm going to try and do this round is go for an attack on these tanks with my nine. Actually, there's more. Oh shit, that's fine. Yeah, I was I was calculating nine for some reason plus my ten fighters and two bombers, but actually we've got twelve. Twelve tanks plus a lot of aircraft, which the majority of can land into Moscow, which is fantastic. So I don't think we need to. T we don't. We don't need to go into um, Germany heavy here. There's no reason to do that. What I'm going to do is move, attack the tanks, move everything that can be moved from the UK into Poland to cut these guys off. So we could then obviously, if they move away, um, they can get killed hopefully by my my troops um, next round. The majority of the planes can land back into Moscow, so that should be that covered for at least this round. Maybe even the next one as well. Um, and again, the majority of the, UK, the U.S. fighters can move into uh, Moscow as well. We're going to try and we're going to try and hold Moscow, at, you know, all costs really, because we have Germany now, and these guys are, are not long for the world. So, yeah, I think we've got a, a good position now. I understand his thinking here, trying to get away, and just trying to help out, you know, J Japan take Moscow. Um, I understand that. Uh, I'm just not sure what's better. Just holding this, making me take it with everything I can, or... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It may have been just been better to keep the tanks with the infantry here, instead of going uh, separate. Because this presents a target to, to me now, which I'm going to go for, definitely. Um, so, let's see how we go. So, we'll do... We want numbers, I think, initially, with the UK. I will transition to bombers probably later on. A nice combination when you're in a, a UK, US versus Japan situation is go pure land with the US to get numbers and then with the UK you just build bombers purely because uh, it just it's a nice way of <laughs> weakening Japan without having to actually compromise on your US stack. Um, so that may not be the case anyway because we obviously uh, Moscow is still alive, which is huge. So I think we're just going to cover infantry numbers for, for now. Mixed in with as many tanks as we can get. Cool, that's good. So we're not going to take Berlin. We'll leave that for the Americans. I'm not sure whether he'll retake this. Um, again, if he does retake it, it gives me another bonus. Because obviously when we take Berlin, we get all the income that they would have for that round. So it's a nice bonus. If he was to retake that, and then we retook it again, we'd get the same bonus again. So actually it doesn't make sense for him to retake Berlin. Um, it gives me some... I'll actually welcome that if it happens, because it will give me some extra income to use, which is good. Um, so... I guess we go for it. Got one infantry as well to, <laughs> to, to use in the fight. Um, this fight it can probably reach... Yeah, it can. One, two, three, four. We're going to be in Poland this round anyway, so that makes sense. Um, can we just quickly grab this? Why not? Again, I want to leave all this income for the US. The UK's got enough for these three. That's fine. And they've still got uh, Africa intact, so... Ooh, I like this. Let's try that as well, just to be annoying. <laughs> Because he wants to go for Hawaii with everything to stack it, so um, giving him a reason to split some units off here to deal with this is going to be a good thing. Plus, there's no planes here, so you can only use one bombardment for this as well, which is quite nice. So that's good. 
Okay. Think that looks good. This would be a juicy take. I'm willing to sacrifice everything but my planes here, I think. If we get down to the situation where it's going to be planes taking hits, I'm going to back out. I don't want to lose my planes. Okay. I think that looks good. Let's do it. Again, I'm always reassured when the in-game calculates that it's strong, strong attack. Okay, not the best. That's actually really not great. Yeah, <laughs> really not great. Jesus. No. That was a terrible attack. Five hits and all of that was terrible. And they got huge hits as well. Hang on, did they hit everything? No, they didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Um, crap, what do we do here? This can be... I'm going to go for one more round, I think. One more round. Okay, that's much better, much better. There we go. And that takes the bombs as casualties here. Okay, cool. So one, two, and the furthest one away. That makes perfect sense. Okay, so we've got one, one tank left. We'll, we'll pull out from here. Okay, not too, second round was good. First round was terrible. That's a totally acceptable trade for me. Because um, we've taken away all the potency from the, the Germans now. Australia. Very nice, and clean take. So, nine fighters back into Moscow. Let's move the troops forward. And let's probably just deploy directly into Corellia here because we can blitz the tanks into Moscow pretty freely, which is nice. Um, yeah, those, those nine fighters are very much welcome in Moscow this round. Gives us some very nice defensive power. Yeah, I like that a lot. And we can start thinking about, there's no bombers on the board apart from these guys. So we can probably start thinking about moving the entire US fleet down south. Or even through the um, Panama Canal. Coming through to try and help out the, the Pacific fleet. So we're not going to need them here anymore. Because there's going to be no fighters nearby very shortly apart from just the odd, the odd bomber. Which the UK fleet can more than more than deal with, so I think it's time to uh, to relocate now. Um, yeah, that looks good to me. Let's go for it. Cool. So four eight one three two four. Again, I don't mind the move to pull out of Berlin, I understand it. I think just the one mistake there, I think, was just to move the tanks separately. Because um, we did have a good... We got. I think we got bad rolls, to be fair. Particularly in that first round. But um, this was always going to be a target, given how much we had bordering it. We had plenty of tanks and planes to, to trade, well, supposedly, effectively there. It was, it was a good trade in the end, but it could have been much better than that. So, I think he got off light here, to be fair. Yeah, moving them together would have probably been a better idea. I guess the, the thinking is, if he stayed here, he knows that I'm obviously going to be... Yeah, he knows I'm going to be in here probably with both stacks, so... And I can block this off of the tank so he couldn't escape, so... Yeah, I guess... It's a hard move to, to make, it's, it's difficult to know what to do. I think they were, they were trapped either way, to be fair. It was going to be difficult to move them out. But, anyway... I think we're drawing to a close here fairly soon. I think once Berlin falls and we very clearly trap these troops, I think it's going to be. Um, delete that now, actually. Delete that. Yeah, I think it's going to be fairly, fairly close to the end. Okay, US 18. It's Cobra. So, yeah, he messaged me on Discord after his Japanese move. Um, and I didn't even spot this as well, actually. I didn't realise that. He couldn't move the entire stack out of uh, Kazakh because he'd leave his um, German Air Force vulnerable to the, the British. So that was quite nice to sort of manage to pin him there. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, just a happy accident, I suppose, for us. So it keeps them out of 
producing from this for a round, which I'm going to probably turn to. I'll, I'll do one infantry and two fighters, I think, just to try and clear this out. And if we fail, we'll just go the British as well. So there's some pressure over this side in the Pacific. He's taken, as we thought, he dropped off some units to Hawaii. Um, there's not much pressure on Western here at all, really. But I'm thinking about Alaska, so I'm, I'm just future proofing. So I'm going to send probably, I'm going to buy some more infantry for here and just get a stack moving towards, you know, Alaska to try and retake. We've got a fighter nearby. I'll pull the fleet back, put a fighter in Western, and uh, just try and dead zone uh, <clears throat> as best we can dead zone Alaska, which I'm not sure we can do actually with what we've got. We've only got 11 units, he's going to bring four. He's got, he's got 11 of his own in there, obviously. Defending on twos, so actually I can't dead zone this, but we can hold Western at least, and then reinforce. Sorry, we can hold Western Canada, but we can also reinforce Western US as well. Pull the fleet back, we're just trying to defend the um, the gap, basically. Uh, if we try to come around, we've not got any logistics right now, because the, the, <clears throat> the work is done here already. We've got the, uh, we've got Berlin, so. Yeah, I guess we just probably bring most of the fleet back, I guess, straight away here. And we'll just try and push back into the Pacific. We're trying to close this one out, so we've got to get a lot of VCs actually. I'm going to get five. Wow. So we're not quite finished yet. We've got some. We've got some work to do. Um, I think Cobra will keep playing until he, well, at least he has an attempt on Moscow. I'm going to try and avoid giving him anything above fifty percent. I've not worked out the odds yet. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to assume it's holdable. I'm going to pull everything I can. Two tanks. Uh, fighters, bombers, the works to try and hold this. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way. Anyway, so we'll go for that. Ten infantry, two tanks. Not much else we can buy. So we'll just lightly take. We're going to be delayed here slightly. I think what we could do, actually, in fact, is do something like this. If we grab, grab some infantry, take all the, t the key territories. I'm going to move the majority of the stack obviously into Poland to try and wipe out this uh, this German stack. Let's hit Transjordan as well because why not? It's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice, that's perfect. Um, you guys can move forward. Yeah, and everything else will move <coughs> move back towards Russia. So the Germans will move here this round. We've got it's such a nice spot for the UK Air Force. <laughs> They've got nine planes here that are two moves away from Ukraine, so this this stack has got nowhere to go. They could re they could restack Berlin, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. There's also an argument for killing some German fighters here, but I don't because they're not they're not alive as, as I said, you know, they're not actually in the game anymore. I don't think killing them is as valuable as killing Japanese fighters. So I'm going to save my fighters for that. I think. Um. Does that look good? I think so. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a slow grind. We're obviously massively ahead right now, but it's going to be a slow grind to, to play this one out. I'm just hoping we can actually manage to hold off uh, Moscow for the rest of the game. That would be quite nice. Well, that's bonus. But we'll see. In fact, why don't we just go... Uh, is that worth it? What I'm thinking is if he takes it back, which he may do, it gives us another round of that bonus income. On the flip side, it means we don't get to deploy in Berlin uh, next round. Unless the UK retakes. We'll see, it might work in our favour. I'm going to go light here for now and then just send the main stack forward. Um, that seems to be the better way, I think. There's also, I've just realised, there's also a danger here of the Japanese slipping through focus isn't coming actually to, to I think actually we need to go here. I think we need to hold this actually. No, it's fine, it's fine. If the Germans retake with everything, or even lightly, the UK can recapture, that's not a problem. Even with transports they can recheck they can recapture. And then <clears throat> the US can still deploy there. Later on in the rounds, so that's fine. We won't lose anything. And we've just got a forward stack as opposed to one sitting here. It's a bit more. Um, if 
efficient. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> I just realised that. If oh no, it's fine. It's fine. I think we lose our ability to use fighters with the UK, but actually our numbers here are we've got what 44 infantry, pretty much. We're land units versus not that. And we're going to have extras coming in as well if they stack Berlin, I'm thinking. That's, that's totally fine. Right, let's get everything moving. Um, so the majority of this can come back down. Let's fly everything we can in here. These guys... Yeah, they're fine there. Main stack goes to Poland. Everything else comes down. The big exodus from the Atlantic Sea now, pulling everything back. So we're we'll very full pressure for the Pacific, which again will uh, tie up some of Jap the Japanese income because they'll be wanting to uh, obviously withstand that <clears throat> and try and uh, hold the Pacific off. They've still got a good fleet to fall back on here, but ours is definitely bigger. Um, I think the site's going to probably be Hawaii, I think. Get these VC numbers back back up. Okay, so... Yeah, that's good. That's good. I uh, don't think there's a danger here of this being attacked. It's only four versus two. Not worth it for them, I don't think. Oh no, maybe it is. Maybe it is worth it. I'm not sure. We shall see soon enough. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, two tanks will go here. Majority of the infantry will go. Got two more here for this transport. We've got 12 here total now. That's good. Cool. So what we're looking at with the UK, that's with the US, we're looking at 88 for next round to spend, which is <clears throat> very nice. Um, no, just pure numbers. Just pure numbers. So let's try this. Nice, that's good, that's good. Seems to be having to move out on a UK infantry to actually capture it. It's really good. So we're up to what are we up to? Yeah, significant actually yeah, the the U the Russians just have just got a hundred land units now in Moscow. That's pretty nice. <laughs> so 120, 124. 124 plus some I'd say some, that's a hell of a lot of fighters. 18 fighters. Um, yeah, the Japanese aren't here yet. They're not here yet. Moscow looks, to me, rock solid right now. And it's going to have, what, 10 more units coming in? 13 more units coming in next round before the evening. Russians have had a chance to deploy, so. Yeah, I think we're, we're looking healthy. Cool. Back over to Fabric okay, We're back for UK 19. So the Germans have split their stack, they've gone to Ukraine and Southern Europe. So we're going to have to probably calculate um, what we need. The US is going to have to kill this because the, the UK is going to kill Ukraine. Uh, so I'm going to have to calculate what I need to kill this efficiently. Assume there's no reinforcements, which there, there won't be. There's no reason to reinforce this, it's going to be dead anyway. So. Yeah, we'll do that in a second, but for now I think I'm probably just going to, what I'm thinking is this stack here, um, I don't want to send any more ground troops to it, because I'm worried the Japanese are going to come through here and cause some problems for us. I'll just try and push back to um, to Berlin. They can't do that, because there's just too much here, um, but it's going to be more awkward, so I'm thinking what I could do 
is just build like a crap ton of fighters. <laughs> just like each round, three three per round, and just fly into here. So we get like an absolute massive, massive uh, <clears throat> British fighters. Sounds like fun. So we're gonna do that. Not sure, that's the best move. But we're gonna do it. So I'm not gonna take Bulgaria with the Americans. We're gonna leave that for the. Uh, sorry, I'm not gonna do that with the UK. We'll leave it for the Americans because I want them. Americans have the, the biggest economy possible at this point. Um, yeah, currently 60, which is really nice, so we're going to get a few more bits here and there. So, 65, 67, which would be pretty tasty as the UK. US, sorry. We do need to think about with the US, we need to think about uh, Africa as well. It's their job to reinforce that, so we'll have to do that soon, as in this round. So, I think probably these four units will come down to Morocco, maybe. Drop them here, send them across, bring these guys up to Sudan, and just think about blocking this off with one, two, three, four. The bombers can range Egypt, which is nice, so we can get some people in range of this. We can start, start trading off, hopefully, so okay, that's going to be a priority. And here as well, this is good. Anyway, combat moves. Um, I've not worked out the odds for Russia, but it, to me it looks completely, yeah, it's completely safe, completely safe. I just, there's a, what have we got, 16, 18 fighters, and that's behind a wall of, you know, way over 100 infantry, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're totally cool in, in uh, Moscow. So I think we're probably tr trading here where we can is going to be Britain's job, because we want to keep, obviously, one big stack, and that's going to be Russia. So we can keep their numbers growing and trade off with the Americans, in, at least in Russia, uh, trade off with the UK and the Americans. They, they've got the bigger air force as well, so it makes sense for them to trade. They can trade more efficiently and let the, just let the Russians grow in numbers. On this side, we're going to obviously try and trade it as well with the UK and have the Americans just continue to grow. We'll probably try and drop 10 in future, 10 in per, per, per turn in Berlin should be a good thing, I think. We'll do that. So for now, there's no danger of the Russian, uh, Japanese, sorry, blitzing through here, so we can just take this as we want. I'm not going to risk any planes because there's, there's two anti-air guns here, so that's just not not worth it. And in fact, because we're just going to be doing this, let's just pull the tanks down here. And we'll pull the rest of these troops down to Belarus, I think, in preparation. Actually, that's a bad move. The rest will go to West Russia to try and help dead zone it, maybe. We'll have something here, something here. Yeah, it's better. We'll do that. Uh, combat moves for UK. I think that's probably it, to be honest. Can't go north of the southern island. That would be nice to threaten these forces, but we can't do that. So just got to retreat with the, uh, the US fleet, I think, here. <coughs> and that should be it, I think. Yep. So obviously we want, ideally, as, as many alive as possible here. So this is going to be part of the stack that holds off the Japanese forces, so... Okay, pretty good. It's not bad with this, sorry. So they will be dead this round. Two... Oof, bad hit back there, but that's fine. It happens. It's a bit more profit, move what we can here, and... Grab this as well. That's the last load of land units for the time being, anyway. So, um, bombers is a question. Have they got any bombers at all? No, they don't. So, we'll move the main fleet. Where could they realistically range here? One, two, three. To actually get into C zone five, they're going to have to be positioned in Avenki, which is not possible. That's that's the closest the bomber can be to actually be able to hit this safely. There's no landing spots anywhere, although there won't be soon. <clears throat> so it seems actually very secure to move these guys out. I'm just thinking, I want to get some pressure on the uh, Pacific now as well. I'll try and grab these remaining VCs, so any extra help can be good. So we'll, we'll pull the UK fleet out as well. Um, yeah, that's good. So we've got a fair number trained on the corpses here. I think that's a pretty clear one-two punch. It's a shame we haven't got like, you know, 10 out of 20 US troops in there as well, but that's that's fine. So if he goes for it, 
he'll if he's going to try and defend it effectively, he's going to have to take it with Japan, which is great because it denies six fighters. Um, he'll fly in what he can from the Germans, but it's going to be what 95, yeah, 100, 100 or so units. So we'll get to go first with the Russians, which would be fine. Then we get to finish off with the UK. Yeah. So I don't think he can take this. I've not done the odds. But I don't think he can take this. The Russians admittedly would get absolutely crucified going first <laughs> in this fight. They've not got many attackers. They've got two fighters in the 16 artillery, which is not bad, but again, not enough. That they'd get absolutely they would get destroyed. <laughs> You'd have to hope that the heavy hitting UK, because we've got a lot of you know a lot of firepower here would be able to finish the job, so I'll calculate that if it happens, but for now we'll leave it as it is um, and just hope they don't stack this because I want to try and keep them at bay. I mean, even, if they, even if they do, it should be fine because we can just move the Americans into this, to Ukraine, and uh, yeah, it should be fine. Anyway, that's my UK move. Um, I think everything's in. Where's Mr. Sub? Okay. Yeah. So round 19, uh, 498, 311, which is looking very good. So yeah, it's just me, a question for me now to get some VCs, that's it. So we've got one here, which is eight. And it's going to be a combination probably of, I would imagine, India and Hawaii, probably, for 9 and 10, or Hawaiian uh, Philippines. 9 and 10, but we'll see. We'll pull the entire fleet back now, so we are going to start getting spending on fleet, which is what we want to do, and then we can try and push back with the uh, mainland forces, but we'll see. Anyway, back to uh, back to Cobra. Okay, back for US 19. So Japan's done a, a mass assault in Alaska, um, but we were kind of half prepped for that with all the, the infantry knocking about, so I'm not too concerned about this move uh, at this point. Um, so we're just gonna, we've got to respect it though, we've got to build some artillery, try and flush them out. Um, but yeah, I don't think we should have too much of an issue really. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to stack Western Canada from, it won't be able to be taken, we can control Western United States too. So yeah, it should, should be fine. Um, I'm also going to double stack Ukraine and Russia here. I had to do a bit of calculation because there is a big, <laughs> a big Japanese stack and protecting both of these. Uh, I had to make sure I was okay, but yeah. Both of these are fine and we can uh, also pull back some artillery to deal with uh, the final uh, German stack as well in Southern Europe. So wherever, wherever they go, we'll be able to uh, finish them off. So yeah, we're all prepped. So 20 infantry and five artillery. So a big buy with all our um, capturing German, capturing Berlin money, sorry. Uh, and we just did some complex repair too. Which I think was my own repairs actually. <laughs> it was, that's something I do often actually. I, I forget to, if I'm going into a place, I sometimes just probably not, not bomb it a few rounds prior just, <laughs> just because I know the damage is going to have to be something I'm going to have to repair myself. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Um, we'll leave this for the Russians, I think. Uh, kind of need to blitz a tank then out, don't I? Yeah, we'll do that, I suppose. Makes a sense to take it with an infantry, it's one less defender. Uh, anything we can... Oh, I guess we could do this. Is that worth it, though? One, two... Okay. I guess we can kill them and take. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll take the bombers as casualties. I think. I should get two hits. Uh, let's grab this as well. Um, I think that's probably everything for the Americans. Can't see anything else. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There's a bit of a, a, a force coming through uh, Transjordan as well, so we're going to have to drop some guys off into Egypt, uh, Morocco, sorry, and try and cut this off as best we can. Uh, we've got a few guys down here, but these guys aren't going to be enough, so actually maybe two down here and four here, possibly. We'll see. Yeah, we've got to do this quickly before it starts to spiral. Um, right. I think we're all good. Let's go for it. I don't think taking out German fighters really makes sense, to be honest, but we'll be able to kill them in one, one, one round pretty much guaranteed. It's just if we can take one hit back, it'd be nice. One or, one or no hits back. Two. Yeah. As we expected, that's fine. Uh, we'll take two bombers. 
We need the planes on the defensive just for that. The uh, stack odds. Um, okay, everything. Actually, you know what? I didn't even calculate. <laughs> I didn't even calculate these guys coming in, so we're going to have more than we need, to be fair, everywhere. So that's not, not too bad. So, artillery go back here. The main forces go here with pretty much everything. Um, let's drop. It doesn't make sense to go to Sudan because he can kill me in one shot. So let's just wait on that for a second. Let's drop you guys here. Um, let's grab everything. Drop you off into Morocco. The fleet's in full retreat mode. Well, not so much retreat as just repositioning to the Pacific. So we need 14, I calculated. 14 is comfortable in uh, Western United States. So we're building 10 there, which I think we are, yeah. Probably a good thing actually. I did, well, I should I should have checked the complex if it was not damaged because there was potential to do. One, two. Yeah. Okay, so uh, nine come here. We're gonna reinforce these guys. Um, looks good. You blitzed in and out. You guys. From here. Yeah, these guys are fine where they are for now. There's no, there's only one plane on the fleet, so it's not, not a problem. Could even get slightly more bold. <laughs> Pushing a little bit. So 19 units there, no problem. I'll just put this guy back here. So building artillery in Western United States because we need to obviously send them up at some point to flush this out. I'm not sure if he'll stay here because it's going to be difficult to stay there, but he may. So I'm going to just try and push it out quickly if I can. All right, that looks good. These guys can just. I should. Sure, I'm not sure what to do with these transports. I guess coming this way is make it makes sense because we've got a big load that we can eventually move around and probably try and take a wire at some point. So we'll pull them this way. Got a few transports around here we can still ship in from uh, Eastern United States. Alright, that's good. Look at that. So, artillery, rest infantry, so 14 there. That's above 95% to hold. 10 here, that's enough to kill everything else. Uh, 2. Should have left something here, that's a mistake. Good. Okay, so, have a look at them. End of round 19. 535, 322, and uh, yeah, very healthy US economy. So, Russia. I think to be honest, we just build purely artillery from here on out just to match these numbers to make the, the Russian stack a little bit more formidable, I think, would be a, a good idea. Nothing else to do. Cool. So, Back to Germany. Okay, UK 20. Sorry, I actually started recording a bit late. I noticed the, <laughs> the recording wasn't on, so we're jumping in slightly late, but not a lot's happened. We bought uh, four infantry, three tanks, three uh, one artillery. Uh, just mentioning the Germans have stacked Italy, so we're going to try and kill those with the Americans. And they've also supported um, the Caucasus stack, which is good for me actually because we've dead zoned the Caucasus. Um, so the. I think, yeah, I think we, I think we have. Yeah, we have. So even if he moves the six planes in and the, the six tanks plus deploys, I'm assuming four tanks, then we'd be able to do a, a three-way attack. Starting with the Americans, who will probably die. The Russians, who will kill a lot of them, but again, probably won't succeed. And then they'll be left for the UK to finish up with. Uh, they've got a good start at the UK. Got a fair amount of tanks, good amount of artillery, and a big air force, so they should be able to mop up whatever's left. And that should be uh, the last of the... Um, Japanese pressure. From there, we can, you know, try and aggressively move forward if we can. But because the good thing about this is that this is drawing resources away from the fight in uh, in around Russia. So obviously, once we break through this, this this big stack, then we should have minimal resistance going through the rest of it. And uh, again, we're going for VCs at this point, so I want to try and grab Hawaii and it's um, India if we can, because that'll put us up to. Puts up to nine plus Italy falling as well will give us the ten we need. So we're almost there. As long as we keep defending West and not <laughs> make a bad mistake by you know understacking this somehow, but we'll uh, try and keep a close eye on that. 
Anyway, there was no combat moves for the UK this round. Um, just, just repositioning, so let's get everything forward. I was thinking this is obviously a weak stack, but it's an awkward one to attack because it's too big to lightly take. One, two, three. Like, strafing's hard. It's just a bit awkward to deal with, so I'm going to have to just move that in straight away. Okay, right, let's go here. Might as well just pull this guy back because he's not going to be any, any use blocking anything here. And I've not done the odds, I'm, I'm sure this is happening. Yeah, we should be fine. Can we move them any closer? No, can't. It's unfortunate. Guess we could put them. Guess we could put them here in case the battle goes really badly in Italy. There's, there is a chance because we are attacking 18, uh, 18 twos with an anti-air gun, so there's potential for this to go badly. The odds should be heavily enough over because I'm going to probably use most of the planes I've got here. Um, Though actually, this is interesting. Actually, this is slightly more complicated. If I go for, I need my planes if I'm going to go for the stack, which means I can't go for this because we don't have enough. So actually, in fact, we have to pick. We have to pick a battle here. I can't go for both, unfortunately. Because it looks like to me, it, I think with everything, I'm assuming you're going to pull in everything you possibly can. So I need to work out the averages for each round of the three-way punch to work out what's the average amount of units they've got left after each hit and then work out for the final battle you know if we can actually finally win the fight um, based on averages I think pulling the planes out that's not going to give us that just eyeballing this because we've not the Russian stack is big but it's not incredibly strong as in the attacking power is not great when you've got 40 units hitting on a two where she's got 90 plus <laughs> with them. that's just the, just the twos so yeah we might have to think about that that's the job for the uh, the US move so we'll leave it for now uh, apart from that I think it looks good so we'll send it oh so we're gonna send this sub south here and try and come up this way to try and harass these transports um, and that should be it I get what the odds were for this. I think we have more than enough to defend there. That should be fine. Okay. 559, 3 2 3. Back to uh, Cobra. Okay, back for US round 20. Um, so I've been, been doing some calculations in the background here. I've done, basically I wanted to work out if I could realistically hit the corpses and do it, you know, reasonably safely, I suppose. Um, because while we do have obviously a lot of numbers, a lot of this is going to be attacking on a one, so it becomes quite, quite dangerous. <laughs> obviously there's, there's a lot of firepower here. They've got 100, exactly 100 infantry here um, with 10 tanks and 11 fighters. That's huge. So that's going to decimate infantry as they attack. Um, now, according to the calculations, on average, I've, I've, I've used the bottom 5% of battles for, if I was to attack with the US first, the bottom 5% result for that. So if I then attack with the Russians, bottom 5 result, could the British, after those two battles, still win the fight if they got off bottom 5 result? And it's yes, they can still win. So the odds of this, you know, um, not falling a pretty, uh, you know, some seriously low, low numbers. So it should be fine going for. Now the thing is, it's going to mean I'm going to have to sacrifice uh, taking Italy, which is okay. Um, they can't take this back because uh, I can just obviously. Uh, well, it's it's 18 units versus 17, but they're all pretty much on ones, and I've got two, so the odds on that are, are totally safe. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. And obviously before. There is 10 infantry here that can attack because everything will be emptied out of. Uh... Oh, they actually calculate these guys. Okay. We're, we're five units safer than I thought we were. <laughs> but yeah, we, 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 all of this will be empty apart from the anti air guns and the planes will just. Uh, all the Russian planes, the American planes will be dead. It will be the five or whatever's left of the 
UK Air Force will be landing back into Moscow to secure it from these 10th infantry. So that should be it. That should be that, that stack dead with a lot of UK troops ready to push down towards um, India, which obviously is our final destination. Now, the other side of this thing, he's, he's gone for a heavy push on Alaska. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to build tanks pretty much here for Western United States. Um, I'm going to move everything up. So we've got, what, 28, 33, yeah. 41 plus a plane against what's likely to be I guess 25 and 3 fighters if he wants to really try and hold it so that should be I'm not worked that out but that should be fine surely um, and I'm going to block off these two C's and then I've got 65 and 57 so he can't ship in directly because this is going to be weak for a round obviously we just it's going to have 8 eight tanks essentially um, just 8 tanks I'm going to deploy these 5 here actually that makes more sense um, so yeah we'll block this off so he can't actually take us um, and then we'll just be able to hopefully wipe this out. Um, so yeah, that's the game plan. I mean, it's, we're, we're ending it risky. We, do, we don't have to do it this way. There's no there's, there's no need to do it this way whatsoever. We could simply just um, work out the defensive on both of these, make sure we can hold both, finish off this stack in Italy, and just push forward with the rest of it. We don't need to do this. But I thought this is a bit more of a, a fun way to do it. <laughs> and it's been a pattern with, with me this season as well. I've had two games like this um, in placement where it was the UK and the US versus Japan in the end game and it's um, I've won both of those so I'm, I'm confident doing something like this it's, it's, it's at least doing a two way or a three way punch with the allies to finish off the Japanese main stack so I want to end it a similar way here and um, yeah try and finish off so what we do we'll, obviously we've got the US turn here got the Russian turn as well so I'll be looking at my calculator and figuring out where we are again if we get five, a 5% battle then we're still fine so anything above that is a bonus if we get an average battle, then we should be in great shape for the UK. So, the UK, if we get average battles in both of the American attacks and the Russian attacks, then the UK are going to have very little to do. To be honest, they're going to have a, a quite a sweet, a sweet battle to finish off. So, my only concern, I just hope I haven't miscalculated this because that would be a disaster. <laughs> Again, there's no need to do this. There's, there's no need to do this whatsoever. I am taking a risk here because um, we will lose a lot of the the attack power balance will be leveled. I think somewhat. Uh, particularly after these two have gone, because these two are the the, uh, the first through the through the wall. But when all is said and done, it should be just a, a finishing move, I suppose, for the, the Japanese in in Asia. So I guess let's go for it. Um, all right, you can't reach anyway, so I might as well move you here, grab some territory. Um, Can't reach with these guys, but that's fine. Right, we're going in. We're going in. I actually want to move, I think, one infantry down. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I was thinking about snagging Hawaii, but it doesn't actually matter because we're going to be conceding France here. As this stack is obviously still, I can't dislodge this stack just yet. Um, yeah, we have to flesh this out later, but that's fine. Got a bigger prize at the moment. So 90 units all, all said and done. Um, I suppose we could, I've got a number I'm looking for. We want to we wanna get to the bottom 5% is if the Japanese have 74 infantry left. So if we actually reach that without losing planes then I think I might pull the planes out just to preserve them because I'm going to need them it'd be useful to have them for the attack on the um, German stack in Italy so we'll see what we can do but here we go big one plausible damn right twelve okay twenty hits how bad's the damage 41. Okay. Okay, I think at this point we're on, what have we got? 60, 71. So this is above this is above where we wanted to be, and that's without losing any, any planes at all for the, the US, so I think it's time to pull out 
because we will lose everything this round, so I think, yeah, we've done enough here, I think. 60, 71, yeah, we're three above with the planes alive, so that's a retreat. Good. Uh, I think we can probably retreat to, I guess here makes, no, it's with the units, isn't it? Put them here. These planes can go. Actually, they can just come back here, can't they? <laughs> to be fair, makes a lot of sense. Um, right, so let's put you forward against here, though. So, block these tanks, move the rest in. And you can come forward. So, let's go blocker, blocker. Move the rest up. Yeah, we should be fine for the, the counter attack there. It's a shame that we've not on the same time difference because I would I would love to play this game out just just from here to the end now because I want to see what <laughs> I really want to get to the <laughs> the, um, the UK turn here. Oh well. Everything move forward. Can't actually do that either. We can do this, but yeah, they're gonna we're gonna concede some ground in Africa, but that's 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 totally fine. If I want to kill the main stack, we're gonna have such momentum moving forward after this is dead that it, it won't really matter too much because he he can't both maintain this, even though this is gonna fall as well. But he can't maintain this and also put pressure on uh, everything in Asia. So the Japanese position collapses here, regardless of whether it gets it um, Africa or not. Um, okay. Let's move you up just in case. Uh, we go here, actually, it's better. Okay, everything moving forward. Good. <laughs> it's leveling out. <laughs> yeah, as I said, it's going to look scary for a few rounds, but um, we should be fine. So I'm going to move on to my second calculator. So after the bottom 5% after Russia goes is the Japanese should have 23 infantry left. So if they've got Less than that, then we're, we're golden for the UK. Uh, right. I think we look good. Eight tanks for the final push, and five. Which don't actually, we don't need them here. I'm going to put them here, actually. And here, I guess. Which makes sense. So the Russians. Let's get five and one. Similar kind of deal if we could reach the number we're aiming for and we still have the planes left. I think, actually, no, with the Russians, I will go all in. I think I, I want to kill as many as I can. I don't think we can, it won't be able to precisely pull them out anyway. We've only got two planes to worry about, so that's not going to be realistic. So, 107. We've got the numbers advantage just, but again, that's a, a very, the attacking power, I think, is probably in the Japanese's favour. Japanese favour. So let's go for it. Plausible, yeah. So the number we're looking for is 23. If they've got 23 left, we're good. Come on, boys, big hits. 10. Bad. 30. Oof. Ouch. Big hits. Okay. So. 23 is what we're looking for. We're into seven more. About seven. We got it. So, whatever we get now is a bonus. We can survive one more round, have we? Yeah, we have. Yeah, let's push on. Let's keep pushing. We might be able to save the planes if we get 17 or less here. Six. Nine. I think that's actually. We've got. We killed 13 more than we needed to. Bottom 5%. So, the UK have got a great chance. So I think we do pull the planes out here. Say what material we can. The trading will obviously get more and more effective as we get through the, the Japanese stack. So yeah, okay, we saved the planes. It's just actually going quite well. That's, that's going very well. Um, okay. 
Okay, so obviously at this point the uh, the UK have got a very a very easy clean up, which is nice. So the planes should all be alive from from every side. So that's great. That's great. Yeah, a bit more of a heavy loss from this this battle. And obviously when we get to the UK, it's going to be we'll just lose infantry. Hopefully at least uh, just lose infantry, and uh, it'll be all the, the the heavier material for the axes that will die. So no, looking good. Looking good. Um, I guess we can do, not really. Great, okay, so, the end of the, the, <laughs> the bloodbath, we've, uh, we're down to 386, and the X is down to 202. And so, yeah, but, if we actually, I'll probably just very quickly calculate this, so what have they got left? They've got 10 infantry left. The battle is 100% in our favour, which is not quite right, but yeah. I mean, if we get a bottom five battle in bottom five result in that fight, we will still should have 28 infantry and 18 artillery left. So yeah, I've got a, a big stack that they just can't challenge anymore. Even with the six tanks and this 13 infantry, it's just not going to work. So yeah, we'll uh, very quickly be uh, storming the rest of this. Uh, Something in the and then hopefully once this big fleet arrives, we can probably. I actually worked out the the numbers here. He's got we've got three just got three destroyers. We have two, not counting the ones we've used as blockers. We've got five subs versus is two, two cruisers versus is one, battleship two, uh, one versus is two, and three versus five. So if we build some fighters here, we're in golden position against this fleet as well. So Hawaii should fall. Um, India will be the target, so we're, we're I think a few rounds away from winning this game. Where the you, yeah, they can't do anything. They might go to France. They might split their stack possibly. Um, so the U.S. round 21 will be killing this. So we'll be up to eight VCs. The U.S. will move into position 56. This round, so round 22 will be grabbing. We should be grabbing uh, Hawaii. At which point, okay, grab in here. Next round. I think at the, at the earliest it's going to be round 23. We win the game. I think round 23 or 24. 24 seems more realistic, I suppose. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, round 23 or 24 is when I've got this this peg to to end. So we'll we'll, we'll see. But anyway, been a long round this round. Apologies, Cobra, for the. <laughs> Having to edit all this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'll pass it back to uh, Germany now. Okay, back for uh, UK 21. So, by four infantry, one artillery, three tanks. Um, we're going to go for the biggest assault on courses. <laughs> so, hopefully, it goes well. Um, I forget, I've not got the calculations at this time. I'm, I'm recording um, on a separate day after my uh, Russian move. So, I think the, we, we had good odds to take out a lot of uh, or have a lot of infantry left after the attack so yeah fingers crossed we get the we get the rolls but anyway apart from that I think we'll just be retaking France and reinforcing Morocco because we need to deal with this obviously this push from the Japanese and then generally speaking just moving across uh, this way supporting the US fleet so let's do it let's do the boring bits first so this guy grab this hopefully that's going to be enough but it doesn't really matter if it's not it's fine then we'll land the rest here and the final assault. Yeah, it looks pretty. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's already one guaranteed. It's just a, it's just a question of how many infantry we have left over afterwards because we could roll badly and they could get a huge first round potentially. So see how it goes. But yeah, that's uh, fairly comfortable. Uh, Tacky moves. That should be everything. I think. Yep. Go for it. So France first. Nice, it's good. So let's do it. Three. Okay. Oof, almost a one my rump from white there. Two. Yeah, 
Yeah, decent it's back, but obviously it's just, just too much force, so yeah, it's a huge uh, IPC swing there for us. Just check the, the balance now, it's a 355 versus 117, so yeah, that was, that was... Overall, we took some obviously big hits with the Americans going in, but the, as I said, it, it was going to level out and we, we were going to get a huge profit by the end of the, end of the, uh, the three-way punch. So that's going to be it to, you know, decimate the final, final reinforcements. So, as you can see, Russia's more than safe now. There's few infantry knocking about, but they're obviously never going to pose a threat. We've got a big stat that's going to head immediately straight down to uh, India. So, that'll be the goal. Try and cap these VCs. Um, now, my one question about the Japanese here: they may pick up the troops they have in Alaska and try and force something. Obviously, they can't land in Western, which is good, but they could probably force the. F well, they could pick up the units and do something with them, which I kind of don't want them to do. I want to try and kill them all in Alaska. Um, however, if they were to pick them up and try and storm 57 or something, just to attack, um, or even just, no non com to 56 I guess uh, I guess we could just try and I don't know we'll see I've got to work out the odds here we've got 5, 6, 7 12 defending units versus what um, probably he might leave he might make a way through 1 so probably 1 6, 7 12, 13, uh, yeah, 16 versus 12, I mean, we should have that battle, even if they go to 56. I think their defensive penalties are worse than mine, they've, they'll have, well, sort of, they'll have two subs that are defending on a 1 as opposed to attacking on a 2, so that's, yeah, I think that, yeah, they are, they are, they're better on defense than they are attack, but that also applies to us as well, because we've got five subs, so, yeah, that could be a, a nice, uh, a nice win for us, but we'll see. Anyway, that's my UK toy twenty one. Let's just wrap it up. I think that's pretty much the game in hand now. So just need to finish off the last few bits, as in capturing Morocco and uh, capturing Morocco in, in India. That should give us the win. Unless uh, Kobe wants to resign, I'm not sure what his plans are, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up to him. I don't mind playing this one out, it's, it's totally cool. So, there we go. You can one. I'll pass it back to Cobra. So, GG. Uh, there we go. The game's uh, game's over. So, Cobra did mention to me in the Discord he'd resign if uh, the UK took courses, which we did. Um, which is fair enough. Obviously, the, the board position at this point is, uh, is it's over, pretty much. Um, but he mentioned he wanted to have <laughs> one last fight uh, in US, which is totally fine. I, I like to do the same thing. When a game's on the way out, it's nice to nice to finish on a on a big fight, big battle. So, no, but yeah, well played to Cobra. He certainly didn't make the game easy for me. There was a few moments in that game where it was uh, quite precarious, having to <laughs> balance certain things. But it was a uh, yeah a good game overall. I think um yeah I enjoyed it. But anyway, thanks to Cobra, thanks for the game, and um yeah take care.